Damon helped Jillian adjust the TV in the student health center and asked the nurse for another pillow so Jillian could sleep more comfortably. Just as Jillian was about to fall asleep, the door opened again. It was Lindsay. Damon recognized her from the bank. Lillian had heard that Jillian was sick, so she had rushed over to see her. Damon nodded at Lindsay and said, Hello. Lindsay nodded back at him, but her expression was a little strange. She seized Damon up and seemed to want to say something, but stopped herself. Jillian's face turned red and she said to Damon, Damon, I'm a little hungry now. Could you go get me some food? Jillian seemed to want him to leave. Damon nodded. Okay, I'll go get you some soup. After saying that, he walked out. Damon, stop right there. Just as Damon was shutting the door to Jillian's room, he heard a voice scolding him. He turned around and saw Fiona standing outside the door with her hands on her hips. She looked at him with her big, beautiful eyes. There was a trace of anger in her face. Damon asked, Why are you in the health center? What happened to you? Was Fiona sick too? I have strep throat, Fiona said in a strange tone. You brought Jillian here? You're going to get her soup? What a gentleman. Fiona all but rolled her eyes. It was very obvious that she was jealous. Damon ignored her questions. He said, Where's Darren? He's not with you? Immediately, Fiona's eyes narrowed slightly. She said fiercely, What does that have to do with you? No one cares about me. I don't have anyone bringing me soup. As she spoke, Fiona carefully observed Damon's expression. What he said next made her even angrier. Give me Darren's phone number. I'll call him and get him to come over here. Damon, you idiot! Fiona grabbed Damon's phone. Suddenly she said, I'm hungry too. Get me some soup while you're getting hers. Damon shook his head vigorously. He was confused. Just a few weeks ago, Fiona had acted like she was saying goodbye to him forever. And now she was treating him like her boyfriend and demanding soup. When she saw Damon shake his head, Fiona immediately threatened him. <laughs> if you don't get soup for me, I'll tell Jillian you were a bad boyfriend when we were dating. Up to you. Damon refused to fall for Fiona's tricks. Even if Fiona talked nonsense, Jillian wouldn't believe her. Seeing that Damon was still not responding to her, Fiona got more desperate. She suddenly ran over and reached out to hug Damon's waist. A sweet fragrance assailed his nostrils. Fiona looked up at Damon pitifully. Cupcake, can't you just do this one thing for me? Do I really not mean anything to you anymore? Damon was speechless. He wanted to break free from Fiona's vice grip, but he didn't want to hurt her. Let go, there are a lot of people around. They were in a busy hall in the health center, and Jillian was still lying in bed in the room right behind them. If Jillian saw the way they were hugging, Damon would be finished. But Fiona didn't let go. Instead, she leaned her head against Damon's chest and cried. No, I won't let you go. You do so much for Jillian, but you can't even do one little thing for me. You're always so dismissive of me, and you never check in with me. I always have to reach out to you. Tears streamed down Fiona's beautiful face. Her eyes, which were as clear as a lake, were also filled with grievance and resentment. There seemed to be some real feelings hidden beneath her angry facade. In his wildest dreams, Damon had never imagined there would be a day when a beautiful girl like Fiona would like him. He'd been sure she was only playing with him and using him to get back with Darren. And when he'd heard her talking to a friend, that had been confirmed. But would she really be going this far if it was all just a game to her? He looked into her eyes. Fiona looked completely sincere. If she was acting right now, then she deserved an award. Damon gently peeled Fiona's hands from around his waist and softly said, Fiona, I have a girlfriend. His words made Fiona cry harder. Her eyes were filled with anger, humiliation, sadness, and even a little regret. Then, she slowly backed away and watched Damon turn around and leave. Behind the door, Lindsay was chatting with Jillian. Lindsay quietly asked Jillian, Are you still with him? Didn't he get in trouble with the law? You need to break up with him. You could get in trouble too being associated with him. 
Julian nodded silently, but she still seemed hesitant. Lindsay's expression became serious. You weren't planning to break up, were you? Have you thought about your future? Lindsay felt personally responsible for encouraging Jillian to get involved with a guy who had turned out to be a criminal. A few days after Jillian had found out that Damon's savings might have been illegally earned, she'd called Lindsay for advice. Jillian really liked Damon and thought he was a good guy, but she felt uneasy dating someone who was basically a criminal. Lindsay insisted they had to break up. Even though Damon hadn't been charged with anything himself, he still wasn't fully in the clear. Some people were saying Damon might be expelled from school. Lindsay couldn't let Jillian end up with someone like that. Jillian knew Lindsay was just looking out for her. She didn't want Jillian to end up with someone unstable or even dangerous. But Jillian was still hesitant to break up with Damon. Her heart was telling her he was a good guy. She turned to Lindsay and said, I just really don't think he's a criminal. Aside from his association with Will, there were no other signs pointing toward Damon not being a good, well-meaning person. Jillian had hung out with him a lot over the past few months. He was very considerate, and he knew how to take care of her. He was also very smart. Just today, he'd rushed her to the health center and left his own shoe behind to get her there quickly. Jillian had been moved. Since rumors had been spreading for the past few days, she'd withdrawn a bit and hadn't been talking to Damon much but then today he'd shown up for her in a time of need. Julian couldn't help but take it as a sign. Julian felt that Damon really might be the one. They hadn't been very physical yet, but she really liked spending time with him. When she was with Damon, she felt relaxed and happy. They didn't even have to say anything when they were together. She could sit next to him all day and not say a word, and she'd still consider it a day well spent. But reason told her to stay away from Damon. Still, she wondered if she'd regret breaking up with him. She didn't want to break up. But the facts were right in front of her. Even if he hadn't gotten caught himself, he'd worked very closely with Will. Julian, I know you like him, but I really don't think you should be associating with someone like him. It's not good for you. It's too risky. Hearing it from Lindsay made Julian see the risks more clearly. When she thought about the fact that Damon could have been expelled... She was so scared that she could not speak. Damon got Jillian chicken soup, and when he came back to her room, he found that Lindsay had already left. Jillian sat alone on the hospital bed, looking as if she had something on her mind. Damon set the soup down in front of Jillian and said, I'll get a spoon for you. Jillian stopped Damon. No need, Damon, wait. I have something to say to you. Damon turned around and said, Go ahead. Jillian bit her lip. Her heart was in a dilemma. Damon could tell she was hesitating. He frowned and said, Jillian, if you have something to say, say it. Jillian gritted her teeth and finally said softly, Damon, I'm not sure we should keep hanging out. People might get the wrong idea. Fiona, who had just come back looking for Damon, stood outside the door listening to their conversation. Damon's body stiffened. He could tell what she was trying to say. That's why it had been so hard for her to say it. Damon's heart sank, and he forced a smile. What do you mean? Julian gritted her teeth and said, Let's not study together so much anymore. I appreciate all your help, but I'm worried people will start thinking we're a couple. Damon's expression was sullen. He wanted to smile and pretend to be unfazed, but he couldn't do it. If it weren't for Julian's unusually serious expression, Damon would have thought she was joking. Unfortunately, he could tell she wasn't. Damon wanted to ask what had made her change her mind, but he didn't want to hear the response. Maybe the whole time he thought they were a couple, Jillian had only ever seen him as a classmate. After all, the two of them had never officially talked about being a couple. This was absurd. The reality was like a bucket of cold water splashed in Damon's face. Jillian continued, Damon, you're a really good guy. It's not you. It's because I'm not good enough for you. You can find someone better than me. Sorry. After she finished speaking, she silently lowered her head, not daring to face Damon. Damon felt bitter. He thought things had been going really well with Jillian. He hadn't seen this rejection coming at all. But this wasn't the first time Damon had been rejected. Including Lily, Avery, and him being played by Fiona. This was the fourth time. He'd been through this before. Damon knew he could get through it again. 
he said. All right then, I have some work to do anyway, so I should go. I'll wait for you to finish the soup so I can take the container. You can just leave it, I'll get rid of it when I'm done. Thank you. Jillian didn't want him to stay any longer. Damon walked out the door. Jillian watched him go. Damon sat near the hospital's entrance. Although he had experienced this kind of thing four times, he still needed time to let himself hurt. In high school, he had dreamed of finding the perfect girl. He'd always hoped to have a lot of girls who liked him. But after he'd been played by Fiona, Damon realized that, even with his new abilities, maybe when it came to love, he was just an ordinary person. Perhaps even worse than an ordinary person. In love, he was a failure. Still, it hurt to be rejected. As he walked toward the exit, Damon's mood finally started to improve. He accepted his fate of staying single. Just as he was about to walk out of the building, the hospital door opened and Fiona appeared in front of Damon. She had a happy and proud look on her face. So, you were dumped. How do you feel? Fiona tried her best to pretend to be concerned about Damon, but she couldn't help but feel a little happy in her heart. She tried to hide the smile in her eyes. Damon ignored Fiona. He took another container of soup from that bag beside him and said, I also got you some soup. Eat it while it's hot. But if you're just here to see me looking like a fool after being broken up with, get out of here. Not like it's the first time I've been through something like this. Earlier, Damon had hidden the second container of soup from Jillian. He'd gotten it for Fiona because he felt bad for her, but he didn't want Jillian to get the wrong idea. Fiona looked slightly surprised. You got dumped even before I dumped you? She casually took the soup from Damon. Smelled delicious. Fiona was touched. She hadn't really thought he would get her the soup after the way he'd acted earlier. Damon couldn't be bothered with Fiona and turned around to leave. Fiona didn't stop him. She looked at the hot soup in her hands and watched Damon's back as he left. Her beautiful brow wrinkled slightly, but she immediately caught herself and made her expression neutral again. Soon, the news of Jillian rejecting Damon spread. Quinn and some of the girls from 201 were surprised. They thought the relationship between Jillian and Damon had been going well. But after a while, everyone gradually calmed down. It made sense, after all. Damon and Jillian weren't exactly a perfect match. That night, Theo bought a few bottles of wine and brought Quinn and Damon to the roof to drink. Theo drank too much and ended up smashing one of the bottles. He told Damon the real reason why Jillian had rejected him. He'd heard from some of the girls from 201 that Jillian was concerned that Damon could get in trouble with the law. She was afraid that Damon would drag her down. All the girls knew this. Apparently, Riley and Zoe supported Jillian's breaking up with Damon. They thought she could do better. Quinn also drank too much. He patted Damon's shoulder to comfort him. Then Quinn told him that Sammy, who he'd been pining after for nearly half a year, had finally agreed to be with him. Theo and Damon were happy for him, but something seemed off about her suddenly wanting to be with Quinn after all that time. During exam week, the temperature hit record lows. Damon breezed through his finals and winter vacation began. Damon, Will, and Liam took a train back to New York together. Janice, the vice president of their former Bridgerton High class, had organized a winter break reunion. Janice was an outstanding student. She'd gotten into a top fine arts college and was majoring in music. Liam and Emmett went to the reunion, but Damon didn't. He still had a lot of things to do. The game development company that he and Will had wanted to work with, KC Games, had agreed to partner with them. And the mobile game Damon had developed, Airblaze, had been approved. It would be in the App Store at the start of the new year. He had to make sure it was perfect before then. Damon was very confident in his game, and Will had also put in a lot of effort to get it off the ground. Damon would get 51% of the profits, and Will would get 49%. Will had put in a lot of effort in perfecting Airblaze in the later stages of its development. They were both really hoping it would do well. Will especially needed to succeed after his major setback. Will hadn't told his parents that he'd been expelled yet. He had always been their pride and joy. He'd been the first in his family to go to college, let alone graduate school. If his parents knew that he had been expelled, it would devastate them. Will had to figure out a backup plan before his parents found out. He had to find another road to success, not only for his parents, but also for himself. 
On Christmas Eve, Damon had a lively holiday dinner with his family. After dinner, Selena helped her mother wash the dishes. Then the family sat together and watched Christmas movies as they asked Selena about her studies. They also asked Damon about his life in college. As they talked, Damon's father casually flipped channels. On the news, a number of CEOs and economists were being interviewed about the global economy. The reporters were interviewing a billionaire from California. His name was Zane Zelinsky. He was in his 50s. He was the richest man in the country, possibly on the continent. He had inherited a lot of money from family, and he'd also made a lot in the stock market. In the interview, he was talking about the global economic future. Damon's father listened attentively for a while and could not help but sigh. The economy is bad and ordinary people are struggling. These issues were personal for Damon's father. Not long ago, he had broken his leg when he was working part-time at a construction site, and he had been denied compensation. Damon's father had used Damon's prize money to pay his medical bills, but he still couldn't work. Selena went to a private high school. If they paid Selena's tuition, Damon's tuition for the next school year would be gone. Damon's father was in a difficult position. Damon also watched Zane Zelensky's interview very intently. When he heard his father sigh, he said, Dad, I earned some money from working this semester. You don't have to put any money in my account anymore. I can also pay Selena's tuition. When they heard that, Damon's parents' eyes got big. Selena's mouth was agape. They all looked at him in disbelief. Damon's father refused flatly. No, you have to prioritize your studies now. Don't work part-time and tire yourself out. You don't have to worry about money. Damon's parents knew a lot of less well-off kids worked part-time in college and couldn't focus completely on their studies, and their grades suffered. They didn't want that to happen to their son. Selena blinked her beautiful big eyes and said sensibly, Damon, don't worry and don't tire yourself out. I can stop buying snacks and cut down on school supplies. But Damon shook his head. Don't worry. My part-time job is easy, and it goes along with the subject I'm studying. It's almost like just being in school. You don't have to worry. Damon didn't dare tell them how much he had savings right now. He didn't want them to worry that he was doing something illegal. Damon's father wanted to persuade Damon, but seeing that he had made up his mind, he could only agree. He knew it was useless to argue with his son when he put his mind to something. Secretly, he was relieved to have some much-needed help. It would take a lot of pressure off and give him more time to heal. The next day was Christmas, and the city was unusually quiet. Nearly everyone was at home, celebrating with their families. Damon started getting Christmas texts from old friends. Most of them were just generic, wishing him happy holidays. Damon sent short, polite replies to each message. But when Damon got a message from Veronica, his heart skipped a beat. She was away in Berlin on an exchange program. Veronica's message said, Merry Christmas, Damon. Are you doing all right? She also sent him a photo. It was a selfie of her in Berlin in the snow. It was obvious that Veronica had specially written this message to him. It wasn't just generic. Damon looked at Veronica's beautiful smile in the picture and replied in a fluster, Merry Christmas. I'm pretty good. What about you? But Veronica didn't reply. Damon's phone rang while he was eating breakfast. When he answered, a girl's voice said, Cupcake, what are you doing? It was Fiona. Damon was slightly annoyed she was calling him on the holiday. He frowned and replied, Do you need something? Something bad happened, Fiona said angrily. People have been saying you're my boyfriend, and now my family heard about it. Well, didn't you tell them we broke up? They don't believe me. Fiona was so angry that she was holding back tears. This is your fault. Now my dad wants to come visit campus and meet you after his break. You deal with this yourself. It's your problem now. You have to meet my dad. But what does this have to do with me? I never told anyone we were dating. That was all you. Cupcake, this is all your fault, and now you have to help me fix it. Fiona was being completely unreasonable. After she finished yelling at Damon, Fiona hung up. Damon put his phone down on the table and sat there in a daze. He couldn't speak for a long time. During the holiday break, Damon helped Selena with her homework. Now that Selena was in her second year of high school, she was starting to get very serious about her studies. 
Selena didn't want to let her family down. She wanted to make them proud. After high school, she wanted to go to Meyerson University like her brother. A few days after Christmas, Liam and Emmett came by Damon's apartment to hang out. They told him about the party they'd had with their classmates from Bridgerton. It was held at a five-star hotel in Manhattan. Liam wished Damon had gone because Avery had been there. At the party, Liam told everyone that Damon had been the top science scholar. They had all been curious about it because it was the only top scholar spot that hadn't gone to a student from Bridgerton. It had caused a huge shock among the students. After all, Damon hadn't been a good student when he was at Bridgerton. He'd even been expelled at the beginning of senior year. In telling how things had gone down, Liam emphasized Avery's expression when she found out Damon had been the top science scholar. Liam felt that Avery must have regretted turning Damon down when she found out about his success. Liam and Emmett wished Damon could have been there to see her reaction himself. As they sat in Damon's family's kitchen, they heard the sound of a car engine outside. They went to the window and looked out at the street and saw a black Mercedes-Benz was parked in front of the building. A very well-dressed, middle-aged man got out of the car. A beautiful young woman followed behind him. Her long hair lightly swayed in the wind. It was Avery and her father, Harold Wilson. Damon guessed that they were probably here to visit Avery's grandparents, who still lived in the neighborhood. When Avery saw the boys, she walked over to greet them. Hi guys, what are you talking about? Liam and Emmett smiled at Avery, nervously shifting on their feet. Even though they'd known her since childhood, her beauty still stunned them. Avery, Liam, and Emmett exchanged a few words, and then Avery looked at Damon. Her eyes lit up when they landed on Damon's face. Damon, why didn't you come to the class reunion party a few days ago? Avery looked at Damon, who looked especially dazzling today under the bright winter sun. He looked strong and handsome. When Avery first saw him, she did a double take. Was this really the Damon she'd grown up with? Damon was surprised that Avery was acting so warmly towards him. After rejecting him a year ago, she'd acted like she wanted nothing to do with him for a while. Damon smiled and said, I had other things going on. Sorry I couldn't make it. Avery smiled gently. I heard that you're studying finance at Meyerson University now. Why didn't you come and visit me during the semester? I'm also in Boston. A year ago, Damon couldn't have imagined Avery would ever ask him to visit her. She was way out of his league, and they both knew it. He could barely believe what he was hearing. But Avery's view of Damon had completely changed. It was like the Damon of the past was gone, and now this new Damon was in front of her. He made her heart flutter. I didn't think you'd want to see me. I thought if I showed up, you might pretend you didn't know who I was. Damon said half-jokingly. Avery shook her head and smiled sweetly. I would never do that. Let me give you my phone number. Isn't Veronica at Meyerson with you too? We can all get together next semester. After Damon gave her his phone number, Avery said, I know someone from your school. His name is Levi. He's quite famous. You know who he is, right? Damon shrugged and nodded. Avery laughed and smiled. <laughs> I would think so. He was in the National College Singer Competition. He's going to be in the finals with me. I heard from my teacher that he's really talented, and it's not easy to get a compliment from Asher. Damon didn't say anything, but Emmett jumped up in surprise. Avery, you made it into the finals? Avery nodded. Although she tried to stay calm and collected, some of her excitement spilled over at Emmett's question. Liam looked confused and asked, what is the college singer competition? Emmett looked at Liam with disdain. You don't know, it's huge. I heard the finals are going to be broadcasted live. All the singers who won the competition have become huge stars. Liam was dumbfounded when he heard this. That meant Avery could become famous. The gap between them was getting wider and wider. Avery nodded as Emmett spoke. She surreptitiously looked over at Damon to see if he was impressed. When Avery heard that Damon was the top science scholar in their district and that he'd gotten into Meyerson University, she was shocked. Then she started to feel regret. She wasn't quite sure why. Damon had been a delinquent in high school. When they were younger, Avery had developed a crush on him. But as they'd aged and her family's wealth had grown, Avery had distanced herself from him. But he was so appealing to her now. Maybe her rejection had caused him to undergo a shocking transformation. Avery was too proud to say what she was thinking about Damon out loud. She was glad Emmett had brought up her success in the singing competition, and she hoped Damon would notice. Still, she didn't want to be too obvious. And she still didn't want to be with him. She just wanted to impress him. 
Sure, he'd been the top science scholar, but she was going to be a star. Damon knew he'd have to work really hard to pursue Avery. Even with his newfound success, he knew his chances of really impressing her were slim. Maybe one day, Damon would be successful enough for even Avery, but he doubted that day would ever come. The winter break was relaxing. When Damon was browsing his Instagram feed, he occasionally saw posts of Quinn and Sammy showing off their love. He saw the pictures Fiona shared from her vacation. She was eating lots of delicious food and going to many beautiful places. But the pictures he browsed the most were the ones of Jillian, his roommates, and Xander's girlfriend. Seeing the pictures of Jillian hurt a bit because she had clearly rejected him. Damon was surprised when he saw the backgrounds in the girls' pictures. The settings were always very luxurious. They were either in five-star hotels with blue swimming pools, or they were posed leaning against million-dollar luxury cars. He even saw a picture of the two girls on a luxury yacht, and they were surrounded by bottles of champagne. It seemed that Jillian had completely forgotten about Damon. She was living a very happy life now. Damon seemed to enjoy the unhurried rhythm of his vacation. Before he knew it, the winter break had ended. Damon took his suitcase and bid farewell to his parents and sister. After that, he and Liam headed off on the journey back to school. Originally, Liam had wanted to ask Avery to make the trip to Meyerson with him, but she'd left town the first week of January. Avery had gone to Washington, D.C. with her teacher, Asher, Matt, and a few others for special training to welcome the young singers in the national finals. In addition to preparing for the competition, Asher would also bring them to visit many people in the music industry. This would help pave the way for their future careers. After all, countless people dreamt of a chance to perform on a national stage. The chance could launch their music careers. The students would do whatever it took to try to win the finals. Their future prospects depended on it. When Liam heard the news about Avery, he sighed. Why did some people get such amazing opportunities? It seemed impossible that he would ever catch up with Avery's success. It felt like Avery would always be someone whom Liam, Damon, and Emmett had to look up to. Liam thought about this and felt a little sad. As they drove, he watched the snow falling outside the car window and listened to the sounds of the city passing by. Before he knew it, they had arrived at Meyerson. After getting out of the car, Damon and Liam went and ate together. They drank some beer, and then they went their separate ways. Theo, Quinn, and Xander had all returned to the school. Levi would not be back for a while. Like Avery, he had also flown to DC to start preparing for the National Music Competition's finals. If Levi could get into the competition's final three, he had a better chance of being recognized and making a career in the music industry. Although Meyerson already had many talented alumni spread across all walks of life, the prospect of having a student from their school make a name for himself and become a powerful celebrity was an enticing thought for the heads of the university. After all, this was also a way to bring glory to Meyerson University. Theo had also returned to campus early. People were saying that he had secretly brought Willow to the hospital to have an abortion. Quinn was back because he wanted to see Sammy as soon as possible. Xander and Riley were fighting. According to Quinn, Riley seemed to have cheated on Xander, and the guy who she cheated with was very rich and powerful. However, Damon did not have the time to care about these things. Something more important was about to happen. The game that he and Will had collaborated on and developed, Airblaze, had finally been released on Android. On launch day, Damon made a special trip to see Will. He wanted to witness the game's release with his partner. When Damon walked into Will's house, he saw that the place was a mess. A girl was packing her bags. When she finished packing, she took her bags and stood numbly by the door. The girl was Will's girlfriend, Leah. Leah glanced at Damon, and a look of disdain flashed in her eyes. She took her luggage, turned, and left. After Leah was gone, Damon walked into the bedroom and saw Will drinking on the bed. Damon could not help but ask, What happened to the two of you? Will did not answer immediately. He held the bottle to his chest and gazed out of the window. He was drunk. He asked, Did she leave? Will turned his head to look at Damon. Damon nodded. Before Damon could ask anything else, Will began to talk, pausing every so often to take a swig from the bottle that he was holding. She said that she couldn't see a future with me, so she broke up with me. Damon was not too surprised. To be honest, Damon hadn't thought that Leah and Will's relationship would last after Will was expelled from school. Leah was actually quite pretty and had a bright future. Will, on the other hand, had been in trouble with the police and expelled. 
Leah was too good for Will, or at least that's what she seemed to think. However, Damon felt sorry for his friend when he saw him drowning his sorrows in the middle of the day. Fortunately, Damon was experienced with heartbreak. Damon, who had been in love four times before, felt that it was his duty to comfort Will and teach him how to forget about his broken heart. After all, they had both invested money into KC games. Damon couldn't afford to let Will fall into pieces over this. Damon was a student, and he couldn't run KC games on his own. So Damon sat down and drank with Will. They smoked, and Damon told Will about Lily abandoning him and how Avery rejected him. He went on to talk about how Jillian had hurt him and Fiona had played him. His goal was to cheer Will up. He wanted Will to realize that the situation wasn't so bad. He needed to pull himself together. He wanted them to work hard and succeed. When Leah first left, Will had been in a very bad mood. But after hearing Damon's story, Will began to feel that in comparison, his own situation wasn't so bad. Damon's luck was miserable when it came to love. Will found himself consoling Damon instead. Relax, although you've had it harder than me, life's full of ups and downs. At least we have each other. They clinked their beer bottles and turned on their computers. They wanted to see if the Airblaze release had been as successful as Damon had expected. However, reality was cruel. Eight other games had also been released on the same day. Damon and Will checked the stats. Airblaze ranked fifth among the eight games. Its momentum in the App Store was very bad and its overall ranking on the charts was non-existent. This was not the kind of result that Damon had expected. Will's expression turned ugly. After all, Airblaze had great playability. It should have done better on the charts. Furthermore, Will and Damon had sunk nearly everything they had into making this game. If the game bombed, it would be a real blow to them. Damon, on the other hand, was very calm. He tried playing a few of the new games that had ranked near the top. Compared with Airblaze, these other games sucked. However, these games ranked higher on the charts. Damon and Will still felt a bit disappointed. They chatted for a while, thinking about how they could solve the problem, and then Damon headed out. Damon returned to his dorm and began researching the other games that had been released that day. He looked at the games ranked near the top and noticed something strange. It turned out that the top ranking games all had five star reviews but the names of many reviewers' accounts were just numbers. It looked like these accounts were fake. Moreover, Damon occasionally noticed that some of the comments left by different accounts were identical. This further strengthened his belief that the reviews were fake. This seemed to be the case not only with the new top-ranking games, but also the ones that had ranked behind Airblaze. Damon kept scrolling through the hundreds of reviews, the more he looked, the more he felt that the same people had written all these reviews. Conversely, the reviews for Airblaze all seemed to be real. Many users even commented on how much they had liked the game. Was it possible for someone to fake the review on a game? With this thought in mind, Damon started to search the web for an answer. The answer was as Damon had expected. Many developers of new games would try to fake the number of online users in an attempt to attract customers. This way, the games would rank better and gain more exposure. Without a doubt, more exposure meant more users would play the game. More people playing the game meant more money for the game's developers. Although Damon and Will hadn't invested a single cent into faking Airblaze's reviews, their game's ranking was not the worst. This itself proved the game had potential. After figuring out what was going on, Damon was undoubtedly in a happy mood. That night, he called Will and told him the reason why their game wasn't ranking well, and he asked if Will had any connections that could help him make fake reviews. However, Will wasn't any help. Although Will's work was related to computers, he did not know anyone who could fake reviews. Will said he could ask around, but he needed time. However, they didn't have time. The next day, the App Store would base its recommendations on the four top-ranked new games from the prior day, and Airblaze had not made the top four. This was obviously not good news. If the App Store didn't recommend Airblaze, the game wouldn't get good exposure. Nowadays, there were so many new games being released. If Airblaze could not climb the charts, then there was no hope it would take off. That night, Damon was on the phone with Will. They were trying to think of a way to promote Airblaze. While Damon was on the phone, someone opened his door. Quinn walked in. When Quinn saw Damon, he pulled him into a corner and said, Damon, can you lend me some money? I promise I'll pay you back in a few days. 
Damon did not ask why Quinn wanted to borrow money. He just asked, how much do you need? $30? Quinn hesitated and then said, but if you can lend me more, I'll take it. I promise I'll pay it all back. Damon took out $70 from his wallet and handed it to Quinn. Damon knew what Quinn was going to do with the money. He wanted to make Sammy happy. Quinn had financial aid and worked two part-time jobs to earn money. However, Sammy, who was used to a lavish lifestyle, still felt that Quinn didn't have enough money. Damon had once subtly warned Quinn that he needed to put a limit on Sammy's demands. But Quinn wasn't thinking clearly. He was in love. He liked Sammy too much, so he would do anything to keep her happy. When Damon saw Quinn leaving the dormitory with the $70, he flopped down on the bed and continued thinking about how to promote Airblaze. He felt sleepy. Suddenly, he heard a bell ring. Damon opened his eyes and found that the room was dark. He had fallen asleep, and it was already the middle of the night. Whose alarm was ringing? Xander cursed in the dark. Which of you idiots set an alarm in the middle of the night? Hector got up from his bed and said mischievously, Today I actually found an awesome new game. It's called Airblaze. Xander, do you want to play it? A bunch of my friends are already playing it. This game rocks. Damon's heart skipped a beat. Was Hector playing the game he had developed? It's so much fun that you set an alarm to play it. Xander mumbled he was obviously sleepy. Hector nodded. It's amazing. It's after midnight now, so new items just spawned. No one else is online either, so I can grab all the best items. Damon had set up the game so that every day, new items spawned for the players to find. Some of the items in the game were worth a lot of money. Damon carefully observed Hector. Hector stayed up and played for half an hour before falling back asleep. It wasn't much, but seeing Hector's excitement over the game filled Damon with confidence again. Hector loved the game to the point of obsession. Seeing this rekindled Damon's hopes that Airblaze could still be a success. The next morning, Damon told Will about the ranking list. Will knitted his brows together lightly. Airblaze was his first experience with game development. He was not even as experienced as Damon in this field. However, he had been developing plugins for a few years, so he knew some people who might be able to help. Will made a few phone calls and got some advice. To get a good rating in the App Store, Airblaze needed reviews. To get good reviews, people had to play the game and like it. Additionally, they could spend money on ads to promote the game. The best thing would be if they could catch the eye of a game influencer. If an influencer felt that the game had potential, their game would reach a wider audience. After all, Damon and Will would share their profits with any influencers who promoted their game. If Airblaze earned money, anyone who helped promote it stood to gain. However, most popular gaming influencers were monopolized by the big corporations. Damon and Will had not promoted Airblaze in the early stages of development. It was not realistic for them to think that they could catch the attention of a popular influencer now that the game had already been released. After all, their release had been a flop. Who would want to promote it now? This was a difficult problem. In order to develop Airblaze, Damon and Will had spent all their money. Will was worse off than Damon. He had been arrested, brought to the police station, and then fined a huge sum. He had borrowed money from people to collaborate with Damon on KC Games. Will had no money now. Besides, if they didn't find any company who would promote their game, they were screwed. Although advertising fees were high, some companies might work on commission. As long as Damon and Will found someone good to promote the game, success was feasible. Their investment in the game would be useless if they couldn't reach their target consumers. Now, the only way to proceed was to spend money on promoting the game. There was no time to lose. Will was in charge of finding a way to contact promoters, while Damon gathered all the savings he had left. The first step was naturally to try to contact the developers who had control over game rankings and reviews in the popular app stores. If they could get Airblaze on the radars of the top developers, it would undoubtedly greatly increase the success of their game. Some of these top developers had headquarters near Meyerson University, and others were in DC or other big East Coast cities. In order to save money, Damon and Will would have to travel all over the place by bus. However, the two of them clearly lacked the experience needed to deal with these large companies. There were simply too many game developers competing for attention. If the big game corporations agreed to meet with every upcoming developer, their software departments would be in chaos. 
Damon and Will didn't think they stood a chance of landing a meeting with any of the directors of these big companies. Furthermore, even money didn't guarantee a meeting with these high-up people. An up-and-coming game developer needed to have talent and connections, but the game itself also had to have hype. For the developers of Airblaze who had no reputation at all, it was nearly impossible to connect with a big company. If working with a big company was off the table, the only option Damon and Will had left was to try to meet with a smaller company. Coincidentally, there were several smaller companies like this with headquarters near Meyerson. The next morning, Damon and Will started trying to make appointments to meet the people in charge of these smaller local companies as soon as possible. Fortunately, they were successful making the appointments this time. Damon and Will had a meeting with the person in charge of a company called Sprout in the morning, and in the afternoon, they had a meeting at the headquarters of New Wave, another app company. Although it didn't compare with the giants of the app industry, Sprout was still a well-known software development company and was quite famous in the industry. The person at Sprout who met with Damon and Will was a middle-aged man with a toad-like face. His name was Brad Preston. When Brad saw Damon and Will, he was stunned for a moment. He had not expected that the people in charge of KC Games would be so young. A look of contempt flashed in Brad's eyes. He sat down behind the desk. Damon took the initiative. He took out his business card and handed it to Brad. Hello, Mr. Preston, I'm Damon Walker and I'm the head of KC Games. Before Damon could finish what he wanted to say, Brad Preston impatiently pushed Damon's business card away and said in a deep voice, my time is very precious. I have several important meetings this morning. Get to the point. Obviously, Brad was treating them this way because of their age. Damon and Will tried to remain confident. Will said, Our company has developed a game called Airblaze, and we want to increase our ratings. You want Sprout to promote your game, right? <sighs> Brad rolled his eyes and continued in a deep voice. Sure, it's possible, but our fees are very high. Will forced a smile and said, our company cannot pay the ad fees up front, but if you are willing to work with us, we can pay you in shares of our company. You will not be disappointed. Furthermore, if Sprout will promote our games, we are willing to give you 20% of our profits. What do you think? We don't care about owning shares in your company. You have to pay our fees up front, and then we'll promote your game. Brad was obviously unimpressed by their pitch. Usually a 20% share of profits in a popular game was a considerable amount of money. Only a worthless company would casually promise such a large share of the profits. Will had not expected Brad to be so difficult to deal with. He didn't know what to say. Will's expression changed several times. Finally, he said, Then, if we want to pay to get promoted, what is the price? The fee is determined by which advertising package you guys buy. The price of an ad slot on the second page of our website is 30000 a month, and that's the cheapest option. After Brad finished speaking, he looked at Will. Will was silent. They had already used up most of Damon's savings. Now they had less than 10000 in savings between them. In other words, they could not even afford the cheapest ad package. Brad realized that they did not have the money, and the look of disdain in his eyes became even stronger. He said mockingly, You don't have the money. Come and find us when you do. He stood up. Will also stood and said, Mr. Preston, we don't have much money, but... Can you give us a shot? Or maybe we could make a down payment toward the ad package. What do you think? Do you think we're running a charity? Brad asked. His tone sounded very impatient. If you have nothing else to say, then I have to go. On his way out, he turned to his assistant who had been standing at the door. In the future, you'd better not make any more appointments with such rubbish. This was a waste of my time. Who's ever heard of this trash game they developed? Dealing with people like this will ruin our reputation. The assistant chased poor Will and Damon out of Sprout's headquarters. That afternoon, the two of them arrived for their meeting at New Wave. This time, the person who met them was a beautiful woman with a gorgeous figure. She looked professional and capable. The woman's name was Amy Coots. She didn't seem to have any problem with Will and Damon's age. She even seemed impressed that the two of them had started a company at such a young age. But in the end, they still had to talk business. Like Sprout, New Wave sold ads by monthly subscription. When Damon tactfully said that he doubted that they could afford the New Wave's fees, Amy frowned slightly, and then she said, Our cheapest ad packages are 30000 a month. How about this? We will give you a 20% discount, but you have to buy at least half a month's worth of ad space. 
It's any less. I'm really sorry, but I can't accept it. This was the biggest discount Amy could offer Damon and Will. To be honest, Damon and Will had made a good impression on her, and it didn't hurt that she found Damon attractive as well. Secretly, this is why Amy was willing to give him such a discount. Unfortunately, Damon and Will had only 10000 in savings. They were still 5000 short. Damon and Will helplessly bid farewell to Amy at New Wave. They were thinking about how to raise the $5,000. They'd been making a lot of money before. $5,000 was not an unimaginable sum. However, starting KC Games had been extremely costly. Damon's music was making good money every month from online streaming and views, but he still had half a month until his next paycheck. If they waited that long to start promoting Airblaze, the game might not have any ratings left at all. No one cared about old games. Damon and Will's top priority was borrowing $5,000 to get them through this rough patch. Damon chatted with Will for a while. When Will brought up Amy to Damon, his voice had a mysterious tone. He said, Damon, I think Amy had a thing for you, and that's why she was going to give us such a sweet deal. Damon said, No way, you're overthinking it. Will shook his head. I don't think so. Amy couldn't take her eyes off of you. Did you really not notice? Why didn't you ask her out? She's super hot and she's got her life together. Aren't you single now? Now that Damon thought about it, maybe Amy had been eyeing him up during the meeting. But he quickly shook his head and pushed this idea to the back of his mind. He forced himself to continue thinking about how they were going to get the $5,000. Damon said goodbye to Will, and they both headed off on their separate ways. Damon returned to campus. Levi called him that night. It turned out that Levi was about to participate in the finals of the new voice talent search competition. Due to the fact that more than 10 singers were competing, there would be a round of semifinals before the actual finals began. The semifinals would be broadcast on every major TV channel across the country. New voice talent search was very popular among all audiences because the contestants sang original songs. The show's ratings were very high. If a contestant could make it into the top three, or maybe even the top five, it basically guaranteed them a future in the music industry. Levi was under a lot of pressure. He was a promising contestant, and the song that had gotten him into the finals was already unexpectedly popular throughout the country. Students everywhere were already singing it. Furthermore, Levi's song was already in third place on the Billboard Hot 100. Such success was almost unimaginable. Recently, only one other artist had this kind of success climbing the charts. Ryan Gold. The meteoric rise of his single had overshadowed countless other superstars in the music industry. His single had taken over second place on the Billboard Hot 100, and no other song could shake it. Such a miracle was very rare. Although Levi's song could not overtake Ryan Gold's single, Landing third place on the charts was already a great achievement. After all, other than the legendary Ryan Gold, Levi had overtaken countless other famous artists in the music industry. Even Avery's teacher Asher's new song was not as good as Levi's. The spotlight was on Levi precisely because of this viral success. Levi was already becoming famous. Therefore, the pressure on Levi was enormous. He was already at the top, and it was going to take a lot to stay there. However, the songs he was writing these days were not very good. This is why he was calling Damon tonight. He needed Damon's help. Levi considered Damon his mentor. Damon could not refuse helping his friend. He asked Levi to sing him one of his new songs. Then Damon pointed out what was missing from Levi's song. They chatted for nearly two hours before Damon said he had to get going. It was very late. Levi reluctantly hung up. He was actually feeling a lot better about his situation now. The next morning, Damon woke up and saw that it was snowing outside. While he was brushing his teeth and washing his face, his phone rang. He picked up his phone and saw that it was Veronica. Damon's heart skipped a beat. In his mind, he pictured her beautiful face. He remembered the first time that he and Veronica had seen each other here at Meyerson when he was playing basketball. However, he hadn't seen Veronica since she went on exchange to the University of Berlin in Germany. He had not expected Veronica to actually take the initiative to call him. As he thought about this, he tried to hide his excitement. He pressed the answer button. Sure enough, he heard Veronica's voice talking on the line. It's me, Veronica, Damon. How are you? I'm doing well. Are you home from Germany? 
Damon asked. If she wasn't back in the States, she wouldn't be calling from her old phone number. I just got back, Veronica gently said. Damon, can you help me? I have so much luggage. Damon was very happy when he heard this. He eagerly asked, Okay, where are you? At the campus gate. Wait for me. Damon hung up the phone and ran to the campus gate. The road was covered with snow, and there were not many people out. The fresh snowfall blanketed the campus beautifully. When Damon arrived at the gate, he saw Veronica in the distance. She was wearing a pink down jacket and a furry hat. She wore her silky hair long. It was waist length now. Veronica was standing under a tree. She was strikingly beautiful. Her plush hat was already covered in snowflakes. It was obvious that she had been waiting for some time. She had some suitcases beside her. Veronica did have quite a lot of luggage, too much to carry by herself. Although a few guys had mustered up their courage and offered to help her, Veronica had politely turned them down. Veronica looked around. When she saw Damon, her eyes lit up. Damon grabbed her luggage and Veronica beamed at him. Some of the other guys who had offered to help saw this and scowled at Damon. Damon, thank you for helping me carry my luggage. I hope it's not too much trouble. Veronica blinked her big, beautiful eyes. Damon found her every expression extremely tempting. Damon could smell the wafting scent of her sweet perfume as she spoke to him. He felt amazing until he realized that he should have brought an umbrella. The snow was too heavy. While he was still kicking himself about this, Veronica pulled an umbrella out of one of her bags. She smiled and said, help me carry my luggage. I'll hold the umbrella for you. Damon saw Veronica's beautiful and gentle smile and his heart beat fiercely. He saw the envious gazes of the other guys around him and felt a bit proud. Damon was happy that Veronica wanted him around, even if it was just to help carry her luggage. They talked all the way back to the dorms. It turned out that Veronica had just returned from student exchange in Germany. Damon asked Veronica about her life at the University of Berlin. Damon found it easy to talk with Veronica, and Veronica felt the same way about him. Before they knew it, they had arrived at the main floor of the girls' dormitory, Damon didn't want to say goodbye to her yet, but he was too embarrassed to tell her. Veronica gently said, Damon, thank you for helping me carry my luggage. Can I buy you lunch? Damon was surprised and he said, Don't worry about it. We're, we're old friends, so I'm happy to help you. You don't owe me anything. Only then did he realize that Veronica's hat, clothes, and hair were all covered with snowflakes. Although Veronica had been holding the umbrella while they walked, she had tilted it towards Damon. She hadn't sheltered herself at all. When he realized this, Damon was moved. He moved to brush the snow off her and said, You're covered. When Damon's hand touched Veronica, her face turned red. It was obvious this was the first time a guy had touched her like this. She was very embarrassed. She even fidgeted with the sleeve of her coat. However, Veronica did not push Damon away. She said, So, will you have lunch with me? Wait for me, I'll put my luggage in the dormitory and come right back. Okay. Damon had always dreamt of going out on a date with a girl like Veronica. Damon was worried that Veronica had invited him out just to be nice, but he wasn't going to turn down the opportunity. So Veronica smiled at him and made several trips upstairs with her luggage. Not long after, she came back down, ready to leave. It was close to noon. Veronica brought Damon to a restaurant that she had heard people raving about. The restaurant's atmosphere and food were supposedly very good. The restaurant was close to the campus basketball court. This was the basketball court where Damon had seen Veronica for the first time here at college. Veronica had been standing under the streetlight watching while he and Theo played one-on-one. -on -one. Damon remembered the moment when Veronica's eyes had briefly met his before she turned and left. Veronica and Damon arrived at the restaurant and ordered their food. Veronica said, Last semester, I stood by this basketball court and watched a guy playing basketball. He really looked like you. At the time, I thought he was you, but later on, I thought I must have been mistaken. Veronica recalled that the guy who looked like Damon hadn't seemed to recognize her. If it had been Damon, why hadn't he smiled or waved? That was me, Damon answered. Veronica's eyes widened. She softly asked, Why didn't you say hi? Her tone sounded somewhat sorrowful, but her expression held a hint of reproach. Veronica hoped that Damon wouldn't try to make up an excuse because she would not believe him. 
Since he knew what she was talking about, it meant that he had seen her too. Damon was stunned. He couldn't tell Veronica that he hadn't thought there was any point in saying hi to her. Back then, Veronica was already very popular, and Damon was just an ordinary guy. Sure, he had aced his SATs, but other than that, he didn't have anything else going for him. Back then, he had been nothing compared to Veronica. Damon hadn't wanted to try for someone so far out of his league, so he had chosen not to say hello. Naturally, Damon was too embarrassed to say these things, but Veronica guessed what Damon was thinking. Damon, if we hadn't seen each other at the basketball court that night, you would still have reached out to me later. When she asked this question, her tone sounded strange. Damon saw that she was gently biting her red lips. It seemed like she was thinking hard about something. Damon said, I just wanted us to meet at the right time. Is that so? Veronica said faintly with a shake of her head. We were classmates for three years. Why didn't you ever talk to me? Veronica's tone sounded angry now. She was indeed angry. She didn't feel important to Damon. He had never called or tried to talk to her. She had always been the person to initiate her conversations, although Veronica's personality was naturally indifferent and aloof, and she normally wouldn't care if someone ignored her. The thought of Damon ignoring her stirred up strong feelings. Was she actually angry about this? I may not have talked to you, but I thought about you. You're important to me. Damon wanted to tell Veronica how much he liked her. He wanted to tell her that he liked her as much as he liked Avery, and maybe even more. However, he couldn't make the words come out of his mouth. Veronica saw Damon stumbling over his words, and her face turned red. Her eyes also flickered with a strange light. She changed the subject. Damon, I have always wanted to thank you. You've saved my life. Veronica, Damon interrupted. He was being serious now, he said. Let's forget about that night at the river. I still regret not waving to you when I saw you on the basketball court. It won't happen again. Besides, I don't want to talk about high school anymore. Veronica nodded. By the way, Damon, are you usually free in the afternoon? Why? Veronica said, One of the DJs from the campus radio station graduated last year. Now the campus radio station is looking for someone to replace him. If you want, I could introduce you to the people in charge at the station. Damon had always had a great voice. He would be a great fit if he agreed to do the job. Damon was stunned. Do you work at the campus radio station? Yes, Veronica said. She seemed a little embarrassed about it. I host a couple of radio shows. Damon was very impressed. The campus radio was broadcast all across the city. If Damon became a DJ, would he have the chance to work with Veronica? The thought of this made Damon very happy. Damon was about to say that he had plenty of time, but he didn't want to seem too eager. He needed to play it cool and not be too obvious, but he also didn't want to refuse her offer. Veronica was offering to go out of her way to help him. Many other people would jump at such an offer. He did not want someone else to take the job, so Damon said, I have time, but do you really think I'm qualified? When Veronica heard this, she laughed. <laughs> of course, I'll help you apply when the time comes. They continued chatting happily and their food arrived. Damon's phone rang as they were about to start eating. When he saw that it was Will calling, Damon answered. Will's voice sounded a little depressed. I asked all my friends, but no one was willing to lend me money. Will hadn't expected that borrowing $5,000 would be so difficult. After his friends turned down his request, he felt miserable. When he'd been making all that money from plugins, Will had been rich. He'd helped these friends a lot. However, now Will had been expelled, he was in dire straits. His friends did not want to return the favor. The reason for this was very simple. No one knew if he would be able to pay them back. Everyone was afraid that if they helped, they would never see their money again. Damon comforted him and said, Don't be discouraged. I'll think of a way out of this mess. With a trembling voice, Will said, Can you borrow $5,000 from somewhere? I've never had a problem borrowing money before. If we can't scrape together $5,000, all our efforts will have been for nothing. The two of them had already invested so much into this game, including all their savings, time, and energy. Trust me, Damon said with confidence. His words seemed to have an inexplicable calming effect on Will. Will believed Damon. What other choice did he have? Furthermore, Will had to admit that Damon was a person who could solve problems. He couldn't explain why, 
but Will trusted this man even if he was three years younger. Damon hung up the phone and saw Veronica was quietly staring at him. It was my friend, Damon explained. Was he a close friend? Veronica asked. Do you need money? Damon's phone was old. Even though it hadn't been on speakerphone, Veronica had heard their conversation. Damon shook his head. It's nothing. Let's talk more about your student exchange. I'm quite interested in hearing more about Germany. Damon successfully changed the topic. The two of them were learning a lot about each other. Before they knew it, the meal was over. When Damon saw Veronica about to get up and pay the bill, he felt a little reluctant to actually let her pay. To be honest, Damon hadn't spent any time around Veronica since they were classmates together back in Bridgeton High School, and this was the first time they had really chatted. Her thoughts, her outlook on life, and her intelligence were all very attractive to Damon. Looks were one thing, but Veronica was smart too. She was a serious catch. Damon had kept his cards close to his chest. He had yet to reveal his edge. The idea of being with Veronica was still a distant dream. Damon needed to work hard if he wanted to get an outstanding girl like her. Damon, can you come with me to the bank? I need to get some cash, Veronica asked. Damon felt somewhat reluctant to part ways with Veronica, so naturally he agreed. The two of them went to a nearby bank. Veronica walked to the counter while Damon waited outside. After she finished at the bank, Veronica came out and found him. She held out a wad of cash to Damon and gently said, This is $5,000. Take it. Damon was stunned. Why are you giving me this money? Veronica was afraid that Damon would misunderstand her intention, and she quickly said, Damon, don't worry about it. I heard what you said on the phone. I'm well off. I have lots of money that I don't need right now. Let me help you. When Damon did not move to take the money, Veronica frowned slightly and explained, Don't worry. This loan has no strings attached. Just pay me back when you can. When Damon still didn't move to take the money, Veronica stomped her feet in anger. Damon, are we friends or not? I heard your whole conversation. Your friend said that you guys had put everything you had into this project. Take this money and put it towards your dream. Damon felt endlessly grateful. He was indeed short $5,000, so he did not refuse her offer anymore. He reached out and took the money. I'll pay you back as soon as I can. When Veronica saw Damon finally take the money, her heart surged with a sweet and happy feeling. Without realizing it, they had already arrived back at the girls' dormitory. Veronica wanted to go and pack. They waved goodbye, and Damon started walking back to the boys' dormitory. The thought of Veronica's beautiful face warmed his heart. As he walked, he could not help turning around one last time to look at Veronica again, but she had already gone inside the building. He glimpsed her silhouette through the second floor window. Veronica quietly stood watching Damon leave, but when she saw him turn around, she quickly turned and entered her dorm. The next morning, Damon called Will. They met up and brought their 15,000 to New Wave to purchase ads for Airblaze. Amy was not surprised that the two students had gotten the money together so quickly. She began the arrangements to run a half a month of ads for Airblaze. Afterwards, Amy invited Damon and Will for lunch, but they declined. After everything was arranged, they rushed back to the school. The semifinals for New Voice Talent Search aired tonight and Levi was going to take the stage. All sorts of important people would be watching. The show would air live across the country. Avery and Matt would also be performing tonight. The three of them were all from Meyerson, and their rankings were quite high. No wonder there was so much hype on campus about this competition. There was a good chance that someone from Meyerson would go to the finals. If that happened, everyone at Meyerson would be proud. Damon, Quinn, Theo, Hector, and the other students all ran to room 502 and turned on the TV. Everyone was waiting for Levi to take the stage. Xander was not there. He and Riley were fighting again. During the holidays, Riley and Julian had posted many photos of themselves with luxury cars and yachts. The two of them ran with a wealthy and mysterious crowd. It was rumored that they had even hung out with some big stars. Damon did not know much about this crowd, but he had a feeling that whatever was going on was not good. Countless women became groupies of this mysterious and wealthy crowd, but most of them would never actually join the elite. More often, these women were taken advantage of, used as playthings for the rich. These women would give anything to be included in this circle, even their dignity. 
Even so, the pictures of yachts and luxury cars that Riley and Jillian had posted on Instagram were enough to make most ordinary girls envious. A boy with high self-esteem like Xander would not tolerate his girlfriend entering such a social circle. This circle might look bright and beautiful from the outside, but inside it was filled with all kinds of negativity and filth. Xander asked Riley to stay away from these people. He didn't like Riley's new friends. It sounded like they were even on the verge of breaking up. However, Damon was more concerned with Jillian. Jillian had not only joined the circle, but she was even dating one of those rich guys now. Not only was her new boyfriend wealthy, but he also seemed quite influential within his crowd. Thinking about this naturally made Damon a little sad. However, Damon did his best to push it out of his mind. At 8 p.m. that evening, the new voice talent search broadcast live on all channels. As the most popular contestant from the East Coast, Levi performing in the grand finale was basically a given. Avery and Matt both sang their songs before Levi's performance. The song that Matt sang was very ordinary. As Matt took the stage, he tripped and almost fell. This caused a slight commotion. Otherwise, Matt's performance did not really stand out. Matt was lucky just to have an opportunity to show his face on national TV. When Avery went on stage to sing, her beauty and style lit up the eyes of many judges and audience members. Avery relied on her solid music skills and her magnetic voice to get good marks from the judges. When Avery saw her results, her face turned red. She was nearly guaranteed a spot in the finals. It seemed that Matt, however, would certainly be eliminated. When Levi appeared, he was playing a guitar. His voice was very impressive. When he finished singing, the audience erupted with thunderous applause. He was indeed the crowd favorite. He received a very high score. However, the song that he'd sung tonight was nowhere near as good as the song that had gotten him to the Nationals. That song had been titled, Can't Bring Me Down. With a name like that, it was almost destined to become a classic. The song had defeated countless famous artist songs on the Billboard Hot 100. This went to show how popular Levi had become, but it was impossible for every song that Levi sang to become such an instant classic. Even so, he was still the strongest contestant. However, when the program was about to end and all the scores were tallied, Levi was not the contestant with the highest score. He ranked only second. The person who had stolen first place was a student from the University of Southern California named Dalton Hawksworth. To be honest, Dalton wasn't as good as Levi. It seemed wrong that he'd beaten Levi and taken first place in the competition. When the final scores were announced, all the students in the dormitory cursed. They thought that something shady must be going on. It made sense that the judges had eliminated Matt. After all, Matt was clearly out of his league. Avery had successfully advanced to the second round. When the judges announced her results, the camera panned over to show Avery. She beamed. She couldn't believe that she had advanced to the second round of the national competition. Without a doubt, she was one step closer to her dream of becoming a celebrity. The remaining contestants still had to compete in another round of semifinals, but this wouldn't be for some time. After that, whoever remained would compete for the top spot. Although this round of competition had ended, the next day everyone was discussing it on social media. It had gone viral on the internet. Not only was everyone discussing Avery and the other singers, but they were also discussing how Dalton had snatched Levi's win. Almost everyone thought that Levi had done better than Dalton in both singing and songwriting. Therefore, people were upset that Dalton had won first place. Although this was only the first round of semifinals and not the actual finals, points still matter. A contestant's ranking in the semifinals would have a huge impact on the result of the later rounds. Damon was surprised to see people having such heated online discussions about new voice talent search. No wonder the singers who made it into the finals became famous. Another hot topic of online debate was how Levi's singing style had recently evolved. Some observant netizens had noticed that Levi was starting to sound a bit like Ryan Gold. That's right, Ryan Gold, the superstar whose song topped the Billboard Hot 100 chart. If it wasn't for the fact that Levi's voice sounded very different from Ryan Gold's, people might even think they were the same person. Although people generally concluded that Levi was not as good as Ryan Gold, 
Some people had already started to speculate about whether Levi and Ryan Gold had some sort of connection. Perhaps Levi was a protege of this music industry superstar. Had Ryan Gold taken Levi under his wing? Once this theory surfaced, it went viral on social media. Is Levi Ryan Gold? And does Levi have a connection with Ryan Gold? Quickly became some of Google's most searched phrases. And Levi's popularity skyrocketed. During this time, Levi chose to remain silent and let public opinion run its course. The online discussions about Levi continued to snowball. All this hype was great for him. Although people still did not know who Ryan Gold was, they were happy that he was still making his mark. They were also very happy to see him back in the spotlight. The new voice talent search was on pause until the next round of semifinals. When New Wave began running ads for Damon's game, Airblaze, the game saw a jump in popularity. It had been three days since they launched Airblaze's ad campaign. Damon got up early and was washing his face when Will called him. Will sounded excited. Damon, you have to look at the app store right now. Quick, get online. Airblaze is already in fourth place. Damon quickly opened the site and saw that Airblaze had already overtaken many of the top recommended new games. It was actually close to overtaking the game in third place. Damon was in a good mood. He hadn't expected that the new wave ad campaign would be so effective. Many of the games that Airblaze had overtaken were ones that had had much better reviews before. Moreover, many of these games had been developed by large companies. These large companies had a lot of money to promote their games, but Airblaze was eating up the competition. It seemed unstoppable. This meant that Airblaze had a lot of potential. The game was already proving its worth. Compared to the other games, Airblaze had great playability. It kept players coming back for more. However, Airblaze's biggest draw was that it was highly competitive. It kept its players competing against each other for the highest scores. Players needed to find items, and they could even play as a team to get better rewards. This encouraged people to recommend the game to other people. Although the new games put out by larger companies tended to be quite popular, they didn't always retain players. People were willing to spend money on these games, but they were often disappointed by the gameplay and stopped playing after a while. Even if people did enjoy these popular games, there were often no incentives to invite their friends or family to play with them. Therefore, they couldn't compete with Airblaze in this respect. Even though Airblaze did not have much of a marketing campaign, it promoted itself. People loved the game, and they told their friends. At noon, it overtook the third top recommended new game in the App Store and successfully entered the top three. That night, Airblaze's rank in the App Store continued to advance by leaps and bounds. It soon ranked near the top of all the new games in the App Store. Its number of downloads increased quickly. By the early hours of the morning, it was practically in second place. At noon the next day, it finally took over the top spot. Without a doubt, such an achievement was extremely shocking. The new wave ad campaign was still running, but now many other big companies were talking about the game too. Many popular influencers were even mentioning it on their channels. This, along with its user recommendations, meant that Airblaze had gained enormous popularity without much of a marketing campaign. In just a few short days, Airblaze had become wildly popular. It had started off on the App Store's top recommended new games list, but quickly made the leap over to the overall top games list. Airblaze was gradually overtaking some of the top ranked games. Many of these games had been developed by large companies veterans of the gaming industry. Airblaze was not only topping the charts, it even appeared on the App Store's list of most downloaded apps. Airblaze had gone from having 100 players to 10,000 in a short period of time. Now the game had actually exceeded 1 million players, and it had been only a few days. It was a miracle that an unknown company like KC Games had developed such a popular game. Furthermore, the number of people playing and downloading the game was still growing at an amazing rate. Its success was simply shocking. A lot of Damon's friends were playing the game now. Hector, the game you told me about is so much fun, let's play Airblaze together tonight, said Xander. He was sitting in the dormitory with some of the other guys. Hector had been the first of their friend group to start playing. Not only did he have all kinds of equipment, but he was also familiar with the map in the game. This is why Xander was so keen on having Hector play with him. He was so absorbed by this new game that he'd even forgotten about his fight with Riley. 
Hector was also happy to play with Xander. He introduced this new game to everyone that he knew. Theo and Quinn were also playing now. When people saw their friends, Airblaze was the first thing they talked about. Bro, have you played Airblaze? Of course. I just explored the Lost Temple yesterday, but I didn't find anything good yet. I searched the jungle tomb last night. Did you find anything? I found a set of holy chainmail and the dark gauntlets. How much is the holy chainmail worth? Liam was even playing Airblaze while he and Damon had lunch together. He asked Damon why he wasn't playing the game. In one short month, the game had swept across the entire country like a tornado. Before long, Airblaze had 5 million users. Not only had it taken over first place on New Wave's top game list, but it also continued to occupy a relatively high position in the App Store. What's more, the Airblaze marketing campaign had already ended. It was now gaining popularity by word of mouth alone. Imagine how many users it would have had if the larger companies had agreed to work with Damon and Will. The Airblaze phenomenon was causing a huge stir in the gaming industry. All kinds of advertising companies were reaching out to KC Games to discuss doing future business together. Many other game developers were also trying to figure out how Airblaze had been so successful. What was the secret behind its success? At the same time, some venture capitalists had even taken notice of this startup company. Someone had secretly contracted Will hoping to invest in KC Games. The companies who had originally rejected working with Airblaze were now filled with regret. Money got people's attention, and the people at larger companies who had previously been unwilling to meet began to personally call Will. When they called, they tried to sweet-talk Will into agreeing to work with them. They all wanted to work with KC Games now that it was successful, but Will tactfully refused them. He thought, in the past you ignored us, but now we have the power. However. When Will received a call from Brad, the person in charge of Sprout, Will was quite surprised. On the phone, Brad was overly polite. He started by asking Will how he was doing and how he had been feeling lately. Then Brad asked if there was anything he could help with. He was beating around the bush in hopes of finding a way to cooperate with KC Games now. Will made it very clear that Brad should get lost. Then he hung up the phone. He even blocked Brad's number. Because of Airblaze's success, it was now New Wave's biggest earner. The game already had millions of downloads, and New Wave was earning a share of the revenue. Everyone at New Wave was happy. However, the happiest people of all were Damon and Will. Not long ago, their situation had seemed so desperate, but now they were making a ton of money. Will had never dreamed of such success. In light of his huge success, Will had totally forgotten his depression. He no longer cared that his girlfriend had left him, or that he had been expelled from school. Now, Will's parents wouldn't even care if he didn't finish university. Will didn't need to graduate. He could be proud of his achievements. He was successful, all on his own. Damon, on the other hand, was more subdued than Will. Damon had always believed the Airblaze could succeed. He just hadn't expected that success to be so huge. Although Airblaze had been released only a month ago, KC Games had already made nearly $300,000 in profits. Damon and Will had never dreamt that their game would make so much money. This was very shocking. That night, Damon and Will drank to their heart's content in a very high-end five-star hotel in Meyerson. After that, Will went out clubbing, but Damon was tired and took a taxi back to school. With the unexpected success of Airblaze, Damon and Will needed to start thinking about the future of their company. Countless bigger companies had taken notice of their little startup and wanted to invest. KC Games would need to take big steps towards becoming a real company. To develop their business, they would also need to hire some staff members. Just as Damon's mobile game was reaching peak popularity, the semifinals of the New York Voice Talent Search finally began. In the days leading up to this, Levi called Damon more frequently to get his advice about music. Damon told him everything he knew. Damon's advice helped Levi a lot. All of the contestants in the semifinals were great musicians. However, Levi was the crowd favorite. He was entering this round of the semifinals in second place after Dalton had stolen the first place position. This was also a hot topic of online discussion. People were surprised that Damon had beaten Levi. However, Dalton's score had been higher than Levi's from the very beginning. A lot of people wondered if the show was rigged. However, there was no proof of this, and the final results were not guaranteed. The competition in the semifinals was so intense because the stakes were so high. 
The contestants had a -a once-in-a-lifetime chance to make a name for themselves. It wasn't unimaginable that people might resort to some shady business to get a leg up in the competition. After all, everyone wanted to win. Winter slowly gave way to spring and the flowers began to bloom. Finally, Damon heard from Veronica. Last time they had seen each other, Veronica had asked Damon if he wanted to work at the campus radio station. Damon had originally thought that Veronica was just joking. Furthermore, he had been busy dealing with Casey Games, so Damon gradually forgot about Veronica's offer. He hadn't expected to hear back from her. On the phone, Veronica told Damon to get ready for the interview at the radio station. It was in two days. Damon had nearly forgot all about Fiona, but she occasionally reminded him of her existence by calling to see if he wanted to hang out. Whenever she called to ask if Damon was free, he brushed her off. After chatting with Veronica that morning, Damon had lunch. Then... He went back to his dormitory to take a nap. Damon was suddenly awoken from a sound sleep when he felt something tickling his nose. He opened his eyes, and the first thing he saw was a face almost too beautiful to be real. Then he realized it was Fiona. She had a naughty smile on her face and was tickling Damon's nose with a long blade of grass. Damon frowned and asked, Why are you here? Now that Damon was awake, Fiona threw away the blade of grass. She straightened up and pouted. Cupcake, if I didn't come looking for you, I'd never see you. Why don't you ever come to see me? As Fiona straightened up, Damon couldn't help but notice Fiona's chest. Her breasts had grown bigger recently. Damon's eyes widened even more when he saw what she was wearing. Fiona seemed to have just come back from the gym and was still wearing her skin-tight workout gear. Damon could see Fiona's flawless figure. The tight sportswear highlighted Fiona's curves. Her chest was ample. Her legs were slender, and her butt was very perky. Most guys would find her figure very attractive. This was the ultimate temptation. Fiona's entire body radiated seduction. Her lips were very tempting as well. Despite his history with Fiona, Damon found her very attractive. He swallowed and said, Don't you have somewhere to be? Although she was very tempting, Damon still had to keep his wits about him. He must not let Fiona fool him again. Fiona wasn't happy about Damon's cool reaction. She said resentfully, Cupcake, why can't you be nicer to me? If you treat me better, maybe my heart will soften and I'll fall in love with you. Fiona shrugged her sleeve off her shoulder to reveal more of her fair skin and made an extremely alluring gesture. Fiona was very smart and she knew she was attractive. She also knew how to use her beauty to seduce men. She was annoyed that her moves weren't working on Damon. Perhaps the only reason Damon wasn't falling for her this time was because she'd played him before. After Damon had overheard what Fiona had said to Maddie, he was done. Damon said, Please go. Even if you have nothing better to do, I don't want you here. Fiona frowned again. Then her frown faded and she said, Cupcake, my father is coming to school. He said he wants to meet you. Meet me? Why? Fiona saw Damon's confusion and became anxious. Didn't I already tell you about it when we talked during winter vacation? Someone told my dad that I have a boyfriend, and now my dad wants to meet him. Aren't you going out with Darren? Damon asked, remembering that Fiona had mentioned this during the holidays. He had not taken it seriously at the time because he hadn't thought it was true. My dad knows Darren. He knows Darren isn't my boyfriend. Fiona pouted and said, You have to help me. I don't have time. When Fiona realized that Damon wasn't willing to help her, she started to whine. Beg you, Damon, I really am not going to trick you. I just help me. Afterwards, I'll owe you a big favor. I'll do anything I can to repay you, okay? If another guy had heard Fiona's words, he would have definitely agreed to help her. But Damon knew Fiona too well. He did not really trust her. He just wanted Fiona's drama out of his life. But when Damon saw Fiona acting so desperate, He agreed. Okay, but in return for helping you, I have only one request. After this is over, don't bother me anymore. Now that Casey Games was on the right track, his life had become more complicated. Although the team had things under control and Will was managing most of the company's day-to-day, Airblaze needed Damon's guidance. The game had all kinds of bugs that still needed to be worked out. As the game grew in popularity, They also needed to start scheduling development for the next game. Damon's time was extremely precious. Fiona had expected Damon to ask for more from her. She blinked her eyes. 
All right, then. Why don't we eat first? After dinner, we can talk about my dad's visit, and I'll fill you in on all the details. Is it really necessary? Damon did not understand what was so complicated about this. He was just pretending to be Fiona's boyfriend. Was there a need to be so serious? Fiona, however, seemed to be taking it very seriously. Of course. Otherwise, what if my dad sees through our story? Fiona grabbed Damon's hand and said, A very good restaurant just opened near campus. Let's go there. We don't need to hold hands for this. Damon wasn't happy about the way this was turning out. Associating with Fiona would affect his prospects for finding a real girlfriend. However, Fiona continued holding his hand. We need to practice. Otherwise, he'll know something's wrong. Damon helplessly followed her downstairs. A gust of wind blew in from outside. Fiona trembled. She looked at Damon and said, Cupcake, I'm a little cold. Damon took off his coat and put it over Fiona's shoulders. The expression in Fiona's eyes filled with shyness and joy. Maybe Fiona could be sweet sometimes. Fiona had chosen a romantic restaurant. The chef's cooking was very good. Fiona asked Damon what he liked to eat, and then she ordered a few appetizers for them to share. She started to tell Damon what he needed to do when her father came. However, Damon's mind was not on Fiona. He realized he knew some other people who were also in the restaurant. Two young men and two women sat not far from Damon and Fiona. The two men were quite handsome and wore stylish clothes. The two girls across from them were Jillian and Riley. Damon remembered what had happened between him and Jillian. He did not want to talk to them, so he deliberately turned his head away and pretended he hadn't seen them. However, Riley's sharp eyes had already noticed him. Riley started to point at Damon. The two guys they were with also turned and looked. They wore expressions of disdain and ridicule. The moment Jillian saw Damon, her eyes filled with a look of sadness. She immediately turned away. At that moment, Fiona also noticed Jillian. She slapped her hand on the table, smiled a big, fake smile, and said, Hey, it's your ex. Do you want to go and say hi? Damon shook his head and awkwardly replied, Let's eat. By now, their appetizers had arrived. Damon lowered his head and began to eat. Fiona said with a smile, Looks like your ex has a new boyfriend. He must be the handsome guy with blonde hair. I've heard about him. His name is Jonathan Rockerfield. He's from a wealthy family. Do you want to know more? Fiona saw that Damon was ignoring her and continued anyway. But you shouldn't worry about it. Although he has money, he's a scumbag. I also heard he likes to gamble. Your ex will regret her choice sooner or later. How do you know that? Fiona smugly replied, He has a bad reputation. Meanwhile, Riley was so obviously talking to her table about Damon. As Jillian listened to Riley speak, her pretty face became paler and paler. Damon did not know what Riley had said, but he guessed that it wasn't good. Then, one of the boys got up and went to the bathroom. The boy with blonde hair also stood up, but he walked straight towards Damon. Jillian looked scared. She quickly stood up and said, Jonathan, stay here. There's nothing going on between me and Damon. Please leave him alone. There's no need to go over there. Jonathan shook his head and said, You've been acting weird since you noticed this guy was here. So he's just your ex, huh? You still have feelings for him? Jillian's pretty face turned even paler. I don't have feelings for him. You're the only one I want. You're acting crazy, okay? Just come and talk to me with him. We'll go and show him that you're happier now without him. Jonathan grabbed Jillian's hand and pulled her towards Damon. Jillian gave in to Jonathan and got up to follow him. Maybe he was right. After all, it might be kind of satisfying to show off her new rich boyfriend to her ex. Jillian followed Jonathan and wrapped her arm around his waist. At least she could let Damon know that she had found true love. Jonathan pulled Jillian close and walked over to Damon's table, but he did not look at Damon. Instead, he smiled at Fiona and said, Hey, gorgeous, do you mind if I sit here? He sat down without waiting for Fiona to answer. He edged his chair closer to Fiona. Fiona frowned. Go away, you're not welcome here. He hadn't expected Fiona to be so bold. When talking to Damon, she'd seemed so gentle. Fiona's response made him very angry, but he hid his anger and laughed. He said, <laughs> Wow, you're feisty. You have quite the personality. I think we got off on the wrong foot. How about we be friends? Get lost. Fiona was merciless. Damon hadn't seen this side of her before. She had usually been sweet to him. But Fiona didn't have the patience to deal with Jonathan's crap. 
she would stand up for Damon. Jonathan didn't have much patience either. His expression turned extremely ugly. He said, No wonder you're with someone like Damon. You both deserve each other. Fiona immediately ridiculed him. Who do you think you are? Why don't you look at yourself in the mirror? You look like a loser. What right do you have to judge us? Jonathan was embarrassed by Fiona's words. She was not an easy person to deal with. Since he couldn't think of something to say to gain the upper hand, he glowered at Damon. I heard that you were with Jillian before. I'm warning you, she's mine now. You better keep your filthy paws off her. If you ever talk to Jillian again, I'll make you wish you never met her. Next time that the police come to get you, it won't just be to make a statement. They'll lock you up. Even Jillian felt that Jonathan was taking things too far. She was worried that he was going to start a real fight. Jonathan, let's go. This is meaningless, she said. Jonathan pushed Jillian's hand away and said coldly, Why are you trying to stop me? Are you upset that I want to teach your ex a lesson? It was obvious to everyone watching that Jonathan had no respect for Jillian. Jonathan clearly frightened Jillian. She tried hard to pretend to smile. She said, Jonathan, you misunderstood me. I really love you and only you. Please don't do this. She still looked like she was scared of him. They didn't look like they were in love at all. Fiona pointed at Jonathan and mocked him. Who are you calling filthy? You're the filthy one. Your whole family is filthy. Jonathan said sarcastically, And your boyfriend's a filthy criminal. Who knows what sort of things he did to pay for that game he developed. Don't you know that he's in trouble with the cops? Fiona placed her hands on her waist and snapped, No matter what, he's much better than trash like you. Jonathan pointed at Damon and said, If you want, let's take this outside. Don't hide behind your girl. Fiona said, I'm protecting my boyfriend. Shut your stinky mouth, scum. Fiona felt like she was about to explode in anger. Who were these people? Jonathan didn't even realize how ugly he was. He wasn't worth one ten thousandth of Damon. Is that so? Jonathan said with disdain. Do you think I don't know? You're playing with this poor guy. If you're really his girlfriend, kiss him now. Fiona looked at Jillian, who was still standing behind Jonathan. She then looked at Damon, who was clearly stunned by her outburst. She bit her lips, and her face turned slightly red. Damon was just as caught off guard by the demand. Fiona wrapped her arms around Damon's waist. Then, in front of everyone's stunned gazes, she leaned in to kiss Damon. Damon was amazed. Although he and Fiona had kissed before, he hadn't expected Fiona to be bold enough to actually kiss him in public. Was she really doing this to try to help him out? Damon opened his eyes and saw that Fiona was totally into their kiss. Damon was confused. A second later, Damon felt Fiona's nimble little tongue on his lips. She didn't hold anything back. Fiona kissed him wantonly. Suddenly, Damon felt as if his entire body was going to explode. Fiona was hugging him tightly to her. Her ample chest pressed up against him. He could feel her body through the tight clothing she was wearing, and he could smell her perfume. Damon felt like he was floating in the clouds. Damon had unconsciously moved his hands to Fiona's small waist. He could feel her slender and flexible body through the thin layer of her clothing. Fiona clung tightly to Damon. Fiona smelled sweet and fragrant. He could feel the warmth and energy radiating from her. He did not want to waste the beauty of this moment. Even though he wasn't Fiona's boyfriend, he couldn't help himself. She was too beautiful, and she was throwing herself right at him. After the first time Damon kissed Fiona, he'd had lingering feelings for her. To be honest, he had been dreaming of kissing her again. Fiona was very beautiful. In his opinion, Veronica and Avery were the only other girls whose beauty could compare with Fiona's. But Fiona had pursued him with more courage and initiative. She kept tempting Damon, and he kind of liked it. This time, Damon wasn't clumsy like when they kissed the first time. He was actually a pretty good kisser now. After letting Fiona tease him with her tongue for a while, he finally got bold and kissed her back with tongue. He forgot all about the surrounding crowd and the shocked expressions on these people's faces. Fiona moaned. She was obviously responding well to Damon's kiss. She closed her eyes. Her delicate eyelashes trembled slightly. She pressed her body even more tightly against his. He could feel her rubbing against him. He could tell she was just as into it as he was. Fiona was indeed enjoying their kiss. Her little tongue wantonly stroked Damon's. 
Her arms tightly hugged Damon, not wanting him to pull away. In fact, the first time that Fiona had kissed Damon, she'd hoped for this kind of reaction. She'd yearned for Damon to hold her tightly like this. His arms were warm and comfortable. His embrace was the best feeling in the world. Sometimes, at night, Fiona even dreamt about kissing Damon, but she was too embarrassed to say anything about it. Now, she used her body language to encourage Damon. She didn't want their embrace to end. She liked this bold side of him. But good times never last. Fiona and Damon heard everyone around them yelling, and they came back to reality. Damon was trying to be rational. He did not want to look ridiculous in front of everyone. He gently released her. Fiona was more flustered. She tightened her embrace. She opened her eyes slightly and looked at Damon with an expression of both anger and regret. It was as if she blamed Damon for not understanding what she wanted. Her heart felt empty as if she had lost something important to her. Damon stared coldly at Jonathan and said in a deep voice, If you have nothing better to do, then get lost. Fiona, who was still in Damon's arms, finally came back to her senses. She released her tight embrace and casually wrapped an arm around his waist. She rested her head comfortably against Damon's shoulder. She was secretly overjoyed about the kiss, but she played it cool and said, Do you still think that we're lying? Fiona stared straight at Jillian. She saw Jillian's pale face and her heart surged with victorious joy. Fiona relished tormenting Jillian. Jonathan was furious now. He pointed to Damon and said angrily, You think you're pretty smart, huh? After that, Jonathan stormed off. Jillian did not immediately turn to follow him. She looked like she wanted to say something, but stopped herself. Jillian actually had a lot of things to say to Damon. Jillian looked at Fiona and decided to keep her mouth shut. Damon did not have feelings for her anymore, so what was there to say? She silently turned and left. After causing a scene like that, Damon and Fiona felt too awkward to stay in the restaurant. They'd almost finished eating. After Fiona paid the bill, she took Damon's hand and led him out of the restaurant. Night had fallen, and the streetlights shone brightly. Many students were out, and the atmosphere was extremely lively. However, Fiona wanted to get away from the crowds. She wanted to be alone with Damon. She held Damon's hand and asked, Do you want to go for a walk with me? We could go to the bridge. I think we should go back to the dorms, Damon replied, but he was still thinking about what Jonathan had said. Jonathan had threatened Damon. Why had Jonathan been talking about the police? Jonathan had said that next time the police would lock Damon up. How had he known about Damon's statement to the police? Furthermore, Jonathan seemed to know a lot about Damon's old plug-in business. Something fishy was going on. Damon even suspected that Jonathan might have had something to do with the police investigation into Will's business. It now seemed likely that Jonathan was involved somehow. Damon considered how to get to the bottom of this. Fiona had no idea what Damon was thinking about. All she could tell was that Damon was not happy. She put her hand on Damon's shoulder and said, I'm a little cold. Can you put your arms around me? Damon shook his head and sighed. Fiona, this game is over. I don't have time for this. You're wasting your time on me. You'd be better off finding someone who truly cares for you. Damon didn't appreciate being involved in Fiona's drama, even if she was beautiful. When Fiona realized that Damon did not care about her, a trace of sadness flashed in her soft eyes, but she still smiled sweetly. Yes, I know, but I haven't found a boyfriend yet. Can't you just play along for a little longer? You're so unromantic. How are you going to find a real girlfriend? Don't tell me that you want to be alone for the rest of your life. Don't worry about me. After I help you deal with your dad, we're done. You have to leave me alone, okay? Fiona nodded slightly. She started to tear up as she stared at Damon's face. She softly asked, If one day I told you that I was really in love with you, would you believe me? Damon was stunned. Fiona's big eyes seemed to be trying to say something to him. Although he'd never really been in a relationship, he could feel that Fiona wanted something more from him. However, Damon kept his head on his shoulders. He remembered that Fiona had always been cunning, like a beautiful snake. It was very likely that she was just playing him. Long after Damon's conversation with Fiona was over, her playful expression still lingered in his mind. She had seemed like a completely different person than the Fiona that he knew. Damon was confused. He did not know which side of Fiona was real. When he thought about how she had humiliated him before, Damon felt very angry. 
His feelings towards her turned instantly cold. No, he couldn't make the same mistake twice. He had to protect his dignity. He thought of Fiona's smile again. Before they parted ways that night, she'd said, I understand why you're being cautious. I've hurt you before. Don't worry. It would take a miracle to make me fall in love with you. When she said this, she hadn't been able to look him in the eye. She hadn't seemed like her usual carefree self. Damon had already wasted too much time thinking about Fiona. Casey Games was finally on the right track. Will and Damon hired more employees and the business grew. Furthermore, with Airblaze's explosive success, Casey Games was now earning a lot of money. Casey Games had built its reputation on Airblaze. Their company was getting a lot of attention in the gaming industry. Will and Damon had even been invited to attend a big conference being held in Meyerson for game company CEOs. People had already started reaching out to Will about investment opportunities. The future of Casey Games looked very optimistic and people wanted to get in on the ground floor. These people were interested in buying shares of Casey Games at a high price. Will and Damon, who were not from wealthy families, were shocked by the sky-high prices that people were willing to pay. Meanwhile, the next round of the new voice talent search was about to air on TV. All the controversies surrounding the competition had only made it more popular. People were on the edge of their seats waiting to see what would happen in the next round. Everyone was planning to tune in, and the show's ratings were explosive. Under the public's watchful eyes, the contestants who had made it to the final eight would compete for a chance to enter the finals. Anyone who made it through this round would become famous overnight. In the days leading up to the competition, Levi was calling Damon practically every day. Each time he called, they chatted for a long time. As the semifinals neared, the pressure on Levi got greater and greater. Levi needed Damon's guidance. If Levi hoped to win, his songs needed to be amazing, but he was having trouble writing anything good. Unless he could come up with something better, he would not reach his goal. Levi felt helpless. Damon was his only hope. Surely Damon could help make him a breakthrough. Levi would write a rough draft of a song and then ask Damon to help him polish it. After half a month of going back and forth like this, Levi had made a lot of changes to his original drafts. Now that the competition's next round was about to start, Levi was ready to face his final test. Aside from Levi, Avery had also made it into the top eight. However, Avery had just made the cut. Avery's score was low compared with Levi's. However, it had been enough. Avery had never dreamt that she would make it into the finals. Even if she was the first person eliminated in the next rounds, Avery still had no regrets. Being in the semifinals itself was proof alone of her musical talent. The fame that came along with earning a spot in the top eight of the new voice talent search basically guaranteed her a future in the music industry. If she worked hard, her dreams of becoming a superstar could become a reality. On the evening of the big show, Xander and Hector rearranged the furniture in the dormitory so they could all comfortably watch the competition on TV. The table in the middle of the dorm was crowded with bottles of beer, bags of chips, and bowls of popcorn. Every time Levi competed, the guys in the dorm invited all their friends over to watch with them, including the girls. They all wanted to cheer Levi on together. Levi had become the pride of the campus. Everyone knew him. When the guys from 502 told people that Levi, the superstar, was their roommate, people were always jealous. Meyerson was a famous school in the country, and it had produced a lot of talented people. But no one from Meyerson had ever hit it big in the music industry before. No one had expected Levi to make it to the finals of the new voice talent search. Even the heads of the university were talking about Levi and cheering him on. The competition would air at 8 o'clock in the evening. After dinner, the students from the nearby dorms, as well as some friends from the girls' dorms, all rushed up to room 502. Everyone ate snacks and drank beer while waiting for the competition to begin. Only four girls had come to join the guys, Willow, Sammy, Zoe, and Caroline. Jillian didn't come, and neither did Riley. It seemed that Riley and Xander were still fighting. Time passed quickly, and it was soon 8 o'clock. The finals began. Since it was being broadcast live nationwide, a lot of people were watching. This time, it was being hosted by a famous celebrity who had hosted the Oscars last year. The competition was intense. First, the eight contestants would compete, and then four would be eliminated. Then, the four would become two. Finally, the last two contestants would compete for the top spot. Avery was eliminated in the first round. Although she was a little sad, she was not disappointed. She had considered herself lucky just to have made it this far. 
With Levi's popularity and talent, not to mention all the help he'd received from Damon, he easily made it to the final round. However, people were surprised that Levi still continued to score lower than Dalton. Although Dalton was a strong contestant, he wasn't as strong as Levi. People couldn't figure out why Dalton kept getting higher scores than Levi, and they wondered if the competition was rigged. Were all these famous judges trying to protect Dalton for some reason? The audience was upset about this unfair treatment. Everyone in room 502 was yelling at the TV, Levi, do your best. You must defeat Dalton. No one believes these dirty tricks. We all support you, Levi. Levi, we love you. You're the best. Levi, we're all your fans. Don't let us down. Everyone was looking forward to the final round. Dalton and Levi were the last two competitors standing. They would face off in the final round. This was destined to be the most intense match of the competition. Everyone would be watching. Neither of them could afford to lose in front of so many people. After a short rest, the final match began. The two youths walked onto the stage. The audience was full of anticipation. Levi was planning to play the song that Damon had helped him write. The song was called Shades of Blue. People's hearts were pounding as they listened to Levi play. Everyone could relate to Levi's song. It spoke to the students who were listening now and brought up familiar feelings in them. But the song also spoke to anyone who had been young. People listened and remembered the beautiful memories of their youth. Levi was putting on an amazing performance. The song was on par with the song that had gotten him to nationals. The song that was now in the top three of the Billboard Hot 100. When Levi finished singing his song, the entire hall was filled with applause. Even the judges couldn't help but give him a thumbs up. They had heard many great songs tonight, but Levi's was the only song that had really touched their hearts and resonated so well with the audience. Without a doubt, this was the best song ever sung in this singing competition. Levi was the only contestant who had pulled off such an amazing performance. Levi had not only wowed the live audience, he had also amazed all the TV viewers who were tuned in. Everyone in the audience was raving. That song was amazing. It reminds me of when I was young. That song was really good. It makes me think of the girl I used to love. I wonder if she's still okay. Where is she now? That song was so beautiful that I cried. If this song doesn't win the championship, then there's definitely something shady going on here. Dalton was still waiting to perform, and he was feeling the pressure. Levi was a hard act to follow. When Dalton came out on stage, he tripped and almost fell down. Perhaps his nerves were getting to him. His hand trembled as he held the microphone. Although he'd practiced hard, he did not perform well because he was so nervous. He got the song's last notes totally wrong. When Dalton finished singing, the audience was very angry. How did this guy get into the finals? He has no talent. If Levi doesn't win the competition, then the competition is rigged. It's not fair to all of the fans. If Levi doesn't win the competition, then there's no hope for the world. Everyone seemed to agree that if Dalton won the competition, it would be an insult to musicians everywhere. In fact, Dalton was well connected in the music industry. If he hadn't been, the judges wouldn't have given him such high scores. However, the last song that Dalton sang had indeed been jarring to the ear. Everyone would protest if the judges gave him a high score again. The judges couldn't do that. To do so would be an insult to the intelligence of the entire country. However, because Dalton was well connected, the judges didn't want to embarrass him. His final score was not as low as it should have been, but Levi obviously scored higher this time. However, the winner of the finals match would not necessarily win the competition. They still needed to add up the contestant's total points from all the performances. The contestant with the highest overall points would obtain the final victory. People nervously waited for the contestant's total points to be calculated. The people watching from room 502 were most nervous of all. Theo, who was sitting closest to the TV, shouted, If Levi doesn't win the competition, there's no hope for the music industry. Quinn pressed her palms together tightly and prayed for Levi. Damon was very calm. No matter what the result was, Levi had worked hard. Things would turn out fine for him. The host was counting the votes on stage to liven up the atmosphere. The camera panned over the faces of the last two contestants while they waited to see their results. Levi and Dalton both looked very nervous. They fixed their eyes on the huge screen, waiting to see the final result. The judges sat below the stage nervously. The scores were finally tallied, 
but the host hadn't announced the winner yet. He took a moment to make a funny joke and then said in a steady voice, We have a winner for the new voice talent search. I am proud to announce that the champion is Levi from Meyerson University. Let's congratulate him. The venue exploded with applause. When the camera showed the final scores, Levi's was just barely more than Dalton's. Levi's score was 108 and Dalton's was 107. If Dalton hadn't gotten nervous at the end and messed up his performance, he would have won the championship. After his poor performance, it wasn't possible for the judges to let him win. People would have been outraged. People took to social media to congratulate Levi, and also to criticize the competition about how unfair the scoring had been. However, there wasn't as much criticism as there would have been if Dalton had won. Most of the comments congratulated Levi. Now that Levi had won the competition, there was no doubt that his star would rise. When Levi was announced winner, room 502 was filled with thunderous applause. Caroline said excitedly, I love Levi, he's really handsome. Zoe covered her face with her hands and said, He is really amazing, I love him. Willow turned and said to Theo, If you were half as amazing as Levi, I would be happy. Theo laughed awkwardly at Willow's joke. Even Xander and Hector felt that the gap between them and Levi had grown. Levi was heading for stardom now. Comparatively speaking, the others were just regular people. The camera turned to show Levi and Dalton. Levi had an expression of wild joy on his face. On the other hand, Dalton wore an ugly expression. However, he accepted his loss. Dalton turned to Levi and gave him a friendly hug. The host handed the microphone to Levi and asked him to say some final words. Obviously, Levi was very excited. Usually, he looked calm, but right now, he was ecstatic. He took the microphone and thanked everyone who he could think of. He made a special point of thanking the Dean of the College of Music who had helped him. But he also made a point of thanking another very special person. Levi's face filled the TV screen as he spoke, his voice filled with emotion. I have already thanked a lot of people, but the person who I really want to thank the most is my roommate at university. He doesn't want me to say his name, but I just want to say how much I adore him. He is my biggest hero. He has amazing talent. You may or may not believe it, but he is even more talented than me. Despite his talent, he is content with ordinary life and doesn't want to be famous. He has been in the background this whole time, silently supporting me on my road to success. Even though he's not here tonight, I still need to sincerely express my gratitude to him. When Levi said this, tears of gratitude welled up in his eyes. Levi knew that he couldn't have made it this far without Damon. All along, it had been Damon's talent that had enabled Levi to succeed. In fact, all of this glory should have been Damon's. Damon had given all the glory to Levi because he was busy pursuing different goals. Levi was grateful. Perhaps many people who heard Levi's speech thought that he was just being polite. Although this person who Levi spoke of had clearly helped him a lot, how could he be more talented than Levi? The mere thought of it was ridiculous. Levi was a musical genius. If someone more talented than Levi existed, that person's talent would be godlike. It was scary just thinking about it. The easiest explanation was that Levi was exaggerating and that this legendary roommate did not exist at all. Levi's final comments caused an uproar amongst the students watching in room 502. Xander, Quinn, Theo, Hector, and Damon were the only guys who lived with Levi in the dorm. Therefore, all their classmates turned and stared, asking who Levi had been talking about. In the past months, whenever Levi called Damon to ask for advice, Damon had left the dorm to take the call. He had done a great job of keeping his and Levi's communications a secret from the other roommates. So the other four in the dormitory had no idea that he had been helping Levi. The other four guys started to question each other. Everyone turned and looked at Damon, but after Damon denied having anything to do with it, everyone stopped paying attention to him. The students all questioned each other, but they were unable to figure out who Levi had been talking about. Naturally, everyone was greatly disappointed. Who was this mysterious genius who had helped Levi? It seemed that the answer would remain a mystery until Levi returned. The other students finished up their beers and headed back to their own dorms for the night. Avery, who had taken eighth place in the finals, took a car back to the hotel with Levi. They knew each other because they were both from Meyerson. Since the competition was over, they would pack their luggage and return to Meyerson tomorrow. The weather was unusually good for this time of year, 
and stars shone brightly in the sky above the city. Levi and Avery were both in good moods. Avery's mentor, Asher, and the dean of the College of Music, Dr. Jones, were also in the cab. They were treating Levi more politely than they had before his unprecedented victory in the new voice talent search. Levi was famous now, and there was a good chance that he would become a superstar in the music industry. Perhaps one day they would need Levi's help. They wanted to get on his good side. They chatted for a long time. Traffic was bad and the cab crawled along at a snail's pace. Eventually, the two mentors dozed off in their seats. After Asher and Dr. Jones fell asleep, Avery turned to talk to Levi. She first congratulated Levi, then asked, Levi, were all the things you said true? Yes, Levi nodded. I wanted to introduce you to him that day that you came to the dorm. Really? Avery asked, looking at Levi in confusion. Levi nodded seriously. I wouldn't lie to you. He is really very talented. I see him as both my friend and my mentor. I am where I am today thanks to his guidance. Damon had given Levi a lot of advice about music, but Levi would never forget how Damon saved him when Matt had stolen his song. Damon had personally taught Levi that spectacular new song moments before he had taken the stage during the competition at Meyerson. Avery was shocked to hear that Levi's mysterious mentor was real. She wondered what kind of person was worthy of such high praise. Levi had said that this person was his friend and also his mentor. It sounded like Levi admired this person for both his charisma and his musical skills. Avery did not think that someone so amazing could be hiding in Levi's dormitory. She was becoming more and more interested in this mysterious person. Levi closed his eyes like he wanted to rest. If not for this, Avery would not have been able to stop herself from getting to the bottom of this mystery. KC Games was on the right track now. Airblaze continued to make bank. However, the game's development had been impromptu. Although it was extremely popular, it lacked the ability to earn money when compared to other popular large-scale online games. Moreover, as time passed, the Airblaze craze slowly faded. If KC Games did not continue to develop popular games, it wouldn't be able to compete in the market. After all, software companies survived by developing new technology. Without hard work, the company could go out of business within a week. To gain a foothold in the real game market, KC Games had to create more masterpieces. Although Airblaze was a phenomenal game, if KC Games wanted to continue to profit, Airblaze alone was not enough. Fortunately, as Airblaze continued to grow in popularity, KC Games was able to successfully bank some cash. However, if Will and Damon really wanted to develop a new large-scale game, they would have to reinvest their earnings, and the risk would be huge. Many venture capitalists were willing to invest in KC Games. However, they wanted a lot in return for their investments. Some had offered as much as 1,500,000 in investments, but they wanted 80% share of KC Games in exchange. Damon and Will could obviously not accept such terms. In the end, most of the investors thought the KC Games was just a one-trick pony. They thought that it had just gotten lucky with Airblaze and it might not be so lucky next time. Will thought they should be more conservative with their future plans. Since Airblaze was so popular, they could use its profits to develop and launch an expansion. They could add new locations and better items. Although the game was not as popular as it had been at first, people were still playing. If they released an expansion, at least they could be certain that the game would continue to earn money. However, Damon didn't agree with Will's opinion. He thought they needed to do more. Damon agreed that they should develop an expansion for Airblaze, but he also wanted to develop a new game. He thought they needed to recruit new talent and hire a team to start development. Damon was ambitious. He was not satisfied with earning just a small amount of money. They lived in an era of change. Technology was improving by leaps and bounds. If they didn't seize this opportunity, they risked falling behind. KC Games had not reached its full potential. It needed to launch a popular large-scale game. This way, KC Games would be profitable for years to come and make a name for itself in the gaming industry. The disadvantages of this plan were also obvious. Developing both an expansion for Airblaze and a new large-scale game simultaneously meant the KC Games would be fighting a battle on two fronts. If Damon and Will could successfully develop a large-scale game, it would be something worth celebrating. But if the plan failed, KC Games would definitely go under. Will was a little hesitant about Damon's suggestion. After all, their company's success had just taken off. Damon's two-way battle plan was extremely risky. For the first time, 
Will had tasted the joy of success, but he was a more conservative person than Damon. He thought Casey Games could start off with launching other people's games instead of developing its own. This way, they could at least save on the development costs. However, Damon rejected his idea outright. KC Games was just a small company. Even if other game developers were willing to let KC Games launch their games, the high commission fees that would be involved were not something Damon and Will could afford. If Will and Damon could afford to launch other people's games, they might as well use the money to develop a new game of their own. Will didn't know when it had started, but he realized that he now blindly trusted Damon's opinion when it came to deciding what was best for their company. It wasn't like he worshipped Damon or anything, but Will recognized that Damon had unparalleled talent in the gaming industry. In less than a year, Damon had quickly progressed from being a student who had just learned programming to being someone who could independently develop and launch a popular game. Will had always felt that he had talent in his field, and he certainly wasn't stupid, but Damon made him second-guess himself. Will was not a risk-taker. Now, Airblaze had brought him the kind of wealth that was normally out of reach for ordinary people like him. However, Damon's ambition was rubbing off on him in a way that was hard for him to express. He suddenly began wondering why he didn't have bigger dreams for his life. Will finally let Damon convince him. His intuition told him that going along with Damon's ideas would keep leading him to success. Damon had come through for him several times already. Damon had earned Will's trust. Casey Games was short of funds. They didn't have enough money to put Damon's grand plan into action yet. However, after they developed and released the expansion for Airblaze, downloads of the game spiked again, and Casey Games' income began to rise steadily. When Levi returned, he instantly became the most famous person on campus. Levi's fame and talent made him the center of attention. People were always waiting around the dorms for a chance to see him. Many fanatical girls even hid in the dorm building, waiting for Levi to come back from class so that they could express their love to him. Gradually, the number of girls increased. Many girls placed candles and flowers near the entryway to the building. After class, girls would try to talk to him and ask for his phone number. Some girls even used more creative methods to try to win him over. There were even rumors that girls were fighting each other over him. Countless girls who loved Levi slid into his DMs. Some girls confessed their feelings and other girls teased him. Some even sent pictures and videos to him. Although the girls knew they probably didn't stand a chance of getting Levi, they still thought it was worth a shot. Levi was handsome and talented. Even if it was only for a one night stand, they all still wanted to be with him. Levi was a shining star at Meyerson University. It had been raining for an entire half a month, but today the weather finally cleared up. The temperature outside had risen and the bright sunlight outside the window was very warm. Damon woke up in the morning and made a plan to meet Will. He wanted to talk to Will about his ideas for a new game. Damon brushed his teeth and washed his face. It was 9.30 in the morning. Everyone in the dorm had gone out except for Quinn, who was browsing online for a part-time job. Damon was about to go downstairs for breakfast when someone knocked on the door. Damon opened the door. Veronica stood there smiling sweetly. Hi, Damon. Damon was slightly surprised to see Veronica. She seemed to have dressed up a little. She was wearing a dress. Damon couldn't help but notice how fair and slender her legs were. Her exposed skin was very tempting. Although Veronica wore flat shoes, she was beautiful and tall. Damon's heart beat faster. Veronica was a natural beauty, and her smile was even more charming. Veronica saw that her appearance had stunned Damon, and her pretty face blushed slightly. Damon, are you free? I've already told the people at the radio station about you. They want to interview you today. Damon was slightly stunned to hear this. Do I really need to do an interview? Veronica thought that Damon was trying to back out on her. She bit her lips. When she spoke, her tone sounded a little anxious. It's just a quick interview. Don't you want to work there? Okay, no problem. Veronica had caught Damon off guard. He had forgotten all about the interview, but he didn't want her to think that he was not confident. Besides, working with Veronica at the radio station day and night sounded like a dream. You'll do great, said Veronica. Her entire face lit up. The two of them prepared to leave. Just then, someone else knocked on the door. Damon said, please come in. The door swung open and a heavyset, bald man walked in. He looked around the dorm room for a moment before greeting Damon. Hey, what's your name? 
Damon had never seen this heavyset man before, so he took a moment to size him up before answering. Who are you? He asked. I work for Tony Music Entertainment. I'm looking for Levi. Does he live in this dormitory? Levi's the champion of the new voice talent search competition. As he spoke, the man handed over a business card. Damon and Veronica glanced at the card and discovered that the man's name was Ricky King. The business card said that Ricky was a general manager at Tony Music Entertainment. Could it be true? Damon and Veronica had heard about Tony Music Entertainment. It was a top record label in the music industry. It had signed countless musicians and superstars. Damon and Veronica had not expected that such a famous record label would be after Levi, but it made sense. Levi was very famous now. He was talented, and he had also won New Voice Talent Search. His future looked bright. Every record label wanted to sign this kind of talent. Since the success of Levi's first single, people from recording companies had often come looking for him in the dorms. However, none of them were as powerful as Tony Music Entertainment. Levi had really made it big. Yes, Levi lives in this dormitory, but you might have to wait around for him. He's not here right now, Damon replied. Is that so? Well, then I'll wait for him. Instead of sitting down, Ricky started to stroll around the dormitory looking at things. He asked them which desk was Levi's, but then stopped and stood in front of Damon's desk. May I ask whose desk this is? Ricky seemed very interested in the things on Damon's desk. Why, what's the matter? Damon asked. Ricky was smart. He read Damon's body language and ventured a guess. Is this your desk? When Damon didn't answer him, Ricky knew he'd guessed correctly. Ricky took a piece of paper from his pocket and squinted at it. Then he reached out and shook Damon's hand. Hello, Mr. Ryan Gold. I've been looking for you for a long time. Ryan Gold? This was the alias that Damon had used when he uploaded his music online. Damon had never mentioned it to anyone. No one knew that Ryan Gold was actually Damon. Why did Ricky seem so certain about it? Damon was shocked. He turned his head to look at Veronica and saw that she was looking at him curiously. Damon pretended to be confused. Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Ricky was smart and instantly caught on to Damon's game. He laughed and said, Okay, okay, I get it. I don't know your real name, but I want to talk to you about something. Are you free for lunch this afternoon? We can talk about the details then. Ricky handed his business card to Damon and asked for Damon's phone number. Damon hesitated for a moment, then agreed. He had several reasons for doing this. The first reason was that although Ricky had discovered Damon's secret identity, he hadn't exposed him. The second reason was that Damon really wanted to know how Ricky had figured out that he was Ryan Gold. After Ricky exchanged phone numbers with Damon, he pressed Damon to call him as soon as he had time. After that, he didn't even wait around for Levi. He just turned and left. Damon immediately realized that Ricky had not been here to find Levi at all. Ricky had been here to find him. Although Levi had won the competition, Damon's musical talent and achievements were far greater than Levi's. Ryan Gold was even more popular than Levi. Damon and Veronica left the dormitory together. As they walked along, Veronica kept looking at Damon curiously. When she realized that Damon did not have any intention of talking about what had just happened, she couldn't stay silent any longer. Damon, why did that guy call you Ryan Gold? Damon shook his head and pretended to be confused. Yeah, I don't know what he was thinking. Is that so? Veronica stared at Damon for a moment and saw that he didn't want to continue talking about Ricky or Ryan Gold, so she changed the subject to the upcoming interview. Damon, you might need to do an audition during the interview this afternoon. You have to show them that you can do the job. Although Veronica knew that Damon had a great voice, she was a little worried that he might not perform well on the spot, so she was trying to prepare him for whatever might happen. Veronica quite admired Damon's talent, and she really believed that he would make a great radio host. He just had to do well in the interview. The two of them went to the campus radio station. When they arrived, they saw a big group of people waiting outside. These people were all here for the interview as well. Some of them were dressed nicely in suits and ties, while others were dressed casually in jeans and t-shirts. When the men in the group saw Veronica, they eyed her like hungry wolves. They were practically salivating over her. Then they noticed Damon. When they saw that he was with Veronica, they glared at him. Now that Veronica and Damon had arrived, the interview process finally began. The interview was mostly just an audition. Although the radio station was looking to hire someone with a pleasant and charismatic voice, the job could suit a variety of different people. 
Whoever got hired would not only need to host live broadcasts, they might also need to recite poems or sing. The first person to be interviewed was a heavyset guy. A bespectacled interviewer asked the guy to recite a poem. The heavyset guy opened his mouth, but he stumbled over his words and didn't know what to say. The interviewer rolled his eyes at the guy and said, Okay, that's enough. We'll get back to you next. On his way out of the interview room, the heavyset guy stopped to talk to Veronica. He said shamelessly, Veronica, can you put in a good word for me? I deserve a second chance. I applied because I wanted to work with you. Veronica shrugged him off, and some guys who worked for the station escorted the man out of the building. The second person in line for an interview was picking his nose as he walked in. The bespectacled man handed him a piece of paper and said, Read this aloud. The nose picker began to read aloud in a thick southern accent. The interview was clearly not impressed and interrupted the man. Next. The poor guy gathered his things and walked out. The next person in line was a bald guy. The interview asked the bald guy to sing a song, and the bald guy began to howl a death metal song at the top of his lungs. The interviewer put his hands over his ears and said, Get lost, get out of here immediately. He motioned for one of the other employees to quickly usher the bald man away. Hiring someone like this was out of the question. They needed to hire someone with talent. The first few people who had auditioned were terrible, but Meyerson was a top university, so there were bound to be some people with talent interviewing today. One of the next people in line was a guy who wore glasses and had a small mustache. When it was his turn to interview, he freestyled with his own lyrics. It was obvious that he had talent. He also had a very charismatic voice. Out of all the interviewers so far, he was the best choice. After the guy finished rapping, everyone watching the interview cheered. Even Veronica's eyes lit up as she watched his performance. The bespectacled interviewer seemed ready to make a decision on the spot and hire this guy outright. But considering that there were a few people still waiting to interview, the process had to be completed. When it was finally Damon's turn to do the interview, Veronica looked worried. She was worried because she knew that her boss, the bespectacled man, would give Damon a hard time. The bespectacled man's name was Tony Wexler, and he was in charge of the station. Tony was a senior student at Meyerson. He was not only the vice president of the student union, but also a member of the Students Association of Entrepreneurs, or SAE, on campus. He had started a company while he was still in his first year, and his company was now worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. He had a prestigious reputation. Normally, when students at Meyerson reached fourth year, they would leave the student union and start looking for an internship within their field of study. However, Tony liked the authority of his high position in the student union. He enjoyed the feeling of having people look up to him. This was why he still had not stepped down. Everyone knew that Tony had already made up his mind about hiring the guy with the small mustache. After the guy with the small mustache finished his interview, it was obvious that Tony was no longer interested in interviewing more people. He stretched and nodded to the girl sitting next to him. She seemed to know what Tony was thinking. The girl's name was Erica Smith, and she was also in her fourth year. She worked in Tony's company, and she was helping with the interview process today. She glanced at Damon, who had just sat down in front of them. She handed him a piece of paper and said, Memorize this. You have one minute. Damon took the paper and glanced at it. He saw that the entire page was covered in tiny print. Damon glanced at it for a moment before Erica snatched it back. Damon looked at Erica's silky hair. Erica ignored his gaze and said, Okay, now recite what was on the paper. When the people in the room heard this, they instantly fell silent. Damon swore silently to himself. What the heck? Erica had told him that he could look at the paper for a whole minute, but then she snatched it away after just 10 seconds. The average person could not have even read that page in a minute, let alone memorize it. Erica was clearly trying to tell Damon just to give up. The other people in the interview room looked at each other in surprise. Clearly, they all knew that Erica was trying to make things difficult for Damon. But they also knew that this was an order from Tony, so they all remained silent. Veronica was the only person who spoke up. She said lightly, Erica, we're trying to hire a radio host here, not a super genius. I think that you should make your request more realistic. What do you think? Erica had long been jealous of Veronica's beauty and talent, but she did not dare to openly offend Veronica. Erica realized that Veronica wanted Damon to get the job. Erica had been trying to make things difficult for Damon to please Tony, but now she could see that Veronica was being serious. Erica hesitated. She was afraid of pissing off Veronica. She thought about her next move. Should she give Damon another chance? 
After all, even she felt her previous request had been a bit ridiculous. Unexpectedly, Tony, who had seemed half asleep just minutes before, said with a smile, Veronica, although we're only a campus station, the Meyerson radio station is one of the best on the East Coast. If we want to maintain a high broadcasting standard, naturally, we need to hire the most talented people. With Tony backing her up, Erica regained her confidence and said, Oh, I agree. What Tony said makes sense. I was going to say the same thing. The other employees in the interview room also spoke out in agreement. Yes, 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 what Tony said makes sense. He's right, we don't need to hire anyone mediocre. If this guy wants the job, he needs to prove he can do it. He needs to impress us. Veronica was at a loss. She didn't know what to say. She felt that Damon was being discriminated against. How could anyone memorize that many words in just 10 seconds? That was almost impossible. Just as Veronica was deciding whether or not she should argue with Tony, Damon said, It's okay. How about I give it a shot? The people in the room thought they had misheard him. Was this guy crazy? Was he just bluffing or did he really think he could do it? Had this guy actually said he wanted to give it a try? Didn't he understand that the request was impossible? Seeing Damon's confident look, Tony smiled coldly. He wanted to see Damon try to memorize the article. Tony had disliked Damon ever since Damon arrived at the station with Veronica. Veronica's special treatment of Damon upset Tony. Tony was proud and arrogant and he'd had his eyes on Veronica for a long time now. He didn't like seeing any other men receive special attention from her. Now that Tony had Damon in the palm of his hand, he wanted to make Damon's life miserable. He was enjoying this. Tony said, Then hurry up. Just memorize as much as you can. Don't waste our time. Damon stared coldly at Tony and began to speak in a clear voice. The question is, how does one become a qualified radio host? The industry is changing quickly, and to become a qualified radio host nowadays, you need to undergo the following training. Damon spoke clearly and with feeling. His words were well-placed and rhythmic. He paused in all the right places. Tony frowned and turned his head to look at Erica, who had heard Damon reciting with such confidence. He saw Erica following along with the words on the paper. She looked shocked. When Damon had finished reciting a hundred words, Tony impatiently asked Erica, how's he doing? Has he made a mistake yet? If Damon read any of the words wrong, Tony would end the interview. No, it's all right. Erica stammered in response. Damon hadn't made a single mistake yet. It was shocking. Erica's words immediately attracted the attention of the other people who were watching the interview. Veronica also turned her head in surprise. She read over Erica's shoulder. The words written on the paper were indeed exactly the same as what Damon had said. Damon was even pausing in all the right spots. No one could believe what was happening. Who was this guy? And where had he come from? Veronica watched Damon in amazement. She had been certain that Tony and Erica would get the best of Damon, but Damon's performance was astounding. He was simply a genius. When Damon had read half the page without faltering, Tony couldn't help but mutter, must have made a mistake by now, right? How has he not made a single mistake? Erica shook her head again. Erica couldn't believe how clearly and methodically Damon recited each word. When Damon was three quarters of the way done, Tony said anxiously, What about now? He messed something up, right? Erica shook her head yet again. She was at a loss for words. Finally, Damon got to the last few sentences from the page. He spoke slower now. So... This is the training that you must undergo to become a qualified radio host. Of course, in addition to this training, a qualified host must have knowledge on a wide range of topics. These topics will be further discussed in the next chapter. Okay, I'm done. How did I do? Damon had recited the entire page from memory, and he hadn't got a single word wrong. Not only had he recited it perfectly, he had also sounded amazing while doing it. Damon had all the makings of a talented radio host. Tony was furious. How did you know this? Who gave you the interview questions? Someone must have given you the questions beforehand, right? Tony didn't believe that there was any way Damon could have memorized so many words in just 10 seconds. He must have memorized the article before coming to the interview. Tony looked like he had seen a ghost. But everything in Erica's expression told Tony that she was just as surprised as he was. In fact, the article that Erica had given Damon to recite wasn't even an actual interview question. She had just thought it up on the spot and torn the page out of a book. She'd been deliberately trying to make things difficult for Damon. 
She hadn't thought that Damon would actually be able to memorize the whole thing in 10 seconds. He'd have to be some sort of genius to do that. Not only had he memorized it, but he had also recited it like a professional radio host. Since the page had been randomly torn from a book, even Erica herself hadn't memorized the contents, so there was no way Damon could have possibly gotten a hold of the question beforehand. Tony's expression was volatile. Damon, on the other hand, was calm and composed. Veronica, who was standing beside Erica, watched Damon. Her eyes seemed to flicker with the strange light. Damon smiled confidently, but he looked neither proud nor humble. Damon had the kind of smile that made people fall in love with him. Girls liked guys with talent, and undoubtedly at this moment, Damon looked very talented. Tony coughed and said, You were good, very good, but um, we are hiring only one radio host today. Although you answered the interview questions correctly, we still haven't made any final decisions. Erica nodded in agreement. Damon had aced the interview in front of everyone. Even if Tony didn't want to hire him, he couldn't just send Damon away. Damon had memorized the entire article, something that no one else who worked for the station would be able to do. He clearly had talent. A few other people were still waiting to be interviewed. However, after seeing Erica's last interview question, a question that only a super genius could answer, they didn't see a point in doing the interview. After all, how could they compete with Damon? The remaining few people all made up excuses. My stomach hurts, one guy said. I have to go and pick up my girlfriend, said another. Oops, I forgot all about my friend's birthday. I have to go, claimed a third. One by one, they all left. After seeing Damon's interview, these people didn't want to be seen as a joke. They were better off just getting out of there. Damon and the guy from before with the small mustache were the only two applicants left in the interview room. After witnessing Damon's amazing talent, the mustache guy's expression had turned ugly. It was getting late. Tony waved his hand. Why don't you play a game of chess? We'll hire whoever wins. Tony had a wild imagination. How had he come up with this idea? Veronica, Damon, and everyone else present racked their brains. They could not figure out what playing chess had to do with being a radio host. What was the point of this? Was Tony trying to test the guy's abilities to think logically? However, no one dared to speak out against Tony. Therefore, Damon and the guy with the mustache sat down across from each other at a table, and some other people took out a chessboard from somewhere and started arranging the pieces on it. Then, the two of them started playing. The guy with the mustache had been anxious during Damon's interview, but when he played chess, he was calm and composed. His chess moves were well-planned and well-executed. The people who worked for the radio station all stood around and watched. Many of them knew a little about playing chess. After all, you had to be pretty smart to get into Meyerson. They could tell from the mustached man's calm demeanor that he was definitely an expert at the game. Although the people watching could play chess, they knew that they were not as good as this guy. Veronica was smart, and she quickly realized how good Damon's opponent was. He knew all sorts of advanced moves and set up many traps. Veronica was secretly worried that Damon would fall for this guy's tricks. Seeing that his opponent was winning, Damon played defensively. Tony was smiling. He wanted Damon to lose. Just when everyone thought that Damon was about to lose, the situation suddenly changed. Damon's retreat was just an illusion. He had been secretly familiarizing himself with his opponent's moves. After he had felt out his opponent, Damon began to play offensively. He started to set a trap. The man with the mustache had planned 10 steps ahead, but Damon had planned 20, 30, maybe even 40 steps ahead. He had set up all kinds of traps earlier in the game, and he was now waiting for his opponent to fall into them. His competitive side was showing its face. Damon had all kinds of dazzling moves, and he played them all simultaneously. Dealing with Damon's attacks exhausted the guy with the mustache. Damon defeated his opponent's knights and castles. The more pieces he lost, the more anxious the guy with the mustache became. Before long, he broke out in a cold sweat. He looked as if he had seen a ghost. As the end neared, he hesitated before every move, afraid to make another mistake. The chess game continued, but it didn't take Damon long to back his opponent into the final corner. Then Damon brought the axe down, and the mustached guy's queen fell. When Veronica saw that Damon had won, her worry finally eased. Damon had played the game like a pro, and the way he had executed his last trick had been especially flawless. Watching him play was really very wonderful. Compared with Veronica's, the expressions of the other people in the room were somewhat ugly. Tony, in particular, looked livid. 
The guy with the mustache stared blankly at the chessboard and stammered, Impossible. Just impossible. How could I lose? I used to win competitions. Come on, Tony, you already promised me the job. Are you still going to hire me? What's the deal? Everyone heard what the guy had said, and they all turned to look at Tony. Damon felt particularly grim. How could there still be any question about who would get the job? The mustached guy could play chess so well because his grandfather had been a chess grand champion. He still couldn't believe that he had lost to Damon. Tony was usually pretty good at hiding his true feelings, but now he let his real anger show. I never promised you anything. Don't talk nonsense. You lost fair and square, so that settles it. Unfortunately, the guy was not going to accept his fate quietly. He and Tony were actually old friends, and he could not believe that Tony was denying him the job. He was furious now, and he could not stop talking. Bro, what is this nonsense? We are old friends. Why did you give me all the interview questions beforehand if you weren't planning to give me the job? The crowd suddenly understood. No wonder this guy had aced the interview. Tony had helped him prepare for it. Now it made sense why Tony had chosen to use chess to determine the victor. This guy was Tony's buddy, so Tony obviously knew that he was a good chess player. It had all been set up to deliberately get Damon out of the picture. However, no matter how great Tony's scheme had been, he never expected Damon to be so talented. Not only had Damon memorized a whole page of text in just 10 seconds, but he had also played an amazing game of chess. No wonder the guy with the mustache was so irrational now. After all, Damon had bested him in the most unbelievable of ways. If it wasn't for the fact that so many people were watching, Tony would definitely have jumped on the guy with the mustache. The guy had spilled the beans. Instead, Tony tried to regain his composure. He pointed at Damon and said, You've got the job, as for this guy. Naturally, Tony was talking about the guy with the mustache who was still fuming over the chessboard. I don't know what he's talking about. We don't know each other. Get him out of here. Then Tony picked up his things and stormed angrily out of the room. Once Tony was gone, the other people gradually dispersed as well. The mustache guy had no one left to complain to. He cursed Tony. He and Tony had been friends for a long time, and Tony had let him down. He felt betrayed. Veronica had originally planned to have dinner with her friends, but she canceled on them so that she could hang out with Damon instead. She walked over to Damon and said, Damon, congratulations. Damon's performance had totally wowed Veronica. Like magic, he had turned the situation completely around. No ordinary person could have done that. Damon was quite pleased to have impressed Veronica, but he played it cool. There was nothing. I'm looking forward to working with you at the station. Veronica could not stop herself from looking Damon up and down. She had a strange look in her soft eyes. Damon, you are really a genius. How did you manage to memorize all those words in 10 seconds? Damon didn't want to tell her that he had a photographic memory. Instead, he said, I've been practicing lately. Memory is a skill that you can train like anything else. Veronica nodded as if she understood. She had heard about people training their brains like this. She had even seen a show about it before. She knew that the human brain was very powerful and capable of amazing things. She just hadn't expected that Damon would have such an ability. Veronica was still in shock. Was this how Damon had gone from being expelled from Bridgeton High School to miraculously acing his SATs? Had he achieved this extraordinary talent by working hard to train his memory? It seemed impossible for an ordinary person to do. Veronica said, You need to celebrate your success. Let me take you out for dinner later. However, Damon wasn't paying attention to what Veronica said. He was thinking about how Ricky had called him Ryan Gold earlier. Although Damon did want to go out with Veronica, business was more important. He had no choice but to reject her offer. I have something I need to do later. Let's go out tomorrow, okay? It'll be my treat. Oh, no worries. What do you need to do? We can celebrate tomorrow, Veronica replied. She did not seem upset by Damon's refusal. She just waved and said goodbye. After Veronica left, Damon dialed Ricky's number and called him. Ricky laughed when he answered the phone. <laughs> Ryan Gold, I've been waiting for your call. I was hoping that you would find time to chat with me today. Although Ricky was an important person at Tony Music Entertainment, he had an approachable manner. He was easy to talk to, and he made people feel very comfortable. After hearing what Ricky had said, Damon knew that there was no point in pretending anymore. Ricky knew that Damon was Ryan Gold. After thinking for a moment, Damon said, Where are you? I'm near your school. There's a restaurant called the Moonlight Cafe. I've already reserved the table. Damon hung up the phone. When he arrived, he discovered that the restaurant was very elegant and high class. Ricky had reserved the best table in the place. 
After finding Ricky and exchanging some pleasantries with him, Damon got straight to the point. Mr. King, why do you think that I'm Ryan Gold? Ricky burst out laughing. We're the only two people here, just admit it. You used an alias, but we still have our ways of finding people. What Ricky said was reasonable. Damon had been working with computers for a while now. He knew that there were ways to track people's IP's addresses and then to figure out where they lived. In addition, Levi's new songs were very similar in style to his own. If Ricky had tracked his IP address to find the computer he used, it would not have been difficult to put the pieces together and figure out that Damon was Ryan Gold. Now it made sense why Ricky had been looking at Damon's computer that morning in the dormitory. Damon thought about it. Ricky had done his homework before coming here. Ricky had clearly put a lot of effort into finding Ryan Gold. He must have hired a computer whiz, or even a hacker, to track down Damon's IP address. Seeing that Damon was deep in thought, Ricky came out and admitted it. To tell you the truth, our company used a lot of manpower to find you. But regardless of how expensive or difficult our search was, it was worth it. Damon looked at Ricky and smiled and said, I'm impressed, Mr. King, but please call me Damon. My name is Damon Walker. Ricky waved his hand. All right, all right, all right, I'll call you Damon. You are a hard guy to find, but the effort was totally worth it. Ricky had been especially pleased to discover that the real-life Ryan Gold was both young and likable, not to mention good-looking. After meeting Damon, Ricky no longer worried about how much it had cost the company to find him. Ricky guessed that even Damon himself did not know how much power he already held in the music industry. Tony Music Entertainment had been following Ryan Gold's popularity on the internet. They knew that he had millions of fans all over the country. Even Ricky himself was a hardcore fan. Ryan Gold wasn't like other people who had gone viral online and thought they were famous. No, Ryan Gold had actual talent. Two of his songs were already in the top two places on the Billboard Hot 100. What else was Ryan Gold capable of? Ricky did not know. After all, no other artist had ever climbed the charts like this before. Ryan Gold had created history. Whenever there were rumors in the media that Ryan Gold was planning to release a third single, the number of searches about it on the internet instantly shot up to tens of millions, and Ryan Gold became Google's most searched topic. All the fan groups and music forums would explode with speculation. When news like this was inevitably confirmed to be fake, the wave of excitement that it caused gradually faded. Levi, who had just won the new voice talent search competition not long ago, had experienced a similar explosion in popularity. Because a few of the songs that he sang sounded similar to Ryan Gold's, he had also become a popular topic of Google searches. This went to show just how powerful Ryan Gold's influence was. Any news connected to him could blow up the internet. Ryan Gold's popularity was definitely a phenomenon. The world had never seen such a famous singer before. He was even more famous than Elvis or the Beatles. This made Tony Music Entertainment even more determined to sign Ryan Gold to their label. They wanted to cooperate with him. Ryan Gold's current popularity could make the company an enormous amount of money. This was the reason why Tony Music Entertainment had gone through so much trouble to find Damon. If they could sign with Damon, it didn't matter whether or not they signed Levi. Compared to Ryan Gold, Levi was not as popular. Damon smiled and said, Why was your company so eager to find me? What do you want? When Ricky saw Damon's calm demeanor, he realized that he needed to proceed with caution. The kids seemed slick and Ricky was under orders to sign Ryan Gold to the label at all costs. I'll give it to you plain and simple. We don't have any hidden agendas. We just want you to sign with our company. Our company is currently organizing a big music festival in Meyerson. If you sign with us, we will promote you, and you can be the headlining act of the festival. Ricky was right to be so careful. After all, this was a huge deal. Tony Music Entertainment would do anything to collaborate with Ryan Gold. They had never seen anyone like him before the company's share prices would soar. Damon frowned and hesitated. He didn't want his secret identity to be exposed. Besides music, he had many other career prospects. He was only a student now. If he was exposed as Ryan Gold, he would become world famous. Damon's hopes of living a peaceful life would be gone. It would be a disaster. At the same time, Damon also had other concerns. Now, Tony Music Entertainment knew who he was. If he did not agree to their request and sign with them, it was entirely possible that they would reveal his identity as Ryan Gold anyway. Ricky, who was watching Damon from across the table, was an intelligent man. 
You could guess more or less what Damon was thinking. Ricky took a sip of coffee. Of course, you don't have to worry about us exposing your identity. When you perform at the concert, you can wear a disguise. All you need to do is go on stage and sing. We'll deal with the rest. We guarantee that we'll keep your true identity a secret. None of this will affect your studies or your personal life at all. Other than us, no one will know who Ryan Gold really is. Maintaining the veil of mystery around Ryan Gold would also help maintain his popularity. This would benefit Tony Music Entertainment as well. Seeing that Damon still had not responded, Ricky continued, Of course, if you sign a contract with our company, we'll treat you very well. You'll make more money than you ever dreamed possible. Ricky was very smart. Celebrities made a ton of money doing events. He knew that someone so famous must be paid accordingly. The promise that Damon could keep his identity a secret meant that Damon had nothing left to worry about. Damon thought about how he needed money to grow KC games, especially if he and Will wanted to take the leap and start developing large-scale games. The profits from Airblaze were already dwindling. If Damon could use his music deal to make money, he could invest it back into KC games. As Damon thought about this, he began to ask Ricky about the various details of the contract, as well as what his responsibilities and rights were. When Ricky heard Damon ask about the details of the contract, he knew he stood a good chance of closing the deal. Ricky was secretly delighted, and he carefully explained the contract to Damon. He grabbed his briefcase and pulled out the contract as if he were performing a magic trick. Look it over and see how serious we are about signing you. Damon took the contract and started to read it. He had to admit that the contract was a good one. It showed just how determined the company was to win him over. Not only were the benefits generous, but the amount of money they were offering was incredibly tempting. After examining it carefully for any loopholes, Damon finally nodded his head. He picked up a pen and signed. Everything had gone smoothly. Ricky was in a good mood. After Damon signed the contract, the two of them ate dinner and chatted. Ricky told Damon that 10 other famous musicians would be performing at the festival as well. All of these musicians had signed with Tony Music Entertainment. Some of them were very famous superstars. The fact that Damon would be headlining the festival with all these big names showed just how much respect Tony Music Entertainment had for Damon. It was true. Since Ryan Gold's name had completely exploded on the internet, he had become even more powerful than all these famous superstars. After dinner, Damon said goodbye to Ricky. Ricky went to his company's headquarters to give his bosses a report on the success with Ryan Gold. Ricky had forgotten all about Levi. Damon had signed the contract with Tony Music Entertainment. The next day, the news that viral singing sensation Ryan Gold had signed with Tony Music Entertainment quickly made headlines in entertainment sections of news media everywhere. The news exploded like dynamite and instantly became the hottest topic of discussions on social media as well. At the same time as this news was released, Tony Music Entertainment also announced that Ryan Gold would be performing alongside many other big stars at the upcoming music festival in Meyerson, which was only half a month away. Ryan Gold would perform his famous songs, Time Flies and Dawn at the music festival. As the news broke, the entire online music industry was turned upside down. Even the people at Tony Music Entertainment who had never underestimated Ryan Gold's influence were shocked by his boom in popularity. The executives all congratulated themselves on the decision to sign a contract with Ryan Gold. It had definitely not been a waste of money. Thanks to the hype created by Ryan Gold, the share price of Tony Music Entertainment began to skyrocket. In addition to this, the upcoming music festival in Meyerson, which hadn't received much media attention before now, sold out of tickets overnight. Everyone wanted a chance to see Ryan Gold, and many fans were extremely upset because they hadn't managed to get concert tickets. People who couldn't get tickets started buying them from scalpers at exorbitant prices. Although these people knew that they were being taken advantage of, they would pay almost anything for a chance to see Ryan Gold in concert. The ticket scalpers were making a killing. Those who were able to buy up tickets and resell them at a premium got rich. Prices for Ryan Gold tickets rose to nearly 10 times more than the original price. This unprecedented resale market for concert tickets not only shocked the ticket sellers, but also the event organizers at Tony Music Entertainment. As a result, Tony Music Entertainment had no choice but to start discussions with the festival venue to see if they could increase the festival's seating capacity. After all, the festival's sudden explosion in popularity had caught everyone off guard. The festival venue readily agreed to increasing capacity. Ryan Gold, who had seemingly risen to fame out of nowhere, had long been regarded as a musical genius. Anyone who was a fan of music would want a chance to see him in person. 
Seeing him live at the festival was a once-in-a-lifetime chance. It was early morning, and Damon was still in bed when he heard Xander talking about the festival. Xander had been trying to buy tickets to the music festival, but so far, he had come up empty-handed. Hector pushed open the door and entered the dorm. Xander saw Hector return and hurriedly asked, Hector, is there any way you can get me two tickets to the concert? I don't care where the seats are, I'll pay three times the price. Hector shook his head. Are you crazy? You think you have a chance of getting tickets now? You can't even buy tickets at five times the price. There are no tickets left. Don't you know how popular this concert is? Yeah, I know. Xander sighed. Who would have guessed that this concert would suddenly get so popular? And Ryan Gold sure is something. Riley is insisting on seeing him. She said that she will break up with me if I can't get the tickets. What should I do? Even though Xander was freaking out about the situation, Hector could do nothing to help. Buying tickets to see really famous celebrities was always difficult. Now that Ryan Gold was in the limelight, it was nearly impossible to get tickets to his show without knowing the right people. Meanwhile, in the girls' dorm, a few girls were passionately discussing the upcoming concert. Riley was holding two tickets in her hand. Although Xander had not been able to get tickets, Riley had her own ways of getting things done. Otherwise, what would be the point of hanging out with her new circle of friends? Caroline eyed the tickets enviously and said, Riley, can you help me get a ticket too? I really like Ryan Gold's songs. I will pay whatever the ticket costs. Riley shook her head and said, These tickets were not easy to buy. I had to ask my friend to buy them. His father has connections in the local government. Even so, it was not easy for him to get these two tickets. Riley said this so that Caroline would know exactly how valuable the tickets were. When Caroline heard this, her pretty face turned pale, and she did not dare to ask Riley about getting a ticket again. Willow, Zoe, and Sammy had all been listening in on the conversation. They wanted tickets to the festival too, but after hearing what Riley had said, they didn't say anything. Riley turned to Jillian and asked, Jill, did Jonathan buy you tickets? Jillian wished that Riley hadn't asked her for this. She didn't know what to say. Her face turned pale, but she tried to force a smile and she said, No, not yet. Jillian also liked Ryan Gold, but she didn't have tickets to the show. Jonathan had told her that he would buy tickets for her, but although Jillian had given him the money, he still hadn't gotten the tickets, and she was beginning to suspect that he had lied to her. What had Jonathan done with her money? Jillian had heard a rumor that Jonathan had gambled her ticket money away at the casino, but she didn't know if it was true. Jillian had only recently found out that Jonathan gambled. When she found out about his gambling, Jillian tried to talk to him about it. Jonathan had said that he would change, but now her ticket money had gone missing and it was too late to buy tickets. Jillian had not said it aloud, but she was very disappointed about the whole situation. Then tell Jonathan to hurry up and get you a ticket, Riley said. He's got connections. If he hurries, he can probably still buy tickets. There's not much time though. Oh, okay, I will remind him, Jillian said gloomily. She took a muffin out of her bag and began to eat it. She was sure that Jonathan had already spent her money and she wouldn't have any more money until next month. Muffins were the only thing that she could afford to eat till then, and she was too embarrassed to borrow money from her roommates. The atmosphere in Fiona's dormitory was also quite lively. Her roommate Gwen was holding a ticket, and she was showing it off to the other girls. Maddie, take a look. My boyfriend in Canada bought it for me. After he heard that I liked Ryan Gold, he made a special point of buying it for me. It was really hard to get, and it cost him a lot of money. Maddie and Gwen's other roommates looked at the ticket enviously. Gwen glanced at Fiona and said with a smile, Fiona, why don't you ask that loser boyfriend of yours to buy a ticket for you too? Let's see if he can pull it off. Gwen's sarcastic tone made the other two girls laugh for a moment, but they quickly quieted down. After all, they didn't want to offend Fiona. Maddie said, Gwen, don't bring that up. Fiona and Damon already broke up. Oh, is that so? Is something wrong with my eyes then? Two days ago, I could have sworn that I saw her with that loser. Gwen had always looked down on Damon. She did not understand what Fiona saw in him. Gwen didn't think Damon had any class. Everyone wanted a ticket to the Meyerson Music Festival. Damon, who secretly was at the center of all the excitement, went about his usual routine as if nothing special was going on. He ate, and he slept, and he went to class. Lately, he had been eating so well that he even gained two pounds. Early the next morning, Damon was woken by the ringing of his phone. It turned out that the caller was Liam. Damon's friend from high school who went to a neighboring university. Liam had actually called to ask about concert tickets. Like many others, Liam was also in a desperate situation. All Damon's friends wanted tickets. Was there anything that Damon could do? Damon told Liam to call Avery. 
After all, she was quite famous in the music industry. Plus, her teacher was Asher. If Avery wanted to get tickets, she should be able to. However, Liam hesitated when he heard Damon's suggestion. Uh, yeah, I could call her. I wonder if she would be willing to help. Although they had all been friends during childhood, Avery had left them all in the dust. She is famous now. Comparatively speaking, Liam and Damon were nobodies. Avery seemed to be flourishing in life, but Liam and Damon were just tiny drops of water lost in an ocean. Liam thought about contacting Avery. Would she still care about him? Damon saw Liam's hesitation and encouraged him to call her, but Damon didn't really care whether Liam called Avery or not. The two of them chatted for a while longer before saying goodbye. Damon knew he wouldn't be able to fall back asleep, so he threw off his blanket and got up. He was starting to wonder if he should ask Ricky for a few VIP tickets to give to his good friends. But his friends would probably think it weird if he suddenly showed up with tickets to the festival, especially if those tickets were VIP. After all, VIP tickets must cost a fortune right now. If Damon gave his friends VIP tickets, it would inevitably cause them to start asking questions. After thinking it over, he gave up on the idea. A moment later, Quinn returned to the dormitory. Damon looked at Quinn and saw that his face was very pale. Damon wondered if he was sick. Quinn had looked like this for the past few days, but every time Damon asked him what was going on, Quinn had made up some silly excuse. Naturally, Damon had stopped asking. After class that afternoon, Damon walked over to the campus radio station. Damon had started working at the station the day after his interview. Under normal circumstances, Damon was scheduled to work every weekday afternoon after he finished class. He did not work on the weekends. Damon and Veronica would co-host the daily afternoon special. It was half an hour long. During this time, they could tell stories, sing songs, and recite poetry, among other things. Damon and Veronica had been working together for a few days now, and they made a great team. Nowadays, people's smartphones had unlimited access to information through the internet, but students still listened to the campus station. They could stream it online. Every day, the station received many messages and call-ins from listeners on campus. Many guys even called into the radio to try to impress the girls who they liked. They would spend a lot of effort calling into the station to request love songs or give shout-outs to their crushes. Generally, as long as their requests were not too excessive, the radio station would give them airtime. Listener interaction like this made the radio shows more interesting. The radio station was the soundtrack to campus life. Damon looked forward to his time at the radio station every day. He got to spend half an hour alone with Veronica. Damon didn't even mind that they were often too busy to talk to each other. He liked just looking at Veronica. He liked looking at her long hair, and he liked listening to her voice. Watching and listening to Veronica always made Damon feel great. Veronica had always had a special place in Damon's heart. He liked her even more than Avery. Damon had pursued Avery because, despite the fact that she was just as beautiful as Veronica, she had seemed more attainable. Although other people might not think Avery attainable, Damon and Avery had practically grown up together. Back in high school, Damon and Avery had talked to each other a lot and helped each other with homework. On the other hand, Damon and Veronica had hardly ever talked. Back then, Veronica had come off as cold and aloof. She was extremely beautiful, but her beauty had seemed threatening. Veronica had seemed like some sort of untouchable goddess. Even fantasizing about her had seemed wrong. After Damon started working with Veronica every day, he also saw how popular she was. People wrote her love letters almost every day. And it wasn't just one or two people. Veronica received a pile of these letters every day. Damon had never seen anything like it before. However, Veronica was already used to it. If she had the time, she would read the love letters at work. She respected her many fans. When Damon got to the broadcast room that day, Veronica was not there yet. Damon was usually the first of them to arrive at the broadcast room. He did this so he could sit quietly and watch Veronica while she prepared for the show. Damon always took advantage of any chance he had to watch Veronica. Damon prepared his material for the show and then spent some time tidying up around the broadcast room. Then he heard footsteps coming from outside the door. Moments later, Veronica's beautiful face appeared in the doorway. She saw that Damon was ready to start. Veronica gently said, Hey, I was just starting to wonder where you were. Let's begin, Damon said. He watched Veronica's side profile as she sat down beside him. Her face was so gentle and beautiful. He would never tire of looking at it. Today, Veronica was wearing a pair of white shoes, a white knitted shirt, and a long black dress. The dress had a slit up one side, and Damon could see the pale skin of her leg. She wore her waist-length hair down, 
It draped softly over her shoulders. She was breathtakingly beautiful. Damon couldn't take his eyes off of her. Damon realized that he had been daydreaming and tried to focus on the upcoming show instead. He reluctantly looked away from Veronica and quickly turned to his work. The show began. Today, Veronica had prepared a few poems to read. Damon closed his eyes and listened to Veronica's gentle voice as she recited the poems. Veronica's tone was very pleasant. After Veronica finished speaking, Damon handed her a cup of water. Veronica smiled slightly and said, Thank you. She handed the script over to Damon. Now it was Damon's turn to speak. Damon's voice sounded very magnetic on air. While Damon was speaking, Veronica drank water. She was quietly watching Damon out of the corner of her eye. After Damon finished reading, Veronica said, No one has called in to request a song or give any shoutouts today. I don't have anything else prepared either. Damon, why don't you sing a song? Veronica asked. Her eyes were filled with anticipation. Damon was quiet for a moment, and then he said, My throat hasn't been feeling good for the past two days. Why don't you sing? I will accompany you. But Veronica shook her head. Then she said gently, Damon, don't you play guitar as well? Do you know how to play Summertime? Summertime was a beautiful song. It was also a duet. The lyrics depicted a tranquil summer afternoon, and the melody was peaceful and soothing. What was even more amazing was that although the song had originally been written for piano, it sounded almost better on guitar. Damon shook his head. No, sorry, I don't know. Damon saw the look of disappointment flash across Veronica's pretty face. But after she thought about it for a moment, it made sense to her that Damon didn't know it. The song had only recently been released, and Veronica had heard it herself only a few times. Last year when Veronica was studying in Germany, she heard it performed live at a festival. This was why she loved the song so much. It reminded her of her summer in Europe. After hearing it, she learned to play it on piano, and she practiced the piece every day. She had forgotten that this piece probably wasn't very well known here. Of course, Damon wouldn't know it. Damon saw Veronica's disappointment and said, Why don't you let me have a look at the music? Veronica thought for a moment and then started looking through a drawer in the desk. She pulled out a small notebook with an exquisite design on the cover and handed it to Damon. Veronica recorded the sheet music of her favorite songs in this notebook. Damon opened the notebook and saw that the handwriting inside it was neat and tidy. He was impressed that Veronica could write musical notation. Damon looked carefully at the music for summertime. The person who had composed this song was indeed a master. The melody was so beautiful that even Damon was impressed. After looking over the music, Damon smiled and said, This song is pretty good. How about we try to play it together? The campus radio station was quite a big operation, and the broadcasting room even had a piano in it. Veronica's eyes immediately widened in surprise. Do you want to practice it first? There's no need. I think I can follow along with you. Damon's words were full of confidence. You really think you can play the song right now? I think I can pull it off, Damon said politely. Veronica knew better than to doubt Damon now, so although what he said was hard to believe, she assumed that he was telling her the truth. Damon had surprised her at the interview by memorizing hundreds of words in 10 seconds. He clearly had an amazing memory. Veronica still remembered the first time that she heard Damon play the guitar. When she thought of this, she smiled. Oh, great, let's play it then. Veronica replied. She went over to the piano and sat down. She adjusted her posture and placed her fingers over the keys. Then she turned to Damon and asked, Are you ready? Damon picked up a guitar that had been sitting in a corner of the studio and strummed the strings to check that it was in tune. Then he nodded and said, Yes. Veronica began to gently play the piano keys with her pale and slender fingers. The soothing melody filled the room. The beginning of the song started with a piano solo. Veronica began to play, and then Damon seamlessly took over. The song went on this way, moving between piano and guitar. At times, they both played together. The song was pleasant to the ear and soothing to the soul. Those who heard it felt as if they were being embraced by a loved one. The music had a way of washing worries away. It turned despair into hope and beauty. It made everyone who heard it remember that life was beautiful. This song was very powerful. People relaxed when they listened to it and even forgot the flow of time. They just wanted this wonderful moment to last. No one wanted the song to end. When the listeners heard this song on the radio, 
Many of them quietly stopped what they were doing to listen carefully. Couples who heard the song together snuggled against each other while they listened. They felt the song bring them closer together. Wow, are they actually playing Summertime live on the radio? Oh my god, it's so beautiful. The radio was on in Fiona's dormitory. Maddie listened in amazement. It was the first time she had heard the song. The radio was also on in a class at the College of Music. The song was a beautiful example of guitar and piano playing together, and the teacher turned up the volume. The music students were lucky to hear it. Back in Fiona's dorm, Tara was listening to the radio with her friends. When the song began, Tara said, Veronica must be playing the piano. She usually hosts this show. However, who's playing the guitar? When Tara's friends heard that it was Veronica playing the piano, they all nodded silently. Although Summertime was indeed a highly technical piece of music, they had all heard Veronica play piano at the Freshman's Gala last year, so they knew she was very talented. But who could be accompanying her on the guitar? It can't be Levi, right? Tara said in confusion. Oh, Levi is my Prince Charming. They play this duet so beautifully together. Could they actually be a couple? Oh, I hope it's not Levi. That makes me so sad. Nonsense. It definitely isn't Levi. Even Levi isn't this good. Her friend replied. I think the guitar part is recorded. No one can play this well live. Although Levi had made a name for himself in the new voice talent search, he couldn't play the guitar as well as the artist who had originally recorded Summertime. After all, the couple who had originally recorded the song were internationally famous musicians. Someone like Levi, who had just appeared on the music scene out of nowhere, could not compare with them. However, if Levi and Veronica had really been a couple, they would be a match made in heaven. Veronica was beautiful and outstandingly talented. Only someone like Levi was worthy of her. If the two of them were really a couple, their relationship would be legendary. However, Tara's friend had seemed certain that the guitarist wasn't Levi, and her friends believed her. Tara patted her chest and said, What a relief. My Prince Charming is not with Veronica. If he was, I would never get over it. Fiona was still sitting at her desk playing computer games. She was the only one not participating in the discussion, but the song still echoed in her mind. She slightly furrowed her beautiful brow. Fiona sighed. You played quite well. Veronica said to Damon after they finished playing. Her beautiful eyes flickered with a soft glow. You are also very good, Damon replied. Veronica played the piano very well. While the two of them were playing, Damon had felt their separate rhythms merge together into one voice. Their music had filled each other's souls. This feeling made Damon very excited. In that moment, he felt like he knew Veronica intimately. When they played together, his love for Veronica grew even greater. How wonderful would it be if he could play with Veronica like this every day? He wondered if Veronica felt equally as satisfied with their performance. He watched her expression, but he couldn't figure out what she was thinking. Veronica suddenly asked, By the way, Damon, are you free this weekend? Damon replied, Why? Veronica's pretty face turned slightly red. Are you coming to my birthday party? It's a few days from now. I wouldn't miss it, Damon replied. He was happy that Veronica wanted him to come to her birthday. All right, then I'll message you on the weekend. Veronica was very happy to hear Damon agree to come. She was about to say something else, but at this moment, one of her classmates ran in and said, Veronica, Drew is here looking for you. Veronica nodded to her friend and quickly said to Damon, Let's call it a day then, I have to go. Veronica gathered her things and went downstairs. Damon looked out the window. He saw a sleek Mercedes Benz parked out front. A handsome guy stood in front of the car. When the guy saw Veronica coming out of the station, he opened the car door for her. Damon watched Veronica hop into the car and leave with the guy. Damon watched until the Mercedes-Benz had disappeared around the corner. He turned to Veronica's classmate who was still in the room and asked, Who is Drew? The girl looked at Damon in surprise and said loudly, You don't know Drew Parker? He's Veronica's boyfriend. Not only does he own his own company, but his father is also famous in Meyerson. His family is very wealthy. What? Damon had heard what the girl said, but he didn't want to believe it. A feeling of despair suddenly surged in his heart. The words, he is Veronica's boyfriend, echoed in his head. He should have expected that a beautiful girl like Veronica would have a man in her life. After hearing what her classmate had said, at least he knew that this guy was good enough for Veronica. But Damon was still disappointed. Damon had thought that he had had a chance with Veronica, but now he realized that Veronica was out of reach. 
Damon needed to achieve something greater before he could have the confidence to chase after a girl like her. That night, Xander returned to the dormitory with a sad look on his face. Theo was on the phone with Willow. Theo, who usually got along well with Willow, was actually having a big fight with her. It seemed like the fight was about buying tickets for the festival. After quarreling with Willow for more than an hour, Theo finally hung up the phone. After the lights in the dormitory had been turned off, everyone sat on their beds and chatted. The conversation was mostly about the upcoming music festival. Ryan Gold was the most popular celebrity scheduled to perform at the festival, so naturally he was a topic of the discussion. Levi was not in the dormitory. Ever since he had won the new voice talent search, Levi hadn't spent much time in the dormitory. People were saying that he had rented a house in a relatively high-end part of town. Now that he was famous, he needed space so that he could practice music and host events. Theo didn't know what was going on with Willow. She was usually so sensible, but now she was fighting with Theo over festival tickets. Having tickets to the show had turned into a sort of competition amongst the girls. However, the tickets cost so much now that most students couldn't afford them. Riley, on the other hand, had not asked Xander for a ticket. Even so, Xander did not seem to be optimistic about the situation. Most of the discussion in the guy's dormitory that evening centered on complaints about Ryan Gold. After all, it was because of Ryan Gold's performance that the ticket prices had skyrocketed. Moreover, he was the reason why all the girls wanted to go to the show. Ryan Gold was indirectly causing Theo, Xander, and the others a lot of trouble with their relationships. He was also costing them a lot of money. As the guys in room 502 chatted that night, they all began to realize that the girls had changed. Things used to be simpler. Now the girls seemed to care only about money and material things. They always seemed to be competing with each other over these things now. At this moment, Theo seemed to have thought of something. He said, Quinn, you don't seem to be spending much time with Sammy lately. You should keep an eye on her. She seems to be hanging out with that other guy a lot. You know, the guy she used to hang out with. That guy's from a bad crowd. Theo's comment to Quinn was not baseless. That day he had seen Sammy and that guy at the mall together with his own eyes. However, Quinn only sighed softly in reply and he did not say anything. The guys eventually stopped chatting and fell asleep. The next morning, Damon did not have any classes. He got up and played some video games instead. While he played, he took some notes and began thinking about ideas for his own game. After all, every popular large-scale game required a good background story. After Theo, Xander, and Hector had left the dormitory, Quinn came over to Damon. Quinn was hoping to borrow some more money from him. Damon smiled and said, You're broke again, huh? How much do you want to borrow? This time, Quinn smiled awkwardly. He put his hands in his pockets and cautiously said, My parents are coming to visit Myerson for a few days. Can I borrow $300? If you don't have that much, just lend me as much as you're able. Even $100 would be a huge help. Why would Quinn need to borrow money if his parents were coming to Myerson? It seemed a little illogical. Was Quinn planning something special for his parents? But Quinn's parents should know that Quinn couldn't afford to spend hundreds of dollars on them. After all, Quinn wasn't from a rich family. Why were his parents coming to Myerson right now anyways? Didn't they have work? Is everything okay with you? Damon asked as he took out his wallet. He did not have much cash on him at the moment. All his money had basically gone into KC games. However, he still had more than $1,000 in his bank account. He counted out $300 in cash and gave it to Quinn. It's nothing, I'm fine. Quinn's expression did not look fine though. When Quinn took his hand out of his pocket to take the money, Something fell out of his pocket and onto the floor. Quinn seemed very nervous. He went to pick up what he had dropped, but Damon was faster and he grabbed the object first. When Damon looked at what he had just picked up, he saw that it was actually a receipt from a pawn shop wrapped around a wad of cash. Damon was shocked. Are you pawning things? Instantly, Quinn broke down in tears. He sat down on the ground beside Damon. Although Quinn was 20 years old, he sobbed like a child. It seemed like he must be in some serious trouble. Damon could not help but ask what was wrong. Bro, what happened? Tell me what's wrong. If you're having problems, maybe I can help you. Quinn finally started to calm down. Between sobs, he said, My dad has cancer. It's late stage pancreatic cancer. Now Damon understood. Quinn had been pawning things so that he could pay his dad's medical bills. No wonder he had looked so awful lately. Now Damon also understood why Quinn hadn't been spending time with Sammy lately. It all made sense now. Damon was silent. 
he took out his smartphone and logged into his banking app. I have more than $1,000 in my account. Here, I'm transferring it to you now. Take it and use it to pay for your dad's medical care. Quinn tried to refuse the money. No, I just need $300. My dad's cancer's already late stage, and he has medical insurance anyways. I just want to show him a good time when he visits. It might be the last time that we get to see each other. I'll take him to see. Damon interrupted him. What can $300 buy? Take it all. In a big city like Meyerson, $300 was hardly enough for a meal in a nice restaurant. Quinn hesitated, then said, But it's all your money. How will you eat? I have money, Damon said forcefully, and he hit the transfer money button on his banking app. The expression in Quinn's eyes was full of gratitude. After checking to make sure that he had received the money, he finally left. After hearing about Quinn's dad's cancer, Damon wasn't in the best of moods either. He searched his pockets and found that he had only a few cents left. Luckily, he still had some credits left on his meal card. He would be able to hold out for a while. It was almost noon when Fiona called Damon to ask him if he wanted to go out for lunch. Her father was arriving that night, so she wanted to meet Damon to discuss the final details of their plan. Damon walked out of the dormitory and found that Fiona was already waiting for him downstairs. She had her hair in a ponytail and was wearing a headband that had little rabbit's ears on it. She looked playful and cute. Her beautiful face and red lips were exceptionally attractive. It was a bright, sunny day outside, so Fiona was wearing a pair of sunglasses. The sunglasses hid her beautiful eyes. She wore a boho chic dress. Her legs were fair and beautiful, and she was wearing high heels. The sun shone through the window behind her, and its light made her look youthful and energetic. The high heels that she was wearing were open-toed, and Damon could see that her delicate and cute toes had been painted a shade of pink. Damon walked over to her. Fiona took off her sunglasses and said lightly, Where are we going to eat? The cafeteria, Damon said indifferently. Fiona looked at Damon with surprise and then led him out of the building. Damon followed Fiona. She was walking in the opposite direction as the cafeteria. They left the campus and walked a few blocks away. Fiona entered a nice-looking restaurant and confidently ordered a few appies. The appies that she ordered were all Damon's favorites. Then, Fiona sat back and stared at Damon. Damon felt a little uncomfortable with Fiona staring at him like that, and he asked, Is there something wrong? No. Fiona rolled her eyes, then she asked, You know who you've been hanging out with lately. I'm trying not to be upset about it. Oh, you mean Veronica, Damon asked. She's not as cool as you think she is. Can't you just be honest? Fiona was angry now, and she said coldly, Aren't you working at the campus radio station now? And aren't you working with Veronica? You were supposed to be pretending to be my boyfriend. Damon was surprised. How did you know? Do you think I'm blind? Fiona looked at Damon's surprise, but indifferent expression. Fiona was so angry that she wanted to lean across the table and smack him. Others might not know how well Damon played guitar, but Fiona knew. She knew that he was the only person on campus who played better than Levi. Fiona had heard him play Summertime on the radio with Veronica. She had heard how they had harmonized together perfectly. What annoyed Fiona even more was that she did not know if there was actually something going on between them or not. Damon and Veronica had certainly seemed in tune with one another. Fiona couldn't stand the thought of Damon and Veronica together. When Damon saw how angry Fiona was, he didn't know what to say. By now, the food had arrived at the table. Fiona took a bite and ignored Damon. Damon wasn't too concerned about Fiona's silence. He felt that she was being unreasonable. Besides, there wasn't much to talk about with her anyway. Fiona was waiting for Damon to say something to her, and when he didn't, she became even angrier. She suddenly kicked off her shoes and began playing footsie with Damon beneath the table. Damon was caught off guard when he felt something rubbing against his feet. He could not help but reach down and grab whatever it was. When his hand closed around Fiona's foot, he felt her silky smooth skin. He looked down and realized that what he was holding was actually Fiona's foot. She had beautiful feet. He especially liked how her toes were painted pink. Damon found Fiona's feet very tempting. When he looked at them, he remembered the time when he had accompanied Fiona shopping. At the time, he had felt simply too wonderful to describe. When he thought of massaging Fiona's feet, Damon's heart trembled. He raised his head to look at Fiona and saw that her beautiful face had turned unusually red with embarrassment. Damon was still annoyed with Fiona, but he also felt a hint of attraction to her. 
Fiona was attractive in a way that Damon could not understand. Damon was still holding on to Fiona's foot and she was getting uncomfortable. She said fiercely, let go of me. But Damon didn't want to let go. His hand tightened around her foot and he said, I will not let go until you calm down. You're being unreasonable about this whole Veronica thing. When he said this, he thought that it would make Fiona angrier. He hadn't guessed that she would back down. Fiona's face turned even redder as she lowered her head. She bit her lips and said, You're a scoundrel. Fine, do whatever you want. She did not even try to pull her foot away anymore. She just sat there and let Damon hold on to it. Damon was actually enjoying holding Fiona's foot, but it seemed strange that she had just given it to him like that. What did it mean? Damon had expected Fiona to continue fighting with him. Inside, Fiona was actually a ball of nerves, but she also felt very conflicted about the situation. Why was Damon still holding her foot? This wasn't the first time that Damon had touched her feet either. Fiona had to admit that she kind of liked it. She wanted Damon to keep touching her feet. Was he as into it as she was? Did he want to touch her in other places as well? She had had enough, and she tried to pull her foot away. Damon was reluctant to let go, but he heard a voice inside his head reminding him that he needed to be careful of Fiona, so he released his grip. Just as Fiona pulled her foot from Damon's grasp, out of the corner of her eye, she noticed a man and a woman walking into the restaurant together. The man was tall and handsome, and the woman was extremely beautiful. Was that Veronica? Veronica had seen Damon holding Fiona's foot in his hand. The corner of Veronica's mouth twitched with a knowing smile. Veronica and her boyfriend walked right past Damon and Fiona's table. Damon, whose back had been facing the door of the restaurant, finally noticed Veronica. He felt somewhat flustered. However, he didn't know how much Veronica had seen. Perhaps she had been too busy chatting with her tall, rich, and handsome companion to have noticed Damon touching Fiona's foot. Damon watched Veronica's back gradually disappearing into the next room, and he felt a little disappointed inside. Fiona observed his expression and said with a smile, Who is that guy? Has he stolen the heart of our school's goddess? Damon retorted, They're just eating together. How do you know that he's stolen her heart? However, Damon didn't sound very confident. He knew who the handsome guy was. It was Drew, the guy who had picked up Veronica yesterday. Drew's family was rich and powerful, and he was definitely tall and handsome. How could a guy like that not steal Veronica's heart? So what? Why do you care? When Fiona saw Damon's expression, she felt happy inside. She continued, You probably don't know this, but there's a hotel behind this restaurant where you can rent rooms by the hour. That's why people come here. Fiona watched the expression on Damon's face grow increasingly ugly, and she went on, I'm sure that Veronica knows all about it. Veronica is very smart. Damon's head was a mess. He wanted to say something clever back, but he seemed to be short of breath. At this moment, more Abbeys arrived. Damon felt miserable, but he slowly lowered his head and ate. After the meal, Fiona wanted Damon to go back to the dorms with her. She put on her coat and said, Why don't we go back to your dormitory? When they returned to the dormitory, no one else was there. Fiona took some clothes out of her bag. She had bought them for Damon at the shopping mall. She had already washed and ironed them flat. Put these clothes on, she said. We are seeing my father tonight. I don't want him to see you wearing those cheap rags that you usually wear. Damon replied, It doesn't matter whether clothes are expensive or not. What matters is that they are clean and tidy. <laughs> you have a lot of strange theories, Fiona pouted. Then she said, What if I ask you nicely? Please, can you change your clothes? Damon thought about it and decided to help Fiona one last time. He was determined to be the bigger person here. He took Fiona's clothes and went to the bathroom to change. When he came out again, he looked completely different. How do I look? A strange look flashed in Fiona's eyes, but she casually said, You look okay, I guess. At least you won't embarrass me tonight. Fiona secretly thought Damon looked amazing. All right then, I have some stuff to do now. Come and get me when you're ready to leave tonight, Damon said. He was relieved that Fiona was satisfied with his appearance. Damon sat down at his desk. Although he had implied that Fiona should leave, she did not. When Damon turned on the computer to try to get some work done, Fiona quietly sat on Damon's bed and watched him work. She couldn't figure out why he was ignoring her. Girls always thought the quiet guys were the most handsome. Damon had an inexplicable charm. Damon was busy planning his new game. He was trying to concentrate. He soon became absorbed in his work and lost track of time. Eventually, Damon's eyes finally got tired from looking at the screen. 
He looked at the time and saw that it was already late. It was five o'clock in the afternoon. He stretched his arms and looked around. That's when he noticed that Fiona was still in his dormitory. She had been staring at him the whole time. He saw a trace of gentleness in her beautiful big eyes. You're still here? Oh. Fiona shyly looked away. My dad should be here soon. If you're done working, we should go. Just then, Fiona's phone rang. Damon heard a deep voice talking on the other line. After hanging up the phone, Fiona said, My dad just arrived. Let's go. Damon packed up and walked out of the dormitory with Fiona. As they left the dormitory, Fiona held Damon's hand and gently leaned her head against Damon's shoulder. Damon said, This is the last time, right? Fiona gave Damon a charming smile. She said, If we don't practice in advance, our story might get exposed. Damon didn't say anything else about it. They were meeting Fiona's father at the hotel by the campus lake. When they arrived at Fiona's father's hotel room, Fiona pushed the door open and they walked in. Damon took the opportunity to look around and he saw what he thought was an old lady with long hair and wrinkled skin sitting in a chair. Although she looked very old, her hair was actually quite thick. It seemed unusual for someone so old. At first, Damon thought they had walked into the wrong room, so he asked, Sorry, ma'am, I think we're in the wrong room. Is this room 1068? This is room 1068. I guess you weren't expecting to see someone like me here, huh? I must look old, huh? The person said unhappily. Damon knew that many women cared about their age, so he quickly tried to smooth things over and said, You look old? No, you must be Fiona's aunt. What? Do I look like a woman to you? I'm a man. The person in the chair exclaimed. Fiona, who was standing beside Damon, could not bear to continue listening to their exchange. Her face was burning with embarrassment. She took a moment to regain her composure, then she said, Damon, this is my father. Damon was shocked. He didn't know what to say, but he quickly tried to smooth things over. Uh, <laughs> is that so? My mistake. Like I said, I thought this was your uncle because he looks so young. That's right. You look like you could be Fiona's uncle. Damon's attempt at flattery was so serious that he almost believed it himself. <laughs> I forgive you. It was an honest mistake. Come, come on. You are my daughter's boyfriend, right? Sit down. Fiona's father exclaimed. Although Fiona's father looked strange, he seemed to be a forthright person. He actually did not blame Damon for making such a mistake. Damon sat down. Young man, do you smoke? Yet again, Damon found himself in a bit of a dilemma. He didn't want to admit that he smoked, but he also didn't want to lie. Then he remembered that being Fiona's boyfriend was just an act, so he smiled and said, Yes, I smoke. After Damon said this, Fiona's father took out a cigar and handed it to him. Here's to my daughter's future husband, her father said. Then he lit Damon's cigar. The two men began to smoke. Fiona's father smacked his lips and smiled. Young man, I like you. You are my kind of guy. Come on, smoke. What do you think of that cigar? Damon had to admit that it was a really nice cigar. He had not expected Fiona's father to have such a refined taste. Damon puffed on the cigar and continued flattering Fiona's father. Wow, I can't wait to call you father-in-law. You have great taste in cigars. Fiona could not bear to watch this go on any longer and muttered, Quit being an ass kisser. Damon and Fiona's father pretended that they hadn't hurt her. Fiona's father nodded at Damon and said, I'm glad you think so. Fiona had not expected her father to take such a liking to Damon. What were the odds that these two men would have such similar awful tastes? They were instant buddies. Damon's acting was over the top. Had he actually called Fiona's father his father-in-law? Fiona was secretly impressed by Damon's acting skills. After ordering room service, Damon and Fiona's father chatted and gradually got to know each other. Damon toasted Fiona's father, and Fiona's father said how much he liked Damon again. When Damon put his wine glass down, Fiona's father said, Damon, I've heard that you were quite talented, especially when it comes to music. Fiona still couldn't believe that her father had taken such a shine to Damon. Damon was being a serious suck-up. It was actually kind of embarrassing. Damon nodded in response, and Fiona's father said with a smile, Very good. Not bad at all. Your future is so bright. When two young people are together, they must share the same ideals. Thanks, you are too kind. Well, I'm just repeating all the things that my daughter already told me about you. They finished the first bottle of wine and opened a second. The food arrived. It was delicious. Damon and Fiona's father chatted about everything from travel to politics to science and technology. The more they talked, the better they got along. They regretted not meeting each other sooner. 
They even put their arms over each other's shoulders. Fiona was amazed by how well they were getting along. After they had finished the wine, Fiona's father pulled out a case of cheap beer and threw a can of it to Damon. Then Fiona's father grabbed one for himself. He pulled out a pocket knife, punched a hole in the side of the can, and then cracked the top. Fiona's father proceeded to shotgun the entire can of beer. Then he threw the pocket knife to Damon and said, Your turn. Damon was shocked. Although Damon had shotgun beer at dorm parties before, he hadn't expected someone as old as Fiona's father to be able to do such a thing. Damon looked down at the beer he was holding. This night had taken an interesting turn. Damon punctured a hole in his beer can and shotgunned the entire thing as well. Fiona's father grinned and threw him another beer. Fiona just rolled her eyes. They continued to shotgun the entire case of beer. When the beer was gone, Fiona finally announced that it was time for them to head out, and she kissed her father goodbye. He didn't seem very drunk at all. Damon, on the other hand, could barely walk. Fiona draped Damon's arms over her shoulder and helped him stumble back to the dorms. It was Veronica's birthday the next day, and Veronica had invited Damon to a lunch party at the hotel by the campus lake. Then, in the evening, Damon was scheduled to perform at the big music festival. The music festival tickets had all sold out. Tony Music Entertainment had earned a lot of money. Ricky had called Damon early that morning, hoping that Damon would be willing to meet him at the venue before noon. After all, Damon still needed to come to the venue to rehearse and decide on his wardrobe before he would be ready to go on stage. However, Damon had refused to report to the venue until later that afternoon, and Ricky had not wanted to risk offending Damon before the big show. After all, ever since the news broke out that Ryan Gold would be performing, the festival had become incredibly popular. Before that, ticket sales hadn't been great. No one had expected Ryan Gold to suddenly make a public appearance like this. Since Damon had told Ricky that he wouldn't be there till later, he had most of the day to do as he pleased. Damon thought about how tomorrow was Veronica's birthday. Damon looked in his wallet. He had only $10 left. He had given the rest of his money to Quinn. He did not have to worry about buying food because he still had credit left on his meal card. But he had to buy Veronica a decent gift for her birthday, right? But what kind of gift could $10 buy? Even if Veronica had just been an ordinary friend, spending only $10 on a birthday gift was pretty shabby. Damon wanted to get Veronica something special. However, $10 was all the money that Damon had. Should he call Will and ask to borrow some money from the KC Games account? However, the company's funds were really tight at the moment. After weighing the pros and cons, he finally decided that borrowing money was his only choice. He had to get Veronica a decent gift. Damon went for a walk and called Will. Borrowing money from the KC Games account was straightforward. Damon asked Will if it was okay, and Will immediately transferred him $300. Will didn't mind at all. Although KC Games didn't have a lot of money right now, it was a bit outrageous for the boss of the company to be flat broke. The $300 soon arrived in Damon's bank account, and Damon could finally relax. When he returned to the dormitory to prepare to go shopping, he found that the dormitory was filled with cigarette smoke. A person with a cigarette in his mouth sat at the end of one of the beds. Seven or eight empty beer bottles littered the floor. The person sitting on the bed was Quinn. His face was stained with tears. He looked to be in a world of despair. Damon said, Get up. Why are you drinking alone? Seeing that Damon had come back, Quinn struggled to stand up. He said, There's something I want to ask you. If you have something to ask, just say it. Quinn hesitated for a moment and said with difficulty, I need to borrow money from you again. I need $700. My dad died yesterday. My family can't afford the funeral costs, and the money you lent me is already gone. The cost of living in Meyerson was very high. He had already blown through the money that he had borrowed from Damon. Quinn's father had arrived in Meyerson yesterday, but sadly, he had died in the night. Quinn did not even have enough money to deal with his father's body. He had no choice but to try to borrow money from Damon again. Damon felt terrible for his friend. He fumbled around in his pocket for a while and pulled out his wallet. Here, take my bank card and I have $300 in my account. It's not much, but it's all I have left. Take it. Thank you. Quinn took the bank card from Damon. His eyes were filled with tears of despair. Damon patted Quinn on the shoulder and said, How about you and I go see your father? No, they already took his corpse to the morgue. Quinn didn't want Damon to see his father's corpse. His father had been very sick at the end of his life. Quinn also didn't want Damon to see him cry again. 
he still wanted to preserve his last bit of dignity. Damon was secretly relieved. He hugged his friend and said, Take care. Let me know if there's anything else that I can do. After Quinn left, Damon tidied up the room. He was feeling a little sad. He knew that Quinn's family was very poor. They lived in an impoverished part of the country where good jobs had all but disappeared. Not many people made it out of Quinn's hometown, let alone into a top school like Meyerson. Damon was happy that he could help Quinn. However, Damon was also worried because he had given Quinn all his savings. This meant that Damon really had no money except for the $10 left in his pocket. How would he buy a gift for Veronica now? Damon could not help thinking about his meal card. He wanted to see how much money the meal card had left on it and then take it all out to buy Veronica a decent gift. Damon didn't want Veronica to have any negative thoughts about him. He went over to the cafeteria to check the card and found that there were only a few dollars left on it. He could no longer count on the money in his meal card to get him out of this mess. He cashed out the few dollars left on it and put the money in his pocket. He headed off campus to look for a gift for Veronica. Damon walked to the nearby shopping district. The part of town had many fine stores. The store windows were filled with dazzling merchandise. However, when Damon saw the prices, he felt very conflicted. In the end, Damon took a fancy to a very beautiful lady's watch. Although it was a knockoff brand, it still looked very beautiful. At least the quality of the watch seemed half decent too. But the price was $30. Damon asked the salesperson, How much is it? $30. Damon knew he couldn't afford it, but he smiled sweetly at the salesperson and asked, is there a way you can cut me a deal? The salesperson looked surprised but said, Well, maybe I could knock 10% off the price. Damon explained his situation to the salesperson. I need to buy a birthday present for the girl who I have a crush on, but I only have $15. I don't even have money left to buy food. The salesperson sighed, but he could relate to Damon's situation. After all, he had been young and broke once himself too. The salesperson agreed to sell Damon the watch at half price and even wrapped the gift for Damon. As Damon left the store, the salesperson pointed him out to his co-workers. That guy just spent his last $15 on a birthday gift for his crush. What a romance. I hope she realizes how far he's gone for. Damon had purchased the watch. He had no money left. He hoped that Veronica would like the gift. The next morning, Damon received a call from Liam. It turned out that Veronica had not only invited Damon to her birthday party, but she had also invited many of her former high school classmates. Liam had heard that Avery was also invited. When Liam arrived at Meyerson University for Veronica's party, he came to find Damon. They went to the hotel by the lake together. When they arrived at the hotel, Damon was surprised to see that someone had decorated the hotel lobby. As they approached, he saw lights and ribbons hung everywhere. A huge banner read, Warm wishes for Veronica. Happy birthday. Many luxury cars were parked outside the hotel. There were Mercedes Benzes, Audis, BMWs, Ferraris, and many more. It looked extraordinary. The interior of the hotel was extravagantly decorated. This was no ordinary birthday party. Liam said enviously, I heard that Veronica's dating a rich guy. His birthday party is so extravagant that it looks like a wedding. Her rich boyfriend must have organized it. Damon nodded. He knew that Veronica did not like to waste money. She definitely would not have made such a big deal out of her birthday. This was probably the doing of Veronica's tall, rich, and handsome boyfriend, Drew. As Damon thought about this, he could not help but think of the cheap watch that he had bought as a present. He suddenly felt that his gift wasn't good enough. When Liam saw how extravagant Veronica's birthday venue was, he could not help but sigh. Looks like we are really out of our league here. Compared to Avery and Veronica, we haven't achieved much in life, Liam said with emotion. He had heard a lot about all the things Veronica had done in the past year. She had joined the Association of Young Entrepreneurs, and she had gone to Berlin as an exchange student. She had even won all kinds of big awards. By now, she was famous at Meyerson University. Veronica turned heads everywhere she went on campus. Avery also had her own merits. She had also achieved a lot since graduating high school. They had all graduated high school only a year ago. How had these girls already left them so far behind? At least Liam wasn't alone at the bottom. Although Damon had gotten into a better university than Liam, Liam still seemed to be doing better in school. To him, it seemed that Damon hadn't achieved much since graduating high school either. He secretly felt a lot better about his whole situation. Liam, do you have any money on you? Let me $20 so I can eat tomorrow, and I promise I will return it to you in a few days. 
Damon asked shamelessly when he remembered that he wouldn't have enough money to feed himself tomorrow. Liam smiled. Damon, how is it that you are even poorer than me? He took out a 20 and gave it to Damon. Suddenly, a delicate voice called out to them from behind. Liam, Damon. The two of them turned their heads and saw a beautiful girl standing behind them. She was tall and she had great posture. It was Avery. She was wearing sunglasses. This might have been because she was already quite famous and she didn't want anyone to recognize her and take her photo. But even so, it was still difficult for her to hide. She had a perfect figure and she wore a white shirt over thin light blue jeans. On her feet, she wore a pair of playful looking high heels. She looked very beautiful. They could smell her sweet perfume. She stood there quietly waiting for the guys to say something. Damon and Liam's hearts beat faster. They were surprised to see that Avery had actually come to the party. After getting over their initial surprise, Damon and Liam greeted her warmly. Avery took off her sunglasses. She seemed just as happy to see them as they had been to see her. She nodded at Liam, but she seemed slightly stunned when she saw Damon. Today, Damon had made a point of wearing the clothes that Fiona had bought for him. Damon also looked like he was in better shape than before. Damon had actually been working out every day. Avery hadn't seen him for a long time, so to her it seemed like Damon had changed quite a lot. His body looked great. It was actually a bit distracting. But Avery was used to hanging around handsome guys. She quickly regained her senses and chatted casually with Damon and Liam as they walked into the hotel's banquet hall. Many people had already arrived at the party. In addition to Veronica's classmates, there were also many people at the party who looked too fancy to be students here. Damon guessed that these people probably owned all the luxury cars that were parked outside. These people didn't pay any attention to Liam or Damon. Avery, on the other hand, turned the heads of everyone at the party. After all, Avery was already a little famous. Even when people did not know who she was, they could still tell that she was something special. Avery was very attractive. Nearly every guy who saw her fantasized about her. Damon guessed that all these beautiful people were more likely friends of Veronica's handsome boyfriend, Drew. Had Veronica invited Damon to the party to make Drew jealous? Damon saw a few familiar faces around the hall. After all, Damon shared classes with many of these students. Even though they nodded at Damon in recognition, none of the people he recognized struck up a conversation with him. Damon, Liam, and Avery all stuck together. They had all gone to the same middle school and had practically grown up together. They were old friends, and they hadn't seen each other in a long time. Naturally, they had a lot of catching up to do. However, most of their conversations was just Liam asking about Avery. Avery answered all of Liam's questions. Most of Liam's questions were about what Avery's experience had been like during the singing competition. He also asked about which celebrities she had met. Finally, Liam asked, Oh, hey, Avery, are you free tonight? Do you have any plans after Veronica's party? If you are free, do you want to have dinner together tonight? We could even ask Veronica to join us. Although Liam and Damon ate dinner together from time to time, the four of them had never gone out to eat together before. After all, Avery and Veronica were usually very busy. This was a great opportunity to try to get Avery and Veronica to go out on a date with them. However, Avery shook her head and said gently, I'm afraid I can't today. How about tomorrow instead? I want to go to the big concert tonight. Liam had totally forgotten that the music festival was tonight. He immediately felt a little disappointed. Oh, that's right, I forgot. Actually, I also want to go to that. It will definitely be a great show. Although Liam wanted to go to the show, he did not have the money to buy a ticket. Even if he had the money, he would never be able to buy a ticket now. When they started talking about the concert, an excited expression appeared on Avery's pretty face. She said, Oh, my teacher was able to get me a ticket. I will even get a chance to meet Ryan Gold. As she spoke, Avery's eyes shone even brighter. Avery liked talented guys, especially ones who were musicians. Ever since Ryan Gold had appeared out of nowhere, Avery had been very fond of his songs. She felt that Ryan Gold was a musical genius. Although Avery knew that she was a decent musician whose career would likely surpass her teacher Asher's, Avery didn't think she would ever be as talented as Ryan Gold. Avery's heart was filled with admiration for this mysterious new musician. The thought of meeting Ryan Gold that night made Avery very happy. She had long wondered who Ryan Gold really was. Was he young or old? Judging from his voice, he must be young. After all, his singing was so pleasant to the ears. He must be very good looking, and he must be cultured and well-educated too. Maybe he was even tall as well. Avery was describing her perfect lover. She had hoped that such a guy existed. Avery's words had shocked Liam and Damon. 
Liam envied Avery for having VIP access to the concert, but it made sense. After all, Avery was a little famous herself now, so wasn't it natural that she would be able to get a ticket? Damon was shocked because he hadn't heard anything about having to meet the fans before the show. And not just any fans, he had to meet Avery. Damon had fantasized about Avery finding out that he was Ryan Gold. However, Damon wanted to keep his identity as Ryan Gold a secret. He was planning to wear a disguise. If that was the case, Avery probably wouldn't recognize him. When Damon realized this, he heaved a sigh of relief. At the same time, he felt a strange sense of loss in his heart. As the three of them were still chatting happily, the atmosphere around them suddenly became lively. They turned and saw Veronica walking into the banquet hall. She was being escorted by many people. When Veronica arrived, she was wearing nice clothes, but her clothes were by no means over the top. After all, it was just an ordinary birthday with friends. Although she hadn't really dressed up, her beauty was breathtaking. Veronica had the kind of natural beauty and elegance that made men's jaws drop. The only other girl in the banquet hall whose looks could compete with Veronica's was perhaps Avery. Veronica's tall, rich, and handsome boyfriend, Drew, walked beside her. Drew looked extremely radiant standing beside Veronica. They were a perfect match. Drew pointed to the decorations in the banquet hall and said to Veronica, Ronnie, I'm not sure if this is your style, but I was afraid that the banquet hall would look too plain without decorations. So I hired an event planner to help me. They suggested these modest decorations. However, the decorations were not modest at all. The banquet hall looked like it had been decorated for a very grand occasion. The decorations were very high-end. Veronica said softly, Drew, I told you not to do this. It's just an ordinary birthday party. Drew was surprised. He hadn't expected this kind of response from her. Then a girl beside them spoke to Veronica in a fawning manner. Ronnie, don't blame Drew for going all out. Drew is from a wealthy family. This is normal for him. His birthdays are always this extravagant. If you hadn't specifically instructed Drew to throw the party in the hotel's banquet hall, he would have bought the entire hotel and renovated it just for the occasion. The girl was clearly trying to flatter Drew. Her words made him sound very noble. Damon looked over to see who had been speaking and saw a familiar face. The speaker turned out to be Erica, the girl who had deliberately made things difficult for him during his interview at the campus radio station. Damon saw the vice president of the student union, Tony, standing beside her. He had not expected to see the two of them at the party, but there was truth in Erica's words. Drew turned back to Veronica and said innocently, Ronnie, I just wanted to give you an unforgettable birthday. After hearing all this, Veronica could no longer blame Drew for going all out on her birthday party. After all, Drew had done it for her. Then Veronica saw Avery, Liam, and Damon standing nearby. When Veronica saw them, she smiled charmingly. Avery, Damon, Liam, when did you arrive? The three of them quickly went over to greet Veronica. Avery smiled sweetly and said, Ronnie, thanks for inviting us. We arrived a bit early. Long time no see. You look great. Veronica's pretty face turned red and she softly said, Avery, what are you talking about? You look great too. As she spoke, she took Avery's hand and smiled and nodded at Damon and Liam. Damon nodded back at her and Liam smiled and said, Veronica, happy birthday. Drew, who was still beside Veronica, watched her greet her old classmates. He knew that Veronica thought highly of Avery, Damon, and Liam. He knew that they had been classmates together for many years when they were younger. Because of this, he assumed that they must have been very good friends. Suddenly, Drew laughed loudly and said, Hey, you guys went to school with Veronica, right? I've heard all about you. I knew you guys were coming to the party. Quickly, come in and take a seat. As Drew spoke, his gaze landed on Avery. Drew was surprised by Avery's beauty, which was almost on par with Veronica's. He asked in surprise, You're Avery, right? Drew's remark caught Avery off guard and she asked, You know me? <laughs> you are about to become a big star, of course I know you. Drew said. Many of my friends are fans of yours. If you have time, could you sign a few signatures for me? That way I can give them to my friends. You're too kind. Of course I can, Avery replied with a smile. Drew was about to greet Damon and Liam when Erica interrupted. Damon here is host of the campus radio station. Veronica personally got him the job. Damon did not know if Erica was trying to give a sincere introduction or if she was trying to stir up trouble. When Drew heard this, a vicious look flashed in his eyes. 
Damon's keen senses noticed it. He smiled bitterly, thinking about how much he disliked Erica. He couldn't believe that she was causing trouble for him again. But it did not really matter if Drew disliked Damon. Damon was after Veronica, so naturally he and Drew would have to butt heads sooner or later. Besides, Damon had never been afraid of conflict. He wasn't concerned about what Drew thought. Drew quickly changed his expression back to a smile and greeted Liam, but he ignored Damon. Since the birthday girl had arrived, the banquet could begin. The hotel was catering the event. When Drew gave the word, they would start serving the food. Avery, Damon, and Liam sat at the same table as Veronica and Drew. Many people came up during the meal to wish Veronica happy birthday. Everyone chatted with each other. The party was going well. However, Damon did not say much because he knew that Drew, Erica, and Tony didn't like him, and they were also sitting at Veronica's table. Finally, the meal was over. Immediately after the plates were cleared, the lights in the restaurant suddenly flickered and then went out. Several servers carried in a huge birthday cake with 19 candles on top to celebrate Veronica's 19th birthday. The cake was not only big, but it was also lavishly decorated. All the decorations on the cake seemed vivid and lifelike. Obviously, someone very skilled had made it. There was a decoration of a princess on the top of the cake. The princess looked just like Veronica. The cake maker had been very attentive. Erica said, Ronnie, Drew commissioned a famous French pastry chef to make that cake for you. The chef used to work for a European royal family. She is the best in the industry. Even Veronica was slightly touched to hear this, and she said, Wow, Drew, thank you very much. The expression on Liam's face was full of envy. Oh my god, this guy spent a fortune on this party. Just from looking at it, he could tell that the cake alone had probably cost thousands of dollars. Any fantasy Liam had had about getting with a goddess like Veronica had long since been destroyed. He didn't stand a chance with a girl like that. The cake had been brought out, and the next step was to cut it. Veronica personally cut the cake. Although a lot of people had come today, the cake was large enough for everyone to have a piece. There would even be leftovers. They sang happy birthday and ate the cake. Everyone wished Veronica a happy birthday. After they had finished eating, Damon opened his mouth and said, Veronica, I want to wish you a happy birthday. He took out the birthday present that he had bought yesterday and gave it to Veronica. When Damon said this, the other people at the table turned to watch. Damon's present was sitting on the table alongside many other dazzling gifts. Liam's was quite large. Damon was nervous about his present. It looked very small and plain compared to everyone else's. After Veronica had put Damon's gift-wrapped present with the others in front of her, Tony piped up and said, Since everyone is here, Ronnie, why don't you open your presents? When Damon heard Tony say this, he wanted to tear Tony's mouth off his face. Damn it. He had really hoped that Veronica wouldn't open her presents in front of everyone. He didn't want to get embarrassed. However, it looked like Tony was very pleased with himself. He had obviously spent a lot of money on Veronica's gift. Otherwise, he wouldn't have suggested that she open her gifts in front of everyone. Fortunately, Veronica frowned at Tony's suggestion and said, No, that doesn't seem right. I think it's better if I wait until I get home to open them. Veronica was intelligent, and she didn't want to make any of her classmates feel bad. She knew that they could not all afford to give expensive gifts. After all, most of her classmates did not come from wealthy families like Drew and Tony. If she opened all their gifts in front of them, people might feel awkward. Damon immediately heaved a sigh of relief. He was glad that Veronica understood. This made him love Veronica all the more. But then, a handsome friend of Drew's cut in and said, Veronica, I think you should open your presents now. We all want to know what people got you. What do you think? It seemed that all Drew's friends came from wealthy families, so they were able to give expensive gifts. They were excited to see what people had got Veronica. Drew gave his friend a knowing glance. Drew must have prepared an extravagant gift for Veronica. Obviously, he wanted a chance to show off his present to everyone. Of course, Drew couldn't say this out loud. Naturally, it was better coming from his friend. Since so many people had agreed with Drew's friend, Veronica had no choice but to go along with him. So Veronica nodded her head. First, she opened the small but exquisite box from Drew's friend. Inside was the latest iPhone. It was clearly super expensive. All the students who were watching cried out in surprise. The handsome guy who had given the gift shrugged off their reactions. People who had spent much less on their gifts shifted awkwardly in their seats. 
After all, the iPhone was the first gift that Veronica had opened. It had set the bar high for the rest. If the other gifts weren't as good, it would inevitably be somewhat awkward. Even Tony looked somewhat uncomfortable. After all, although the gift that he had bought for Veronica was not cheap, it was still inferior to a brand new iPhone. Now he was kicking himself for suggesting that Veronica open her gifts in front of everyone. Fortunately, the second gift that Veronica opened was less extravagant. It was a nice travel mug from her classmate. Veronica smiled and said thanks. The mug was just what she had needed. The third, fourth, and fifth gifts that she opened were all worth about the same amount of money. So far, many people's gifts cost less than $50. Everyone's mood gradually relaxed. However, as Damon watched Veronica open presents, his mood became worse and worse. He thought to himself, Compared with this stuff, my gift sucks. Damn. It was going to be embarrassing when she opened his gift in front of everyone. Damon wanted to go find a hole and hide in it. He hadn't been able to afford an expensive gift. He cared a lot about what Veronica and Avery thought of him. If they thought less of him because of his crummy gift, Damon didn't think he would be able to stand it. The sixth gift that Veronica opened was from Liam. It was a karaoke machine worth around $100. The karaoke machine could be connected to a TV or computer. Karaoke parties were all the rage on campus lately. Liam had clearly put a lot of thought into his gift. Next, Veronica picked up Tony's present. When Tony saw Veronica open the iPhone, he didn't look very happy, but he seemed better now that Veronica had opened some less expensive presents. Veronica opened Tony's gift. Inside the box was a crystal bracelet that glittered beautifully in the light. People could tell just by looking at it that it was definitely worth a lot. Tony proudly told Veronica about the bracelet. Ronnie, this is from a famous European designer. I asked someone to pick it up for you in France. It is one of a kind. You can't even buy this in the States. A female classmate of Veronica said enviously, It's beautiful. It suits you so well, Ronnie. It was finally Avery's turn to give Veronica her gift. Her gift was a designer handbag that was worth a few hundred dollars. It was Veronica's style. Veronica held it up admiringly. After opening Avery's gift, Veronica picked up the gift from Drew. Everyone could tell just from looking at the box that Drew's gift was very expensive. However, the box was very small. Everyone was trying to guess whether it was a ring, a bracelet, or some other precious item of jewelry. Veronica gently opened the box. Inside was a car key. The key had the BMW logo on it. When everyone saw this birthday present, they gasped loudly. Even Tony, who had been on his way out to get some air, craned his neck to see what it was. Although he knew that Drew's gift to Veronica would be expensive, he had never imagined that Drew would actually be so generous as to give Veronica a brand new BMW. Even though Veronica was from a well-off family, she was still shocked by Drew's gift. A brand new BMW was simply too much. She couldn't think straight. The room echoed with sounds of surprise and envy. Veronica looked at the car key, then she shook her head and said softly, Drew, I'm sorry, your gift is too expensive, I can't accept it. Veronica's rejection caused an uproar in the crowd. No one had expected Veronica to reject Drew's gift. After all, it was a brand new BMW. Every girl dreamed of having a car like this. Veronica's reaction made people start to wonder if Veronica and Drew's relationship was really all that serious. After all, they were really boyfriend and girlfriend. Wouldn't Veronica have gladly accepted the gift and then given Drew a big kiss? Drew's expression had also changed. After all, he had never imagined that she would refuse his gift. When Veronica opened the box and saw the car key, she was so calm. Drew didn't know what to think. He had never faced this kind of rejection before. Drew still had a trump card to play. He suddenly took out a small box from his pocket. Inside was a very beautiful diamond ring. He opened the box and raised it up high. He said, Veronica, I bought this ring for you. I'm not asking you to marry me. I just want you to be my steady girlfriend, okay? I really love you from the bottom of my heart. Who would have thought that Drew would actually do such a thing? Everyone had thought that Drew and Veronica were already in a serious relationship. The scene became even more chaotic. Some people were shocked, some were moved, and others were annoyed at having their hopes of being with Veronica dashed. Damon naturally fell into the category of people who were annoyed. He really wanted to kick Drew. After all, Damon had been after Veronica for a long time, and now it looked like this pig, Drew, had won over Veronica's heart. 
Inside, Damon was shouting, Don't take his ring. However, things did not look promising for Damon. As Drew waited for Veronica's response, the group of Drew's annoying friends behind him actually started to applaud. Then some said, Take it, Veronica, take the ring. The rest of the people in the crowd started shouting too, Take the ring, be his girlfriend. When Damon heard almost everyone in the room cheering for Drew, he felt like his heart was going to explode. He wondered if Veronica would really agree to be Drew's girlfriend. Veronica blinked softly as she looked around the room. Then she gently lowered her head and said, Drew, I I'm not ready. Drew hurriedly said, Ronnie, can't you see that I have feelings for you? What do you mean you're not ready? Then Drew's friend chimed in. Yes, Drew really likes you and he's serious. Many girls would die for an opportunity like this. No, it's not that I don't like him. I just feel that it is all a little sudden. Veronica seemed very conflicted. Perhaps she actually really liked Drew, but she just hadn't expected to be put on the spot like this. After all, Veronica had not been mentally prepared for Drew's sudden proposal. At least this proved that Veronica was not Drew's girlfriend, Damon thought to himself, which meant that there was still hope. Although Damon had to admit that any remaining hope seemed very distant at the moment. When people heard Veronica's words, they were disappointed, but some of them were happy. Damon, who secretly wanted Veronica to be his girlfriend, took pleasure in Drew's misfortune. Drew was pretending to be nice about the situation. He said, It's okay, Ronnie. Take your time and think about it. I really love you. I will always wait for you. Drew paused for a moment, then continued, In honor of Veronica's birthday today, I want to invite everyone to the music festival tonight. If you still need tickets, come and see me or my friends. We'll hook you up. When Drew said these words, the entire audience cried out in excitement. They had not expected Drew to drop a bombshell like that. Everyone wanted to go to the concert, but tickets were nearly impossible to get. Any tickets available now cost 10 times the original price. Was Drew actually giving everyone free tickets? He was not just rich and handsome, but he was also generous. Veronica smiled slightly and waited for the excitement to die down. She still had more gifts to open. She opened two more gifts in the $50 range. Then she finally picked up Damon's gift. Liam laughed and said, Damon, what did you get for her? Avery's expression was also full of curiosity. She also wanted to see what Damon had got for Veronica. Veronica's eyes lit up slightly as if she had been looking forward to opening Damon's gift all along. What could be inside this small box? So, when Veronica quickly opened Damon's gift and took out the watch, everyone else was watching expectantly. She held up Damon's gift for everyone to see. The watch glittered with a cold light, but everyone could tell that it was not very expensive. People raised their eyebrows. Damon was already a little embarrassed, but what Erica said next made him want to hide under the table. That watch looks like cheap crap that they sell in department stores. You can buy one of those for 20 bucks. The expressions on people's faces turned from looks of surprise to looks of disgust. Even though most of Veronica's friends hadn't splurged on expensive gifts, their gifts had still been more thoughtful than Damon's. How could someone give Veronica something so trashy? Damon's gift was, without a doubt, the worst gift of the bunch. Avery was also a little confused as to why Damon would give Veronica such a present, but Veronica's eyes lit up when she saw the watch. She softly said, This watch is really beautiful. I like it. Thanks, Damon. Erica said rudely. Ronnie, you actually like this gift? Come on. You were just pretending, right? Almost everyone laughed in agreement. Damon decided it was better to explain himself, and he said, I wanted to buy you a better gift, but I couldn't afford to. I recently lent all my money to a friend. Damon could ignore the reactions of all the people watching. He didn't care what they thought of him, but he did care about what Veronica and Avery thought of him. That was why he felt like he had to explain himself. Liam remembered that Damon had borrowed money from him earlier that day. He could not help but speak up on his friend's behalf. Veronica, he's telling you the truth. He did spend everything he had on your present. He had to borrow money for food from me today. Liam was trying to tell Veronica just how far Damon had gone to get her a birthday present. Avery didn't seem bothered by the price of Damon's present either. She knew that Damon's family was not well off. She smiled and said, Ronnie, this is actually a good quality watch. Erica refuted Avery's words. No, it's not. I know where Damon bought this. My friend works there. This watch is a cheap 
piece of crap. Veronica interrupted Erica and said, I think this watch is pretty good quality. I like it. Damon, thank you. Since Veronica had spoken, Erica held her tongue. Although she was not impressed by Damon's lousy gift, Veronica did not mind. Erica had to let it go. She couldn't continue to badmouth Damon's gift without it seeming like an insult to Veronica. The people who were still watching began to discuss other things, and Veronica did not open any more presents. After all, opening presents in front of everyone was just making people feel awkward. Damon was feeling awful. He knew that from the moment the people had seen Veronica open his present, their opinions about him had changed. Some of the people at the party were even unwilling to talk to him now. How could people be so snobbish? They didn't want to be friends with someone who couldn't afford to buy a decent present. Liam quietly said, Damon, next time tell me if you need money, I'll lend you some. Liam and Damon had grown up together, so their relationship was very close. Damon shook his head. He had already accepted the situation. After all, it had not seemed like a big deal to Veronica and Avery. They had not had any objections to his present. As for the rest of these people, Damon didn't care what they thought. But Damon didn't want to hang out with them any longer. Furthermore, he had to go to the festival venue that afternoon to rehearse his performance. The party was basically over anyway. Damon told people that he had to use the bathroom, and then he went outside to smoke a cigarette. While smoking, he decided that it was time for him to leave the party. He would find an opportunity to talk to Veronica. As Damon left the banquet hall to use the bathroom, Erica watched him leaving and smiled contemptuously. If you didn't want to spend your money on Veronica, then why didn't you just say so? What kind of lousy excuse was that about lending all your money to a friend? One of Drew's friends said, You shouldn't say that. Maybe he was telling the truth. Maybe he really doesn't have any money. Not everyone has a rich family. Another girl named Lacey giggled. <laughs> I'm afraid you don't know him very well, huh? Well, I know him. He used to be with Fiona. You know Fiona, right? Her family is quite rich. She is very beautiful. Anyways, when he was dating Fiona, he always used to wear cheap, knockoff brand clothing. Fiona eventually dumped him, but he still won't leave her alone. Erica said in disdain, A guy like that has no future. Who would want to be with someone like him? When Liam heard these people talking like this about his best friend, he was very unhappy. He tried to stick up for Damon and said, Don't be so sure. I believe in Damon. He is not a petty person or a liar. He must have really lent his money to someone else. The people sitting around the table saw that Liam seemed a little angry. Erica and Lacey looked down on Liam too because he was Damon's friend. But since it was Veronica's birthday, no one wanted to make the atmosphere awkward. They just laughed it off and talked about other things instead. But in her heart, Erica still looked down on Liam and Damon. She didn't think that poor people deserved to go to Meyerson. At this time, Damon finished smoking and came back to the table to say goodbye. He walked over to Veronica and said to her, Veronica, I just received a call. I have something. I need to go. Thanks for inviting me. I had a great time. I'll see you later. Everyone curled their lips. This guy was tactful. He had realized that he was not welcomed here, so he was leaving. Veronica also knew that Damon did not fit in here. She nodded and got up to personally walk Damon out. But Damon stopped her. He said, You don't need to walk me out. Entertain your guests. Veronica nodded. Damon said goodbye to Liam and Avery, and he was about to leave when the door to the banquet hall suddenly opened, and a young guy walked in. A woman with a cane followed behind him. The boy said, Mom, slow down, don't fall. Although the woman was actually not very old, she had clearly lived a hard life, and she looked like she was already in her 50s or 60s. Her shoulders were hunched from a lifetime of hard work. When the woman walked into the hall and saw the high-end decorations, she thought that she was in the wrong place, and she panicked. Quinn, this isn't the right place. This place must be so expensive. Who could afford to eat in such a place? Don't spend your money so recklessly. Let's just grab some takeout from the deli next door. The boy grabbed his mother's hand and said, Mom, don't worry, my friends are here somewhere. Damon took a closer look and realized that he knew the young guy who had just walked in. It was Quinn. Damon immediately called out to him. Quinn, what are you doing here? Quinn and his mother were engaged in a quiet discussion, but when they heard Damon's voice call out Quinn's name, they immediately raised their heads. A look of surprise flashed in their eyes. Damon, there you are. I came here looking for you. This is my mother. The woman pointed at Damon and asked, Quinn, is this your classmate? Quinn suddenly became excited and said, 
Mom, this is the friend who I told you about. This is Damon. He's a great guy. Damon is the one who lent me all the money to help with Dad. The woman was shocked. She looked Damon over carefully. Then she suddenly wrapped her arms around him and gave him a big hug. She was crying as she said, You are a very generous boy. Thank you for helping our family. Thank you so much. She reached out an arm and grabbed Quinn, pulling him into the hug as she said, Quinn, get in here and hug Damon as well. We must thank him for his great kindness. We are so grateful for everything he's done. When the woman hugged Damon, he was shocked. But he quickly came back to his senses and pulled himself free of her embrace. He said sheepishly, Ma'am, I'm happy that I could help, but you were causing a scene at my friend's birthday party. If you have something to say, we can go outside and talk. Quinn shrugged off his mother's embrace as well and patted her shoulder. Quinn looked at Damon with embarrassment. Quinn's mom didn't try to hug them again, but she still had more that she wanted to say to Damon. Damon, I really thank you. Thank you so much. You made Quinn's father happy in his final days. It was a great comfort to him to know that Quinn has a classmate like you, and our family is so grateful to you. I'm glad that Quinn has a friend like you too. We owe you so much. Ma'am, you don't have to thank me. Quinn told me that your family was having some difficulties. I was happy to help out. Damon interrupted the woman. Quinn and I are friends. Helping each other is what friends do. Thank you. The woman kept thanking Damon. Then she took a tin out of the bag that she was carrying. Well, Damon, I don't have any way to thank you properly, but I made you some cookies. It's my famous recipe. Quinn loves them. Everyone thinks they're delicious. Damon opened the tin, took out a cookie, and had a bite. This is delicious, he exclaimed as he swallowed the bite. These cookies smell so good, too. Oh, I'm so glad that you like them. I'll bake you more, the woman said with tears in the corners of her eyes. Damon closed the cookie tin and tucked it under his arms with a smile. Quinn looked at Damon. He couldn't help but shed a couple of tears as he looked at Damon with gratitude. Liam stood up and asked loudly, Damon, is this the friend who you lent your money to? Is this why you had to borrow money from me for food? Quinn's expression changed. Damon, you don't have enough money for food? Damon quickly nodded his head. Yes, but don't worry about me. I'll be all right. After saying this, Damon shot Liam a dirty look. He wished Liam hadn't made a big deal out of it. Liam understood Damon's meaning and shut his mouth, but in his heart, he admired Damon even more. Veronica and the others at the table had all been watching this scene play out. They were all stunned. Everyone who had been talking badly about Damon before felt very guilty now. Their faces burned with shame. So Damon really hadn't been lying about lending someone all his money. Had his generosity really made such a difference in this woman's life? People had overheard the conversation and seen the grateful expression on Quinn's mother's face. What Damon had done for these people was very generous. Although the gift that Damon had given Veronica wasn't very expensive, at least Avery and Veronica had had a chance to see what a good guy he was. After chatting for a while with Quinn and his mother, Damon said to the woman, Ma'am, Quinn is right. You are among friends here. If you are hungry, grab a plate. Then he turned to Quinn and said, Quinn, I have to go, but if you have any other problems, just let me know. Quinn nodded and watched Damon leave. After Damon left, Quinn brought his mother to a table in a corner. Only then did Veronica, Avery, and the others look away. Liam felt vindicated. He quietly wondered when Damon had become such a good guy. Drew's expression had turned a little ugly. Erica gritted her teeth and said stubbornly, <laughs> What is the world coming to? Lacey said, It looks like this place will just let anyone in here. Avery did not like the atmosphere at the table. Clearly Damon was a good guy, but these people still didn't like him. Although she had rejected Damon's advances before, he was still her childhood friend. Avery was very unhappy to hear these people continue to badmouth him. Although she had not paid much attention to what the other people were saying about Damon earlier, she now felt that they were doing him an injustice. She did not want to stay any longer. She looked at her watch and found that it was almost two o'clock in the afternoon. She said to Veronica, Ronnie, I have some things to do at school, so I'm going to head back. Let's get together again soon. Veronica said goodbye to Avery. Now, Avery and Damon had both left, and Liam didn't feel like there was any point in staying, so he got up and said goodbye to Veronica and the other students. After Liam had said goodbye, Drew said, Ronnie, why don't we go back to the music festival starts later this afternoon. Let's go and take a look at the venue. Other people seemed ready to leave as well, so Veronica's birthday banquet quietly ended. Everyone who wanted to go to the show but still needed tickets flocked to Drew's friend to collect them. 
After leaving the hotel by the lake, Damon received a call from Ricky. Ricky was urging him to hurry over to the venue. Although it was true that he was Ryan Gold, he had never done a live show before. No one knew if he would perform well on stage. If he didn't sound good in the rehearsals, he might have to lip sync the live performance. If that were the case, the organizers would need time to prepare. Tony Music Entertainment had spent a lot of money promoting the mysterious Ryan Gold as the star of the show. If anything went wrong, the company would lose a lot of money. Damon rushed over to the concert venue to rehearse. When he arrived, he saw that the street in front was already crowded with people. The people who were waiting were all fans of the celebrities scheduled to perform. They were waiting outside the venue for a chance to take photos with their idols before the show started. Campus security had set up some barriers. They were not letting people into the concert venue yet. We want to go in and see Ryan Gold, you can't stop us, someone shouted from the crowd. Screw campus security, you're depriving us of our human rights, shouted another person. Ryan Gold, we love you. The security guards ignored the shouts from the crowd. They would not allow the crazy fans to rush in early. When Damon walked up to the security guards at the front of the crowd, they stopped him. One guard seized Damon and patted him down. When the search turned up nothing, the security guard relaxed a little and said, You can't come in yet. There are rehearsals going on here. If you want to wait for the performers to come out, please go over that way. There is a special waiting area there. When the performers inside finish rehearsing, they will come out and do a meet and greet. You can get their signatures then. Damon pointed at himself and said, I am also here to rehearse. When he said this, not only were the security guards stunned, but everyone else who heard was stunned too. The people around him looked at each other and could not help but laugh. Who was this guy? He was pretty funny. Did he not know what kind of people were rehearsing inside? After the crowd finished laughing, the security guard said seriously, Hey kid, we've heard lousy excuses like yours a hundred times today. I can understand why you were so desperate to get inside. There are a lot of really famous people inside this building. To be honest, I'm a big fan of some of them too. But we're just doing our jobs. Can you please cooperate? Just wait by the side over there and stop talking nonsense. I'm being serious now. What a joke. Did this kid really expect them to believe that he was here to rehearse with all these famous celebrities? Damon racked his brain, trying to think of a way to convince them to let him in. He knew that he didn't look like a celebrity. Damon argued, I really need to go in and rehearse. After thinking it over, he realized that he did not have any way to prove to the security guards that he actually belonged inside. Ricky had not given Damon any kind of security pass to permit him to enter. A cute girl who seemed to be working at the venue walked over and said, Hey handsome, are you one of the backup dancers here for rehearsals? The backup dancers don't enter this way. The only people who are allowed to use this entrance are the big stars. Although the security guards had not believed Damon, this girl had noticed that Damon was handsome and had a professional demeanor, so she assumed that he must be one of the backup dancers performing at the show. Unfortunately, backup dancers were still not allowed to enter here. Damon was about to call Ricky when Ricky came out through the doors looking for him. Ricky had been wondering why Damon still hadn't arrived and had realized that Damon didn't have a security pass, so he quickly came out to take a look for him. Coincidentally, Ricky saw Damon just as Damon was anxiously trying to call him. Ricky suddenly laughed and said, My friend, the musical genius, we are looking forward to your stellar performance. You're finally here. You are our biggest star. Come in quickly. Come in. We're waiting for you to rehearse. As Ricky spoke, he hurriedly grabbed Damon's arm and walked into the building. The two security guards, as well as everyone else who had been watching, widened their eyes in disbelief as they watched Ricky warmly welcome Damon into the building. The cute girl who had assumed that Damon was a backup dancer stammered. M Mr. King, who, who is he? Don't you like Ryan Gold? Well, he is right in front of you, Ricky said, and then he laughed again. Then he quickly led Damon into the rehearsal venue, leaving the girl as well as all the fans behind outside. Everyone outside looked at the door that Damon had just disappeared behind. Everyone was confused. Had they misheard the conversation? Finally, the cute girl piped up. With a trembling voice, she said, Mr. King just said that that guy is Ryan Gold. Oh, I think I heard him say that too. I thought I was hearing things. Did I hear right? Exclaimed another bystander. Oh my God, could it be? Was that really Ryan Gold? He was so handsome. He looked exactly as I imagined him. Another girl cried out. The cute girl who worked for the venue was also extremely excited. Oh my God, he was so handsome, especially his eyes. They were deep like an ocean. He is my Prince Charming. I can't believe I actually talked to him just now. However, when she realized that Damon had already disappeared into the building, she immediately became upset. 
Oh no, I forgot to ask for a selfie with him. Ugh, I'm so stupid. As the news of Ryan Gold's arrival rippled back through the crowd, everyone became very excited. No one guessed that the person who had just walked through the crowd was actually Ryan Gold, the singer who had risen to fame out of seemingly nowhere. Countless people who admired him. His nondescript arrival at the venue had been a huge surprise. Some people had even started posting about it on social media already. Everyone in the crowd was talking about him now. Oh my god, Ryan Gold just got here. I saw him. What does he look like? Oh, he's so tall and handsome. He's the man of my dreams. Mm, I like him so much. Even now, I'm still drowning in the ocean of his eyes. I can barely breathe. Come on, come on. Everyone go to gate two. Maybe Ryan Gold will come out and do a meet and greet soon. The news spread like wildfire. The students who had been waiting outside the venue to see the big stars all crazily rushed over to gate two, the designated spot for the meet and greet. Most of them wanted to see Ryan Gold. He had become very popular. No one wanted to miss a chance to see him in person. The crazed fans nearly started a riot. The security guards were so nervous that they got their riot gear and formed a line in front of gate two. They had to use all their strength to maintain order. The cute girl who worked for the venue excitedly took out her phone and called her classmate to report this huge news. Avery, come back quickly. Do you know who I saw just now? Avery was already nearby the venue when she asked, Who did you see? I just saw Ryan Gold. You have to believe me. The cute girl told her friend over the phone. He's really as handsome as I imagined. No, he's even more handsome than I imagined. I think I fell in love with him at first sight. Avery was very excited when she heard that Ryan Gold had actually made an appearance. At least this proved that Ryan Gold's performance was not just a gimmick to sell concert tickets. Ryan Gold, the mysterious new big shot in the music industry, was actually at the venue. Avery suppressed her excitement and said, Ashley, you fall in love with every handsome guy you see. You should confess your love to Ryan Gold. Maybe he'll fall in love with you as well. The cute girl immediately shook her head and said, Forget it. That guy definitely has a girlfriend. Who knows, he might even have lots of girlfriends. No, I'll just admire him from afar. Ashley knew that she didn't stand a chance with a big celebrity like Ryan Gold. Ordinary people like her did not have relationships with famous people like him. If Damon knew what these girls were thinking, he would have been surprised. He didn't consider himself all that attractive. He didn't have a girlfriend. And he wasn't even casually hooking up with anyone. He had been dumped one, two, three, four times in a row. His love life was a mess. The noise from outside the building faded behind Damon as he walked into the venue for rehearsals. He saw the festival staff busily running back and forth everywhere. Backstage, many big stars were waiting for their turn to rehearse on stage. There were also some famous directors and other important people milling around backstage. Ricky introduced Damon to everyone, and Damon chatted with them to get to know them. After people learned that Damon was Ryan Gold, the viral internet musical sensation, everyone wanted to talk to him. They couldn't believe someone so young had already achieved so much. If Damon's star continued to rise in the industry, there was no telling what he would accomplish. Some of the popular celebrities that Damon met shook hands with him, but many of the celebrities merely nodded. After all, Damon was young and new to fame, but he had already overshadowed many of these big shots who had been famous for a long time. It was inevitable that some of these people would resent him for it. The director who was in charge of the festival greeted Damon warmly. The man looked to be around 40 years old. He explained some things to Damon to prepare him for the show. After the celebrity who was currently on stage finished rehearsing, the director wanted Damon to go on stage and do a sound check. He wanted to see how Damon sounded live. After all, tens of thousands of people would be watching later. Just because a person was famous on the internet did not mean that they would do well in a big live performance like this. Damon was not afraid to go on stage. He looked around and saw the celebrities watching him. They were hoping that he would make a fool of himself. Damon cleared his throat and adjusted the tuning of his guitar before slowly starting to sing. Although it was Damon's first time on stage, he did not have stage fright. His high IQ enabled him to quickly adapt to any situation. Everyone was shocked by his confidence and the strength of his performance. When Damon had originally recorded his songs, the equipment that he used was very amateur. Damon had recorded Time Flies in his bedroom at home, and at one point in the recording you could even hear the sounds of street traffic in the background. Therefore, Damon was used to performing in poor conditions. The performance he gave during rehearsals sounded just as good as the original recordings of his songs. Furthermore, Damon had perfect pitch. He sounded as good as the people who had spent years singing professionally. 
Not only was Damon's voice amazing, but he also had a great stage presence. Damon's performance was full of energy, and everyone felt invigorated after watching him. He was a natural performer. After Damon finished singing his two songs, everyone who had been watching applauded. Ricky and the director were clapping especially loud. They both heaved sighs of relief. After all, this was the first time they had seen Damon perform on stage. They had been a little afraid that Damon would not perform well when put on the spot. However, now they realized that they had nothing to worry about. Damon had proved himself worthy of his reputation. He would not have any problems performing on the stage as the grand finale. Later that afternoon, everyone went out to eat. They were all waiting for the big show to begin. As night fell, the entire festival venue lit up with lights. Obviously, the festival organizers had put a lot of effort into setting up the venue. There was still an hour to go before the opening act, but the entire concert venue was already filled with people. The area around the main stage was especially noisy. Students who didn't have tickets stood around outside the gates. They still wanted to be a part of the fun, even if they couldn't get inside the venue. Besides, they might get a chance to meet someone famous and get an autograph. Of course, there were also many people at the show who weren't students. The festival had attracted attention from music fans of all ages. Some people had even come in from out of town just to see the show. The areas outside the event were decorated with strings of lights and streamers. Posters of the various celebrities who were scheduled to perform plastered the walls. However, Ryan Gold was wearing a mask in all his posters. The organizers had deliberately covered his face with a mask to maintain his air of mystery. The event organizers had set up many stalls around the venue to capitalize on the business opportunity. These stalls sold all kinds of concert merchandise as well as glow sticks, balloons, and food and drink. The beer garden was extremely lively. It was obviously all the sellers were doing good business. There were even merch stalls outside the venue gates, so those who did not have tickets could also buy souvenirs from the festival. The area around the venue was busy with people who would come to take part in the excitement. There were a ton of people on campus this evening. The entire place was a sea of people. There were confetti cannons on the roof of the building, and colorful pieces of paper rained down on the crowds of people who were still waiting outside. Tony Music Entertainment had really gone all out for this show. Damon didn't join the rest of the people from Tony Music Entertainment for dinner. Instead, he went to the school cafeteria. After he finished eating, he still had about an hour before the opening act started. Damon took the opportunity to stroll around the campus. The festival was being held at Meyerson College of Music, and this part of the campus was a little ways away from the main quad. The scenery here was very elegant and the trees were lush. There were also many ponds and gardens. It was a great setting for a music festival. The atmosphere was also very romantic. Damon thought about all the attractive girls who attended the College of Music. It was one of the top art schools in the country and only the best students could attend here. Walking around here made Damon feel grateful to be able to attend a university like this. There were so many beautiful and talented girls just waiting to fall in love with him. Damon was walking towards the library now. He saw a few men and women standing outside the building as if they were waiting for something. These people immediately caught Damon's eye because they were all very attractive. Even the men in the group were all very handsome. As Damon got closer, he thought he recognized someone he knew. Was that tall and beautiful girl Avery? Sure enough, it was. What a coincidence! It seemed like they were running into each other everywhere today. Damon had just said goodbye to her after lunch, yet here she was again. The gardens around the Meyerson College of Music were full of flowers, bushes, and trees. Avery looked like she was waiting for someone. The area outside the library where she was waiting was well lit. Damon could see Avery's reflection in the shallow pond beside the library. Her reflection rippled and swayed with the movement of the water. She looked particularly beautiful in the warm light of the library building. As Damon got closer, he recognized the guy standing beside Avery too. It was another old acquaintance, Matt. Damon could not help but think back to the fight that he and Matt had had back in New York. At that time, Alex had beaten up Matt. Damon hadn't expected to run into Matt again. Then, Damon remembered that Matt and Avery were both studying under Asher. They were classmates in the same program. Since this concert was a big deal in the music industry, it was understandable that Matt and Avery would go together. Damon was trying to decide whether or not he should go up and greet them. Now that he thought about it, maybe it wasn't such a good idea. 
He had just seen Avery at lunch that day. If he went over to say hi to Avery, he wouldn't have much to say. After all, he and Avery were from two different worlds. Other than the fact that they had gone to the same school and had some of the same friends, the two of them didn't have much in common. In addition, Damon really didn't have anything to say to Matt. Damon abandoned the idea of saying hi. Damon? Just as Damon was about to walk away, someone called to him from behind. Damon turned around and saw Avery waving at him from where she stood by the library. She had an expression of surprise in her big, bright eyes. Obviously, she was surprised to see Damon in her part of campus. Damon was actually very happy when he saw Avery waving at him. After all, since Avery had taken the initiative to call out to him, she must still consider him a friend, despite having rejected him back in high school. Therefore, Damon walked over to Avery's group and greeted them with a smile. Hello, Avery. I didn't expect to see you again today. Oh, why didn't you tell me you were coming to this part of campus? We could have planned to meet up. Avery's voice was warm. Her demeanor towards him seemed different from before. After all, what she had seen Damon do today totally changed her impression of him. She saw him in a different light now. Furthermore, Damon was studying at Meyerson University now. He must have gotten his life together since high school. Anyone who could get into Meyerson University must be bright. Damon politely asked, What are you waiting for? Avery replied, I'm waiting for some friends. We are going to the show together later. At this moment, Damon realized that Matt had been staring at him in astonishment. Matt hadn't expected to meet Damon here. He still didn't like Damon. When he remembered how Damon had ordered Alex and Frank to beat him up, Matt's expression became extremely ugly. He fought the impulse to jump on Damon and beat him up. Matt glared at Damon, but Damon looked to be a lot stronger than Matt, so Matt decided not to start trouble. A few of the other girls beside Avery blinked their long eyelashes at Damon and checked him out. A girl with her hair teased into a fancy updo giggled and asked, Avery, who is this? He's very handsome. Why don't you introduce him to us? Avery laughed and said, His name's Damon. We went to school together when we were younger. We grew up together. The girl with the fancy hairstyle said, Wow, so are you guys childhood sweethearts? Avery usually didn't embarrass easily, but when she heard her friend's question, her face turned red. Don't talk nonsense. I would have told you if we were. We were just friends, and that's all. Damon aced his SATs, and now he studies finance at Meyerson University. He plays the guitar very well. He's very talented. Avery's friend was impressed to hear that Damon had aced his SATs. Girls in art school always found smart guys attractive, and it sounded like Damon was a top student. And on top of that, he knew how to play the guitar. If Avery thought this guy had talent, he must be really good. Avery's friend was intrigued. She asked Damon, Hey, handsome, are you going to the show tonight? It sounds like you're really into music too. Do you want to go to the show together later? The girl smiled at Damon. She assumed that since Damon played guitar, he must be here for the concert. After all, Ryan Gold was performing, and he was like a god to people who were into guitar. Matt, who was standing next to them, finally found an opportunity to interrupt and said sarcastically, even if he wanted to watch the concert, I doubt he would be able to afford a ticket. One ticket probably costs more than this guy makes in a few months. When Matt said this, the girls immediately looked at him in confusion. Avery's face turned pale. She knew what Matt was going to say next, so she gently touched him on the arm. She wanted to stop Matt from saying anything else. Avery cared about Damon's feelings, but Matt ignored her. He continued in a strange tone. You probably don't know, right? This genius is here on scholarship. His family can't afford to send him to a school like Meyerson. They are trailer trash. Even if he does have talent, he still won't amount to anything. He's a high school dropout. The girl's expressions immediately stiffened. Damon had seemed like such an outstanding guy. He did not seem like a high school dropout. However, Matt's words had had truth in them, and the fact that Avery did not refute him proved this. Most of the girls lost interest in Damon and went back to chatting amongst themselves. It was unfortunate that people could still be so judgmental in this day and age, but Meyerson was a top university, and many of the students who attended there came from upper-class families. They were ignorant to any world outside their own, and they didn't want to associate with anyone they considered riffraff. However, the girl with the fancy updo was still intrigued, and she asked, rather tentatively, That might not be the case, right? Avery just said that this guy aced his SATs, and that he's a talented musician. If that's the case, he's a serious catch. Matt put his hands in his pocket and said, Think whatever you want, but I don't believe it. 
He can't even string a sentence together. Even if he can play guitar, he will never amount to much. Unlike me. Matt was very self-confident, but he didn't know that Damon's songs had gone viral online and topped the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Avery didn't know this either, and she was worried about Damon's feelings. Just as Damon was thinking about how to respond to Matt, he suddenly heard footsteps coming from behind him. A pleasant male voice called out, Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Let's go. Avery's expression changed to one of reverence, and she said, It's nothing, no problem. Avery was with a girl with high standards, and there weren't many guys who could catch her eye, but the person who was approaching them at this moment could definitely be counted as one of them. A few other girls also called out greetings to the new arrival. The girls all eyed the guy with looks of admiration on their faces. They couldn't hide their obvious feelings for him. However, they knew that they were not in the same league as the guy who had just arrived. He was on a totally different level, and except for perhaps Avery, none of them stood a chance with him. Even Matt was staring at him in awe. Levi is here. Okay, let's get going then, said Avery. Hey, everyone, said Levi. Damon heard Levi's familiar voice and looked over in its direction. He saw Levi's face. He looked handsome in the warm light from the building behind them. Damon could understand why so many girls were into Levi. However, his expression was somewhat distant. Ever since Levi had won the new voice talent search, he had been very busy with his music career. He had moved out of the dorms. Damon had not seen Levi for some time now. Damon had not expected to meet him tonight. It was fate. Levi, Avery, Matt, and the others had all studied music together, and Avery and Levi had been in the finals of the competition together, so it made sense that they had all planned to go out to tonight's concert. It seemed that Matt was over what had happened between him and Levi in the past. Or perhaps Avery had vouched for Levi and told Matt that it hadn't been Levi's fault. Damon smiled and said, Levi, hello. Levi's jaw dropped when he heard Damon's voice. His eyes widened in surprise, and he turned around to look for Damon. Levi finally noticed Damon standing at the edge of the group. Levi asked in surprise, Damon, what are you doing here? Are you also here to watch the concert? Avery and her other classmates watched Levi curiously with looks of awe. They were surprised that Levi and Damon knew each other, and they were even more surprised at Levi's reaction to seeing Damon. Levi had dropped his cool demeanor. He seemed excited. Levi had always seemed very calm and relaxed to Avery. She had never seen him surprised or rattled by anything before. To other people, Levi had an air of being high and mighty, and even a little cold. After all, Levi was no longer a nobody. He was a big star now, and he had the attitude to go along with it. Avery stammered, Levi, you... you know Damon? Levi's eyes widened in surprise, and he asked, You know him too? Avery nodded blankly. Yes! Levi laughed heartily. Great, then I don't need to introduce him to you. Damon was my roommate. Oh, right, I wanted to introduce him to you before. Do you remember? Since you know each other already, it saves me a lot of time. The girls around them were shocked. Levi usually acted so cold and aloof. They had never seen Levi act so friendly to anyone before. He had even laughed heartily. Whoever this Damon person was, Levi clearly had a lot of respect for him. Avery's delicate body trembled slightly with excitement. She remembered how Levi once said that he shared his dorm with a very talented classmate. Levi had consulted this classmate for advice on many of his songs. At that time, Avery had thought that Levi was joking. She never thought that she would have the opportunity to meet this mysterious classmate in person. Could it be that the mysterious classmate was actually Damon? Thinking about this shocked Avery, it felt like she had grabbed onto a live wire. It was enough to make Avery's entire body tremble with excitement. After all, until now, she had considered Levi more talented than Damon. She kept thinking about what Levi had said. Avery remembered something that had left a deep impression on her. It was a memory of Damon back in senior year. He had been helping Veronica prepare for the SATs during lunchtime. Damon had helped Veronica prepare for her exams at the expense of his own grades. He had sacrificed himself for a friend. Avery hadn't thought much of it at the time, but now, all these memories of Damon were starting to paint a bigger picture of him in her mind. Although Avery had known Damon forever, it seemed that there were a lot of things that she didn't know about him. She was shocked. Levi observed Avery's expression. It seemed like she still had a lot to learn about Damon. Levi exclaimed, What? 
Don't tell me you don't know that Damon is a talented guitar player and that he writes amazing songs, Avery said in a wooden tone. I do know a little about him, but clearly not everything. The only time that Avery had seen Damon play guitar was the time when he played Time Flies when they were at Bridgeton High School together. His playing had fascinated her, but at the time, she hadn't given it much more thought. She had simply felt that Damon played very well. She hadn't realized that he had pursued his talent. Levi still had more to say. Oh, and let me tell you something else. Damon was one of the friends who I thanked when I won the music competition. Although Damon had repeatedly emphasized to Levi that he did not want anyone to know about his contribution to Levi's win, now that Levi had come out and said it in front of everyone, Damon could hardly blame him, right? Avery's eyes widened and she looked at Damon, then back to Levi. From the looks on their faces, she could tell what Levi had said was no lie. Damon did not know what Levi had said to Avery after winning the championship, but Avery clearly remembered every word that Levi had said at the time. Levi had called Damon both a teacher and a friend. Levi had said that without Damon, he would not be where he was today. In other words, Damon had helped Levi tremendously. Avery did not know what to think. Her heart was pounding. She had always considered Levi a musical genius, but it turned out that he actually owed much of his talent to Damon, a boy whom Avery had never thought very highly of and had even slightly disliked at times. Although Avery would never have said this out loud, it was more or less how she felt inside. To Avery, the story had just taken a ridiculous turn. It was too crazy to be true. It felt like a TV show, but it was real life. All the other girls who had been listening were also shocked by Levi's words. The girl with the fancy up to, who had already had a good impression of Damon, couldn't help but ask, Levi, do you really think that the reason you won the competition was because Damon was helping you? Matt was waiting to hear Levi's response. He hoped that Levi would shake his head, but Levi nodded. Matt's hopes were shattered. After all, Levi had just claimed that he would never be as talented as Damon. No one in the group could believe that their idol was actually giving all the credit for his talent to Damon. To Matt, it felt like a slap in the face. Although Levi might just have been being modest, his words still went to show how much respect he had for Damon's talent. This must mean that Damon was at least as musically talented as the rest of them, right? Matt bristled at this thought and retorted confidently. Even if Damon does have musical talent, there is no way that he is better than Levi. Matt had clearly taken offense to the situation. Matt didn't like the idea of Damon being as good a musician as he was. He thought that he was better than Damon. He didn't want the girls to view them on the same level. Although Damon came from a humble background, he was talented and girls liked guys with talent. Matt's expression had turned ugly. He frowned and said stiffly, <laughs> To make it in the music industry, you need more than just talent. You also need connections. The group of girls simply ignored Matt's stubborn words. Matt was behaving badly, and all the girls were disgusted by it. Avery ignored Matt as well. She looked at Damon with a sparkle in her eye, and she said softly, Damon, I didn't expect you to be so talented. Why don't we go to the concert together? Now that Avery had heard so much about Damon from Levi, she was impressed. Her attitude towards Damon had changed. She was no longer acting all high and mighty like she had before. Damon shook his head. You guys go ahead and I still have something to do. Matt could not help taking another dig at Damon and said, Let's go. Most people can't afford tickets to this concert. Most people don't have the connections to get them either. Levi said in annoyance, Matt, can you please have some respect? Avery and many of the other girls also shot Matt dirty looks. Matt's expression changed. He didn't want to offend his friends, so he shut his mouth. Damon said goodbye to Avery and Levi and left alone. Matt watched Damon's back gradually disappear into the darkness of the night. As Avery watched Damon go, she thought he seemed a little lonely. She had learned a lot about Damon today. She hadn't imagined that this boy who she had grown up with had so many secrets. She realized that she hadn't known him very well. Damon deliberately found a quiet route back to the concert venue. He did not want to run into Avery and Levi again. He did not expect to run into anyone else who he knew on the way back to the venue, but he ran into one of the last people he wanted to see, Jillian. He remembered that he and Jillian had been together briefly last semester, but she had ended it for some reason. Later, when Damon met her in a restaurant, he found that she had a new love. 
Her new guy, Jonathan, ran with a rich crowd. However, Jonathan did not seem to be very into Jillian. Although Jillian had been trying very hard to make it work with Jonathan, his attitude towards her revealed that he didn't really respect her all that much. As Damon walked back to the concert venue, from afar, he saw Jillian arguing with Jonathan beside the path. There was no one else around, so the two of them quarreled without restraint. Jillian said angrily, Jonathan, how can you do this to me? How can you sell our tickets? Do you know how hard it was for me to get them? Give me my tickets back, Jonathan said shamelessly. So what if I sell them? Besides, you bought the tickets for $200 each and I could sell them for at least $300. We can earn an extra $100 for each ticket. We would be stupid not to sell them. Jillian was so angry that her whole body trembled. You are shameless. Give me my ticket. If you actually sell them, I'll kill you. Jillian held out her hand and demanded her tickets back. But Jonathan knocked her hand away and said, Jilly, why don't we sell them? We don't even have enough money to eat. Jillian's pretty face was pale. Did you gamble away all the money on our meal cards again? We can't even eat now. How could you do this again? Jonathan said angrily, Damn it, how can you still be angry? I just bought you McDonald's. My dad is going to send me $1,000 in a couple of days. When I get it, I will put money back on your meal card. However, Jillian did not believe Jonathan. He was always full of lies. Jillian shook her head. I don't want to hear it. Give me back the tickets. Jonathan was about to speak when he suddenly heard a sound behind him. He turned and saw Damon watching them. Jillian also heard the noise and turned to look. When she saw Damon, her pretty face immediately turned pale. It was obvious that Damon had seen her quarreling with Jonathan. Jillian felt very embarrassed. Damon, on the other hand, had a calm expression on his face. Sorry to interrupt, I'm just passing by. Oh, said Jillian. She tried to hide her anger and put on a big fake smile. She held Jonathan's hand and pretended that they hadn't just been fighting. Jillian said, Are you also here to watch the concert? I'm going with my boyfriend. Are you going alone? Jillian tried her best to pretend that everything was fine between her and Jonathan. Although she had been arguing with Jonathan a moment before, she hoped that Damon would not call her out on it. She didn't want to look bad in front of Damon, so she did her best to act like nothing had happened. She wanted to let Damon know how good her life was, even if it was just all an illusion. Damon nodded. Yeah, I'm going alone. Jillian smiled. Oh, that's too bad. I'm going with Jonathan. You really need to find a girlfriend. It's so boring to do things alone. Well, maybe we'll see you there. Jonathan also quickly pretended that nothing was wrong. He put his arm around Jillian's shoulders and they walked off towards the concert venue. Damon watched them disappear from sight. Damon took out a cigarette and had a smoke. He wondered why so many people tried to pretend that their lives were awesome and their problems didn't exist. Maybe they were afraid to face the truth. Living like that seemed so tiring. Damon was lost in thought when a loud noise suddenly attracted his attention. Someone was shooting off fireworks. The concert had finally begun. The fireworks were part of the opening act. The scale of this concert was huge. It was the largest and most extravagant event that Tony Music Entertainment had ever put on. A lot of famous names were performing tonight. It was a very big deal. Plus, it was the first time that Ryan Gold would appear in front of a live audience. Damon heard the sound of the show starting in the distance. Damon was still sitting in a corner of the garden smoking when his phone rang. It was Ricky. He had been looking all over the place for Damon. He urged Damon to hurry backstage and get ready. After Damon finished smoking, he walked towards the entrance to the venue. A few security guards were still guarding the door. Some students without tickets were still waiting outside. They had heard that Ryan Gold was here, and these fans were to try their luck and see if they could meet their idol. However, Damon naturally did not know what these people were doing. He asked them to let him through, but they did not know who Damon was, so they were a little unwilling to let him pass. Some people even said, If you want to meet a star, go to the back of the line. Can't you see that we're all waiting here? After Damon finally squeezed past the crowd and got to the door, he saw the same cute girl from earlier that afternoon. Damon smiled at her and said, I need to get back in. Instantly, the cute girl, as well as the security guards who knew Damon's identity, stepped aside to let him through. Their eyes were filled with admiration. As Damon walked past her, the cute girl mustered her courage and took out a pen and a piece of paper that she had been carrying in her pocket. She asked, Can you sign an autograph for me? Damon smiled when he saw the longing look in the girl's eyes. He took her pen and signed his name on the paper before walking into the building. 
The beautiful girl looked at what Damon had written to her. Happiness welled up in her heart. Not only did Ryan Gold sing well, but his autograph was impressive too. The cute girl's heart beat wildly when she thought of Damon's handsome face and dreamy eyes. Her eyes were filled with admiration as she watched him walk away. The people in the crowd who didn't know the truth about Damon's identity were all unhappy. Who was he? Why'd they just let him in? Judging by Damon's age, he was a student just like they were. Moreover, he had just gotten there, and everyone else had been waiting outside all evening. No one recognized him, so it was impossible for him to be a celebrity. This was why everyone felt angry when they saw the cute girl letting Damon into the building. However, the cute girl didn't care what people thought. She carefully folded Damon's autograph and put it in her pocket. Then, she turned to the crowd and loudly said, Quiet down! Of course that guy gets to enter, don't you know who he is? Who is he? People asked. Their expressions looked doubtful. Then, the cute girl proudly said, I'll tell you, but don't cause a scene. That guy was Ryan Gold, the guy you've all been waiting for. As soon as she said this, the people in the crowd became very excited. People tried to push through the doors, but they were quickly stopped by campus security. What? He's Ryan Gold? After the cute girl confirmed this again, the crowd went totally wild. I want to see Ryan Gold. You can't deprive me of my right to see my idol. Hurry up and let us in. I just want to see him once more, then I'll leave. Oh my god, did you see that just now? It was Ryan Gold. He was so handsome. I can't believe he just walked past me like that. We want to see him again. Let us in. The crowd outside began to chant. The security guards called for backup. People were trying to get through the door. They didn't care about the performance. They just wanted a chance to see Damon again. The angry crowd frightened the cute girl, and she hid behind the security guards. More security guards had arrived, and they formed a human wall to keep the crowd back. It wasn't easy for them to maintain order. The crowd was nearly rioting. Avery had just arrived at the entrance to the venue with Levi, Matt, and the others. She had arrived just in time to see someone who looked a lot like Damon disappearing through the doors. Avery furrowed her pretty brow and walked over to the cute girl standing with the security guards at the entrance. Ashley, did you say that that was Ryan Gold? Yeah, that's right. Avery's heart skipped a beat when she heard Ashley's response. Avery shook her head in disbelief. She must have been mistaken. After all, she had only seen the back of Ryan Gold's head. Although Damon was talented, he could not possibly be Ryan Gold. Ryan Gold was like a god. At that moment, more fireworks appeared in the sky above the venue. They shot into the sky and exploded in colorful bursts. The effect was dazzling. Everyone was amazed by their beauty. Many people even took out their phones and started filming. Then they heard a loud, clear male voice begin to sing from inside the venue. The voice was singing a cover of a popular classic. The moment the guy began to sing, the entire venue erupted in excitement. There were 50,000 people at the show and the noise they made was thunderous. Damon had been practicing backstage, but when the show started, he was allowed to go out and watch until it was his turn. He stood at the front of the crowd. Avery walked into the concert venue. She had floor tickets, so she could get very close to the stage. She saw a vague figure in front of her that looked a bit like Damon, but she could not be sure. He was standing right up front, and the floor was too crowded for her to get any closer to him. Julian and Jonathan had also arrived at the concert venue. Jillian had refused to let Jonathan sell the tickets, and in the end, she had convinced him to come and watch the performance with her. Behind them was Jillian's classmate, Riley, and another guy. Unfortunately, the guy was not Xander. Drew also had floor tickets. He stood nearby chatting with a group of his friends while waiting for the real show to begin. Veronica was standing beside Drew. Although Drew was there with Veronica, Veronica felt a little uncomfortable. A few girls in their friend group had been making eyes at Drew all evening. One of these girls was Chelsea. Chelsea didn't like Veronica. She had been after Drew for a while now. Her advances at Drew made Veronica feel somewhat helpless. Fiona's roommates, Maddie, Gwen, and Tara, stood at the edge of the crowd, drinking and waving their glow sticks. They were all discussing which big star would appear next. The next act was a musician called Pyro. He was an electronic music artist from LA. He had an amazing voice as well. The beats he dropped shook the entire venue. When he finished his set, the venue roared with applause. Many people in the crowd waved glow sticks and the venue turned into a sea of tiny lights. The girls in the crowd were going wild. They shouted at the stage, Pyro, I love you. We will always be your fans. 
Pyro, I want to have your babies. Fireworks exploded behind the stage as Pyro waved goodbye to the adoring crowd. The second singer to take the stage was relatively new to fame. Her songs were slower than Pyro's had been, which quieted the audience down. When she finished singing, the venue again erupted with thunderous applause. Then the third and fourth acts took the stage one after another. There was no doubt that these singers were all very talented. They were all signed to Tony Music Entertainment and had already made big names for themselves. Although their live performances were not as good as their recorded songs, the audience was still excited to see these famous musicians perform live. Everyone wanted a chance to get close to the stars who they idolized. Two of the acts sounded almost as good as they had in their studio recordings, but some people in the front row of the audience noticed that the movements of these singers' mouths did not always match up with their music. One of the singers even coughed in the middle of a song, but the lyrics didn't miss a beat. No wonder their performances sounded just as good as their studio recordings. It was obvious that they were just lip syncing. However, a lot of big stars lip synced their live shows nowadays, and besides, only a few of the performers had gone that route. It didn't affect people's overall feelings about the show. As the sixth singer walked off the stage, the seventh singer went on. A staff member hurriedly came over to Damon's side and told him that he needed to come and get ready. He would be going on stage next. Although the show was going well, the organizers had decided to rearrange the performance lineup at the last minute. Several of the musicians who had just performed had clearly been lip syncing, and the girl who had gone on before hadn't had great stage energy. The organizers wanted to excite the crowd by bringing Ryan Gold out early. They wanted Ryan Gold to sing Time Flies next, and then he would still sing Dawn at the end of the show as the grand finale. When the MC announced the change of plans to the crowd, the entire venue fell silent. A moment later, the entire place erupted in thunderous applause. When the people in the audience heard that Ryan Gold would take the stage next, they became very energetic. Cries of excitement filled the entire venue. Damon and the Tony Music Entertainment staff were all surprised by this uproar. Ryan Gold was unimaginably popular. By now, Damon had already put on his costume, including a mask. He quietly walked onto the stage. When Damon appeared on stage wearing the mask, he caused a huge commotion. Many people were dissatisfied to see that Ryan Gold's identity was still a secret. They had had no complaints about paying so much for their tickets because they thought they would get to finally see who Ryan Gold really was. Many people had traveled a long way to watch the performance, but now Ryan Gold has come out wearing a mask. The people who had come just to see Ryan Gold felt like they were being cheated. Who knew if this masked man was even the real Ryan Gold? It could be anyone behind the mask. But even if Ryan Gold hadn't been wearing the mask, people still wouldn't know if he was the real thing or not. No one had ever seen Ryan Gold's face before. The only way to know was to wait for him to start singing. In front of the watchful eyes of countless fans, the masked man gently picked up the microphone and started singing. He sang the first verse of Time Flies. Ryan Gold's amazing voice echoed around the venue. People in the crowd could see Ryan Gold's eyes through the holes in his mask. His eyes had a mysterious charm to them. Ryan Gold was singing his heart out. The audience could feel his amazing energy radiating from the stage. The effect was dreamlike and unreal. This was the performance of the evening. Everyone had been waiting for this moment. This amazing venue was the perfect setting for Ryan Gold's first live performance. The lighting and special effects were perfectly timed. However, the song itself was the star of the show. Fans had heard it countless times already online. It was beautiful, moving and dreamlike. The lyrics were sad, but universally relatable. Ryan Gold was giving an amazing performance. His song sounded as good live as it did in the original recording. He didn't make a single mistake. People were entranced as they listened to Ryan Gold singing. They lost their sense of time. No one wanted the song to end. He sounded so good. He really sounded good. Ryan Gold sounded amazing live. Everyone who heard him perform agreed. This was indeed the real Ryan Gold. Only Ryan Gold had such a unique yet amazing voice. Only Ryan Gold had this kind of talent. Ryan Gold was a music god. As the audience watched Ryan Gold perform, the atmosphere in the venue became more and more intense. As the fanatical fans realized that they were seeing the real Ryan Gold, they began to shout and scream. Tears welled up in their eyes. 
After the song ended, people began to chant, Ryan Gold! Ryan Gold! The chant had started on one side of the venue, then spread to the surrounding sections. Eventually, the entire audience was chanting in unison, Ryan Gold! Ryan Gold! The entire venue shook as the audience of 50,000 people chanted in unison. This was the real Ryan Gold. The Ryan Gold who they had all been listening to online. The audience was going absolutely wild. Even the people who were still waiting outside the venue were chanting. The scene was so crazy that it shocked everyone. It is really Ryan Gold. He sounded amazing. But why did he have to cover his face? People asked each other. Ryan Gold's fans were all very excited about the performance, but they still wanted to see what he looked like. Why had he covered his face? Did Ryan Gold not know how badly his fans wanted to see his face? Someone said, Maybe Ryan Gold is not that perfect. Maybe there's a reason why he keeps his face covered. Maybe there's something wrong with his face and it would ruin his image if everyone saw it. So he wears a mask to keep it a secret. Many people had also wondered this themselves, but someone quickly refuted the statement. No, Ryan Gold is very handsome. He made an appearance outside the venue earlier. Some people saw his face with their own eyes. As for the reason why Ryan Gold didn't take off his mask, it seemed like it would remain a mystery for now. Perhaps this was just his personality. The air of mystery also made him more attractive. But whether Ryan Gold was handsome or ugly, it didn't matter. At this moment, what he looked like was no longer important to the audience. All they cared about was his music. His song moved everyone. It didn't matter if he was handsome or ugly. Everyone admired his talent. Avery was also watching the tall and energetic masked man performing on the stage. She did not know who he was, but for some reason, he seemed somewhat familiar. Even though he was wearing a costume, he looked a lot like someone Avery knew. Someone she had known for a long time. Ryan Gold performed on stage before the eyes of countless classmates. He strummed the guitar gently and rhythmically. His voice rose and fell as he sang along with the instrument. It reminded Avery of something she had heard once back in high school. It was intoxicating just to listen to him. I'm overthinking it, Avery thought to herself. How could it be him? Jillian and Jonathan were standing near the back of the crowd. As Jillian listened to the song, she also felt that something about Ryan Gold was very familiar. However, she could not put her finger on it. Levi stood beside Avery and watched Ryan Gold performing on the stage. Levi's brows were tightly knitted as if he were deep in thought. Ryan Gold's appearance had reinvigorated the audience. When Ryan Gold finished his song and left the stage to rest, the audience began to protest. What a joke! Everyone was here to see Ryan Gold, but he sang only one song and then walked off the stage? It was so disappointing. They all still wanted to hear Ryan Gold sing his other hit song, Dawn. After the MC assured everyone that Ryan Gold would come back on stage later, the audience finally calmed down. More fireworks shot into the sky. They were as beautiful as the Milky Way galaxy. Everyone tried to film the fireworks. Then it was time for the intermission and the celebrity meet and greets. Sounds of laughter and excitement filled the venue. People couldn't wait to see their favorite celebrities. Their only regret was that Ryan Gold would not be doing a meet and greet. People were disappointed, but not surprised. After the intermission, more famous celebrities went on stage to sing. Even Avery's teacher, Asher, performed. The students from Myerson College of Music all loved him. However, compared to Ryan Gold's performance, Asher's was a little lacking. As the stars appeared on stage one after another, the atmosphere in the venue became very lively. Everyone was looking forward to Ryan Gold's second appearance. No one wanted to miss it. Finally, it was time for Ryan Gold to perform the grand finale. As he sang his song, Dawn, a huge and beautiful fireworks show filled the sky above the venue. The excitement in the venue peaked. The crowd roared. Everyone could see how incredibly popular this new singer was. It didn't matter that Ryan Gold had only recently risen to fame. Everyone loved him. His songs were instant classics. People would be singing them for years to come. He had so much potential. Perhaps his songs would be the music of a generation. Ryan Gold finished singing Dawn. The audience was mesmerized. It took people a while to regain their senses. The fans were so wrapped up in listening to the music that they had forgotten where they were. However, all good things must come to an end. The MC took the stage once again, and all the celebrities joined him to sing an encore together. 
Fireworks lit up the sky above the venue one last time. Finally, the stage went dark. The show was over. The floor lights went on, and concertgoers began to make their way toward the exits. Friends said goodbye to each other. They all wanted to discuss the show, so they agreed to meet tomorrow. Without a doubt, the big show had gone off without a hitch. The Tony Music Entertainment staff were celebrating their sweet success. The organizers were already making plans to have another show like this in the future. After the show had ended, Ricky came to look for Damon. He hoped that Damon would agree to participate in the next event that they organized. If Damon was willing, Tony Music Entertainment would continue to promote Damon. Ever since they had tasted the sweetness of Ryan Gold's success, they saw it as a huge business opportunity. Damon's two songs were definitely phenomenal. Their influence had gone far beyond many people's expectations. Ryan Gold was already more popular than many other famous celebrities. Tony Music Entertainment didn't want to let go of this cash cow. However, Damon did not accept all of their terms. He refused to participate in any activities that might reveal his identity. Damon was in need of money, and working with Tony Music Entertainment paid well. Damon needed the money to expand KC Games. He and Will needed to hire more people to help them develop a large-scale game. They were also in the process of upgrading Airblaze. The expansion for Airblaze was nearly ready to be launched, and they were already thinking about starting work on a second mobile app game. Damon needed to find time to start working on the storylines for these new games. He had already decided on a name for his new large-scale game. He would call it The New Century. Any popular large-scale game that wanted to have staying power needed a good story behind it. It needed to be relevant. The benefits of this were self-evident. Damon had a lot of things on his plate. Fortunately, Damon had a quick brain and a lot of energy. Normally, having so many projects on the go would exhaust even the most productive of people. After bidding farewell to Ricky, Damon slipped out of the venue through the back door along with the rest of the crowd. Damon had been wearing a mask on stage. Now that he had taken off the mask, no one recognized him. He walked out the main exit and saw that the street outside was crowded with people. Many people were still waiting to see Ryan Gold. Some of them were holding signs. The signs read, Ryan Gold, I love you. Ryan Gold, I am your biggest fan. Ryan Gold, look over here. Ryan Gold, marry me. Fans had written all kinds of slogans. Damon craned his neck and looked around. It turned out that someone had leaked the information that Ryan Gold was going to leave through this exit. Therefore, anyone who wanted Ryan Gold's signature had come to wait outside this door. No wonder people were crowded together out here like sardines. Damon saw Avery in the crowd. Matt and Levi were nowhere to be seen. In general, girls were more obsessed with meeting Ryan Gold than guys were. Jillian stood not far from Avery. Jillian was craning her neck to look inside. Jonathan stood behind her with an impatient look on his face. Seeing Damon, Avery called out to greet him. Damon, why didn't you come to watch the concert with us? Damon looked at Avery strangely, but he did not answer her question. Instead, he asked, why are you here? Avery's pretty face turned red, and she said softly, I'm waiting for Ryan Gold to come out. She wanted Ryan Gold's autograph. She was Ryan Gold's loyal fan. Damon was surprised. Can't you go inside and meet him? Avery was a little famous herself now, plus her teacher Asher had been famous for a long time. He must have the connections to get Avery a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Ryan Gold. Even if Asher couldn't get her to meet Ryan Gold, he should at least be able to get her an autograph, right? Avery blinked at Damon and nicely said, I wanted to go backstage to meet him, but the organizer said that Ryan Gold had just left, so I ran out here to see if I could catch him on his way out. Jillian, who was standing beside Avery now, turned her head to look at them. She looked at Damon and then at Avery. Her lips moved like she was about to say something, but in the end, she remained silent. At this moment, Jonathan also saw Damon and his manner immediately became very unfriendly. He said, Damn it, this is really unlucky. Why do we keep running into this loser? Jillian was afraid that Jonathan would try to start something with Damon, so she quickly pulled Jonathan's arm and tried to make him be quiet. Damon did not want to lose his cool, but he didn't have the patience for Jonathan's crap. Jonathan remained quiet for the time being, so Damon ignored him. However, when Jonathan saw that Damon was ignoring him, he assumed that it was because Damon was afraid of him. He threw his head back and laughed at Damon. Then Jonathan turned to Jillian and said, What? You want me to talk to your ex? Look at him, he's afraid of me. He doesn't even dare to stand up for himself. It's so obvious that he is a loser. I really don't understand what you used to see in him. Do you like losers? How did you stand to be with a guy like him? 
Julian flushed red when she heard Jonathan's words. Jonathan, can you just stop talking? Shame on you. People nearby were looking at them strangely now, but Jonathan did not feel embarrassed. Jillian, however, did. Damon couldn't restrain himself anymore. His anger had been building up. He turned to Jonathan and said in a deep voice, Are you talking about me? Everyone thought that Jonathan had gone too far too. After all, Damon was her good friend. She didn't like to hear other people bad-mouthing her friends. Jonathan was looking for a fight. He pointed at Damon and said, Yeah, I'm talking about you. What are you going to do about it? You're a loser. If you dare to touch me, I'll skin you alive. Jonathan and Damon were about to fight. The people in the crowd around them could see that a fight was about to break out, so they all backed away. Many of the bystanders disliked Jonathan's arrogant attitude, and they hoped that Damon could teach this guy a lesson. Some of the bystanders even took out their phones and prepared to film the fight. Other people got ready to call campus security if things got out of hand. Everyone was watching to see what would happen next. Jillian was afraid the two of them would really fight, so she quickly tried to pull Jonathan away. She said to Damon, You should get out of here. A few of Jonathan's friends were nearby in the crowd. Damon was by himself. If a fight broke out, Jonathan's friends would probably come to back him up. Damon would definitely be at a disadvantage. Jonathan heckled Damon. Come on, don't hide behind your ex. Come and get me, if you dare. Come on, trash. Damon started laughing. He wasn't afraid of Jonathan. Damon had been in fights before. He was no stranger to violence. Damon was fierce, and he knew he could make his opponents give up and beg for mercy. Damon took a step forward. He was so fast that the crowd did not even see him attack. He was a shadowy blur of movement. Then, everyone heard a loud crack, and Jonathan staggered backwards and fell heavily onto the ground. His two front teeth had been knocked out. Damon packed a powerful punch. Those who had seen Jonathan behaving badly before applauded. Damon had some smooth moves. He had taken Jonathan down with one blow. Jonathan needed to be taught a lesson. He deserved to lose the fight. Jonathan staggered to his feet. He was clearly in pain. Suddenly, two young men emerged from the crowd behind Jonathan. They glowered at Damon. The guys were Jonathan's friends. They had all come to watch the concert together. Now that Jonathan was in trouble, they couldn't just stand by and ignore the situation. However, Damon was fearless. He stood up straight and smiled coldly at the two newcomers. Jonathan spat out a mouthful of blood. Jillian tried to pull Jonathan away, but he pushed her back into the crowd. Jonathan and his two friends formed a triangle around Damon. Avery saw what was about to happen, and she cried out in alarm. She pulled out her phone and was about to call her classmates to come help when campus security ran over. The guards had been on crowd control outside the venue. One of the security guards angrily said, What's going on here? What's going on? Knock it off! When Jonathan saw that campus security had arrived, he began to complain loudly. This guy hit me! The security guard's expression darkened as he asked Damon, Did you start this? Damon said coldly, You should ask the people who were watching. They will tell you who started this. When people heard this, they pointed their fingers at Jonathan and said, He is the troublemaker. This other guy was just defending himself. Is there any law against defending yourself? If you have a sense of justice, you won't punish someone for defending himself. He was provoked. The security guard said impatiently, I don't care who started it. I just want to know who hit who. Come on, I'm taking you both to the security office. Don't cause any more trouble for me. The security guard grabbed Damon first. After all, it had been Damon who attacked first. The people who had seen the whole thing happen protested. They knew that Jonathan had started the fight. Avery stepped forward and said, Excuse me, I think you should hear the whole story before you take him away. Oh, are you on about justice too? Are you an accomplice here? Well, you can come to the office too. The security guard waved the baton in his hand and motioned for his two colleagues to take Avery away as well. Damon was furious. Just as Damon was about to give the security guards a piece of his mind, he heard a commotion at the edge of the crowd. A few girls ran over. The girls saw Avery with campus security. A look of surprise filled Avery's pretty face. She called out to the girls, Hey, come quick! It turned out that the girls were from the student union. They had heard the commotion and rushed over to see what was going on. One of the girls was Avery's friend, Ashley, but Avery didn't have a chance to say anything. Ashley put her hands on her hips and asked, What's going on here? Are you fighting? We have rules here, you know. 
Jonathan pointed at Damon and said, That guy started it. Jonathan frowned. Damon, on the other hand, looked calm and composed. When Ashley saw Damon, her eyes suddenly lit up, and she cried out in surprise, Brian Gold, is that you? When the people in the crowd heard Ashley's words, they fell silent. Everyone was stunned. Then people began to whisper to each other, Did she just say Ryan Gold? Where is Ryan Gold? The people in the crowd were all still waiting for Ryan Gold to come out. They wanted to see him. They were hoping to get his signature. Avery gave Damon a confused look. What are you saying, Ashley? This guy's my high school classmate. Who are you calling Ryan Gold? Jonathan, Jillian, the security guards, and everyone else all looked at Ashley with expressions of surprise and doubt. They weren't sure whether or not to believe her. Campus security had forgotten all about detaining Damon, Jonathan, and Avery. This was the student union's problem now. Damon smiled helplessly. He hadn't expected to be put on the spot like this. Ashley pointed at Damon and stammered, Avery, this guy is your high school classmate? Avery nodded. Ashley's mouth fell open in surprise and she said, Oh my God, you really don't know who he is, do you? Avery shook her head in confusion. Although Avery had noticed a lot of similarities between Damon and Ryan Gold, she had never made the connection that they were actually the same person. Avery idolized Ryan Gold. How could Damon be Ryan Gold? It didn't make sense. Ryan Gold was like a god to Avery. However, Avery saw the astonished expression on her friend's face and she began to wonder, could it be true? Had she been mistaken? Jillian also stared at Ashley. Everyone else seemed to have picked up on something too. For a moment, no one seemed to breathe. They were all waiting for someone to say something. Ashley pointed at Damon and said, That's right, he is Ryan Gold, the big star. Remember I called you earlier to tell you that I saw him? Oh my God, you actually didn't know, huh? But then again, if Ricky hadn't told Ashley, she wouldn't have known who Ryan Gold was either. Avery's expression suddenly became a little dull. After all, Ashley's words were too shocking. Avery's heart felt like it was going to jump out of her chest. Was it all a huge joke? Was everyone in on it? The truth was too absurd. Was Ashley mistaken? How could Damon be the musical sensation Ryan Gold? Wasn't he too young? It was hard to believe. <laughs>